Hello everyone, and welcome to Ultimate Fan Fiction. So we are back with an interesting movie on what if Naruto reincarnates as a beast king and got harem. But before we start, I just want to remind you to please subscribe to my channel and hit the like button if you enjoy my content. Let's start the story. Every type of creature has one or more leader. Whether it be a demon lord of hell, a great god of heaven or a ruling king of the earth. Even summons have bosses to them. A higher force of their kind that sits at the top and give the commands. But their W, as one type of creature that had no such thing until about 15 years ago. It came in the form of a boy. His stunning blue eyes had captivated all. But on that day something happened. Something to T no one would ever be able to expel an until later. The day he was born every bird, cat, mouse and dog began to cry out in excitement and happiness. This had generally confused the populace of Konoha. And things only got weirder over the next three years. He was an orphan. His parents died the day he was born. Both killed within the horrible ravages of the ninja world. Minato Namake, assassinate, d by someone that had found a way to duplicate the Hiroshin no Jutsu and therefore ended up in a draw with the unknown nin. Then Kashina Uzumaki, killed from complications during childbirth. Only the third Hokage knew of his lineage. The boy became distant to people over the next three years. Because the people were distant of him. They were afraid of his ability, and even more so when he began. To display unnatural powers with the element of fire. Abilities that could not be explained. But that's not all. No matter what they were or who owned them, animals of all sorts would bow to him whenever he passed by. This had caused the villagers to begin to view the boy as a freak. An unnatural force, something that didn't belong. The Hokage had been greatly saddened by this but he could do nothing to stop it. Then a history-changing moment occurred. It was an attack, but no normal attack. The attack came in the form of the legendary Kayubi no Kitsune. No one knows where she came from or why she showed up. But when she began to decimate the village the ninja had no choice but to fight back. They stood no chance, but once again something odd happened. As the fox stepped over the broken walls of Konoha she laid eyes on the boy. He was standing there amongst the destruction and chaos defiantly and looking with fascination into her eyes as he tried to use his power to gain control over her and failed to do so. The third Hokage and the remaining forces of Konoha could only gape in astonishment as the fox stared down at the boy for a whole two minutes before turning and walking away with a satisfied grunt. That only served to scare the villagers more. What kind of child was he to be able to get the fox to leave? He obviously could not control the demon but to get her to leave anyway. Even the Hokage found himself questioning the boy. Just who was he? What was he? For the next three years it got worse for the boy. The villagers were getting bolder. Openly calling him freak and monster. They jeered at him and alienated him from their children. They began to refuse him service at stores and he was viewed as a threat to Konoha by the council. Finally they drove him away. One day the boy had just vanished. Finally running from the people and the fears they had for him. There is a story. It is a tale of a creature that dwells deep within the forest of death. It tells of a being. Of astounding power that rules the forest and will lash out at any hostile being in the forest. No one knows where this creature came from or even why it lives in the forest of death instead of the more lush and beautiful forests of Konoha. There is couple that claim to have encountered the creature but they gave vastly different descriptions of the thing. One man claimed it had snake-like yellow eyes and enormous white wings and a reptilian tail while another claimed it had canine-like claws, teeth and a tail. They say it has the ability to manipulate fire and had a good level of control over the beasts within. Whatever the tale may be, the Hokage has heard many. The fabled king of beasts that lives with the deepest parts of the forest of death has been on the forefront of his mind for nine years. He knew what the thing really was. How no one else had caught on yet was beyond him. Hokage-sama the preparations for the second stage of the Chunin exams are done. Shall we get ready at the tower? The Hokage nodded. Yes, it shouldn't be long now for the contestants to finish their written tests. Let's go. Hi, Seru Tobi is his name. Nicknamed the professor of Konoha with over 1,000 mastered jutsus under his belt. He is among the most powerful of shinobi to have ever existed and he wears the title of Hokage proudly. He and the proctors for the Chunin exam moved swiftly to wards the tower in the center of the forest of death. 
My how he felt about this. There were several extremely talented rookies this year and he wanted to see how far they'd get. That got him to thinking about something else. If he was here he'd definitely be participating. My how I miss that boy. The other proctors didn't say anything, for they knew whom he was talking about. Um Hokage sama why, do you waste so much time worrying for him? He's not important. This proved to be the wrong thing to say as the ignorant fool to have just said then found a katana at his neck, courtesy of the one named Hayate. Do not insult him. That boy deserved none of the shit he was put through, he growled out. Serutobi felt the same way. If only the village wasn't so afraid of his strange power then maybe the boy would still be around, dazzling the populace with that bright smile of his. He looked to the side and saw a larger than what would be considered normal, wolf looking at them curiously. It had golden eyes and silver fur. It wasn't part of a pack. He gazed at the creature before continuing on his way. The beasts of this forest were quite the sight to see. That is why this place would make such a great ground for a test. And the king of beasts didn't seem to mind them being in his forest since they haven't been attacked. I hope the genin can survive in here, commented one of the junin. All right, this year we're going to be using an older training ground for our second test. This will test your survival skills to the limit ha ha ha, bellowed out the second exam proctor with an insane smile on her face. This woman's name is Mitarashi Anko. She's 21 years old and a holder of the title Special Junin. Specialty is assassination. She grinned down at the group of N. Irvis looking teens and continued her speech. Now those from the leaf surly know what this place is hum. There were a few nods then someone near the back bellowed out, are you nuts? That's the forest of death. The place where the king of beasts resides. I ain't going in there. Anko grinned and shunshined over to the panicking boy. He had short brown hair and a triangle marking on each cheek. He was sitting on the back of a huge floppy-eared dog and pointing at the forest. Well if you'd rather turn tail and run like a little puppy then go ahead. Besides the king of beasts is just a story. No one has ever seen him so relax. Quote. The boy shrugged and looked over at his teammates. They were giving him the, quit now and die, glare though one was hidden behind a pair of shades. He started to sweat the said. Fine but I see anything weird and we're running away. I ain't fighting nothing labeled the king of beasts. His teammates seemed satisfied by his answer and backed off. Anko grinned and said, yeah well if you do meet him describe him to me next time we meet. That is if he doesn't eat you ha 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 ha. Now others were interested, namely, the team from Suna, the team from Odo and a team from Kusa. What is this king of beasts? Asked the redhead from Suna. Yes I too would like to know, said the girl from Kusa with a creepy smile. Anko just grinned and said, the store. Why says that he arrived about nine years ago? They say he has the power over fire itself and the power to control beasts and bend them to his will. Some say he can transform into said beasts and they say he's some kind of powerful entity. There are a couple who claim to have met him but I think they're full of it. Not even Konoha knows much about him. They just go on what others claim to have witnessed. Though I suspect that the king of beasts is actually someone who was outcast by the villagers. A young boy that that the animals bowed to whenever he walked by. And you're having us take a test in there? Asked the long-haired girl from Odo. Oh quit whining. If the king of beast does exist which is doubtful, I doubt he'd be looking for his next human meal, now sign these and get your scrolls so we can get this started. Hem this king of beasts interests me, said the Kusanin. I agree, power over fire and animals. It seems to be some sort of special ability. A keke genke perhaps, hem maybe, but for now continue on with the plan. I will locate Sasuke kun. Hi, the Kusanin then melted into the ground and took off to the east. Sabaku Soso. Ah, as the black, metal sand retreated back into the redhead's gourd he looked to his left where three more nin were hiding in terror. All right we have the scroll let's go Gara, said one of his teammates, a young man dressed in black and had face paint on. Gara continued to eye the spot where the other three were hidden then he began to gather sand. I want to find this king of the beasts. Uh, I'm not sure that's a good idea. Let's just get to the tower. Gara glared then said, you think I cannot defeat this foe? No I'm saying we're in the middle on an exam. Gara glared then said, if you weren't my teammate I'd kill you. The boy just shrugged and said, 
Well let's just get to the tower. Then we'll look for the king all right. Hell he might even show up at the tower to find out what all the commotion is. Gara looked over at his teammate then sighed. All right let's go. And to the three in the bushes be lucky I feel satisfied right now. He then faded away leaving behind three shocked genin and a shivering dog. All over the forest the teams battled it out and even killed each other. They fought using everything they had in their arsenals and they stole the items of their defeated foes. Compel, Eatly unaware of the presence that was watching it all. You see the rumors and the story are true. There is something living in the forest of death and he does have the ability to control animals. He is their leader, the Alpha, the top creature no other is strong enough to defeat him and assume the role of king so he stays at the top. Every beast bows before his presence. It had been that way since as long as he remembered. But that was all old news now. When he entered this ancient forest full of great and ancient beasts he began the process of rising to the top of the ecosystem and he became the established leader of many different species. He crouched down as a large silver furred wolf approached and made a series of yip growls and smalls barks. The being responded with similar sounds t. Hen handed the wolf a large slab of meat. Once the wolf was gone the being stood upright and looked up into the sky. The moonlight finally coming from behind the clouds and shining down upon him, revealing a pair of sapphire blue eyes. These creatures that had entered his forest seemed so familiar to him. Like he belonged with them. He quickly threw that thought away. This was his home. He pondered the last four days since they had entered his domain. They were doing some kind of test. No doubt to hone their survival skills. They were even killing each other. He remembered that a couple of th. S.A. creatures were powerful and abnormally so, like the one that smelled of snakes or the old man that had dashed through earlier. He had observed a couple of teams and saw them use strange abilities. But these abilities also seemed familiar. He remembered watching as the one who smelled of snake attacked a group and bit one of them in the neck. Then he remembered the power that soon came off of that one as well. These creatures were so interesting to him. They were full of strange abilities. He was taken out of his thoughts when a large reptile that stood on two legs emerged from the bushes. It looked like a vicious evolved iguana and had a set of wicked looking claws on its feet, its golden eyes shined with great intelligence and as showed by the body. Language and series of clicks and gr. Owls as was making in the form of the question it was asking as it carried one of the creatures in its mouth. Found him dead. Can I eat him? After checking to make sure the creature that looked sim. Alar to him was indeed dead he granted his permission. The reptile wasted no time and dug in. He looked down at the reptile affectionately. This one was still young and brash. Looking for the next thrill. He had no doubt in his mind that the creature he was eating was far from dead when he found him but he really didn't care. Those creatures were taking a survival test. If they cannot survive in his forest then they will get eaten. He tensed though when the scent of blood suddenly bombarded his nose. Someone was attacked again, but not by any of the creatures in his forest. It seemed one of T. He creatures had attacked another of its own kind. Normally he would ignore it but he could smell the pure enjoyment the attacker had exhumed while doing so. It made him a bit angry. He left the rapto, R to his meal and dashed over to the spot. He dropped from the tree when he was sure that there were no more of those creatures around and examined the form in front of him. It was a female if his senses judged correctly. She was unconscious and breathing heavily. A deep gash was across her stomach and blood was gushing out like a small stream. She didn't have much time. Ooohhhoo Orchi, Maru, she said, causing him to raise an eyebrow. So something called the Orochimaru had done this to her. No matter. He quickly tore off her shirt and examined the cut. It was nasty and he could see a bit of her insides. This was easily curable, chakra, he muttered as he placed his hands on the wound. A second later a green glow emitted from his hands and bathed the wound in its light. He could fee, l the female sigh from the warmth but he ignored it. The wound took five minutes to heal and with each passing minute the female's eyes opened just a bit more. When he was done he stood back up and sighed. He didn't really know why he helped this creature. Perhaps it was the fact that she was attacked for a different reason other than to test her survival skills. He was looking back up at the sky when something sharp grazed his cheek. Who are you? What do y'all want huh? 
He snapped his gaze back to the female and saw that she was up on her feet and glaring while brandishing something small s. Harpen made of something harder the stone or bone. She opened her eyes and saw someone she had never seen before looking up at the sky with a satisfied look on his face. It was then that she noticed. D that her she was torn off and she immediately jumped to the wrong conclusion. She flung a kanai at him then leapt to her feet. Who are you? What do y'all want huh? She yelled at the stranger. But W. Hen his gaze snapped over to her all other words died in her throat. His eyes were the most stunning of blue she had ever seen. She held in a gasp and examined the stranger more. He stood about six feet tall and had an amazing body build. He had a fine tan and was dressed in a loincloth. His hair was ridiculously long. It dangled a foot below his feet as he stood on a branch and swayed in the wind. His fingers were clawed and ready to be used. She could see that he was tense. He regarded her with narrowed eyes for a second before he sighed and turned to leave. Hey wait. He paused and looked back at her. His eyes swimming with confusion. I have some questions and you're gonna answer them. First of all who are you and why do you rip off my shirt? He just continued to stare then he smiled. Almost as I he were laughing at her. She grit her teeth. All right then little boy. Have it your way. She vanished. Seconds later a kanai was at his throat and he couldn't help but grin even more. Did she really think she could win? Hey he'd show her. She leaned closer to his ear and whispered, not that I don't appreciate you healing me and all, it's just that there's a dangerous criminal named O. Rochimaru running around out here and you sir are unfamiliar. So it's only natural we take you in for questioning. Suddenly three more dropped down. They were wearing cloaks and porcelain masks. He won. Read how he didn't sense them coming but the shrugged it off. These creatures were foolhardy and it was time to put them in their place. He turned his head and hissed loudly causing the female to gasp and leap away. But it was not fast enough as his right arm suddenly transformed into a snake, extended then wrapped around her. H hey. The other three dashed forward intent on rescuing their comrade but it was all for naught. With a grunt, his left arm turned into that of a gorilla and he bashed all three away with a powerful swing. The female gasped and stabbed the snake arm with a kanai, causing him to grunt and drop her. You work for Orochimaru. She leapt up and extended her arm. He held in surprise when several snakes emerged from her sleeves and rushed at him. Who would have thought she had an ability like that? His snake arm transformed again into a large turtle shell and blocked the initial strikes. She widened her eyes when she saw that but held strong as the snakes wrapped around him. What the hell are you? His answer came in the form of his hair suddenly coming to life wrapping around him the jutting outward in all directions like the spines of a porcupine and dispelling the summoned snakes. The three others had recovered as well and they unleashed their attacks. Kaden. Gokyaku no Jutsu. He watched impassively as the fireballs headed to him and gave a lazy flick of his fingers. The four Konoha Nin gasped when the fire stopped in midair then transformed into a pair of clawed hands before rushing back at them. They were so shocked actually that only two were spared a fiery death. Anko and the Anbu in the cat mask. What is he? I don't know. We must report this to Hokage-sama. Their conversation was interrupted when their foe suddenly howled for a few s. Econs then he seemed to transform on the inside of the neck and he let out a long loud hiss before changing again and letting out a weird vibrating call. They watched as both arms and his hair return. Ed to normal and two tails sprouted from his back, a wolf's tail and a scorpion's tail. They gasped when a small army of snakes, Raptors and wolves emerged from the bushes and eyed them hungrily. But, the biggest shock came when a huge pair of white bat wings emerged from his back and gave a mighty flap and his eyes turned black and beady like bats and he began to speak to the beasts using the right sounds for the right type of beast. They seemed to nod then turned their attention to the two. It was then that Anko had a stunning realization. This wasn't some lackey of Orochimaru. No they were facing off against something else. A Yugao. She asked the remaining Anbu. Why yes Anko, replied Yugao while trying to keep her cool. Run. The two took off without a second thought. He could smell their fear. Hell he could taste it in the air. These creatures were strong he'd give them that but they could not match him. He had given the orders to his pack mates not to kill them. Just give them a good scare. He could tell they had type of idea who he was so that led him to conclude that the creatures told stories about him. 
Perhaps those other few he had met in the past had spread the word. He grinned and watched from above on his wings as the two females made a mad dash toward the structure in the center of the forest, raptors and wolves hot on their heels with snakes lunging out of the trees at them. Oh how he loved the chase. It was so invigorating. He watched as the two rushed into the structure and slammed the door shut hard then he dropped from the sky and shared a few humor. Ed grunts and growls with his pack mates before they all dispersed back into the forest. Perhaps he should go in. See what the sudden interest in this structure the creatures have. He himself has been inside several times and found nothing that interested him. But then again he wasn't in the middle of a test. Maybe that was it, another part of the test. His body returned to normal and he walked up to the door. He ignored the nervous clicks coming from the raptors. Sarutobi had just finished his announcement that the third stage of the Chunin exams were underway and he and several others were watching as the first match was ready to begin when the doors slammed open and rushing in came Anko and Yugao. All eyes were instantly upon the two as they looked disheveled if the amounts of twigs, scrapes and dirt covering their person was any indication and they had a combination look of fear and excitement on their faces. We met him, huh, we met him, it was incredible. You should have seen it. Sarutobi jumped to his feet. Met who? Orochimaru. Where is he? Well I met Orochimaru too and he nearly killed me but that's not important. I met someone else Hokage-sama. Now everyone wa s paying attention and the Junin for Odo didn't look too happy. Not important. Yugao stepped forward and said, Hokage-sama. Anko, I and two more Anbu who are now dead had a run in with the fabled king of beasts of the forest of death. Quote, there were some gasps and couple of yeah rights. From a couple of the genin. Anko glared at the genin and said, I wouldn't lie about something like this. He had extremely long yellow hair and the most beautiful blue eyes I have ever seen. He was dressed in a loincloth and could transform parts of his body into different animal parts. He could move at great speed and had a master's control over fire. He literally bent it to his will when the Anbu tried to grand fireball his ass. He was an amazing fighter and when he called forth the snakes, Wakan, G iguanas and the wolves from the forest with different animal calls, I realized who he was. The Hokage gasped and said, W what color was his hair again? Anko seemed a bit nervous by the Hokage's S. Udden discomfort but went to answer anyway. I it was yellow sir. Sarutobi flopped down and began to mutter to himself. Could it be? If so then yes, I was right. Hokage sama what? Suddenly the d-ers burst open again and in came the fabled king of beasts, his long hair dragging on the floor as he stepped into the arena and examined all before him. T that's him, said both females as they leapt away into Sarutobi. Everyone gasped and examined him. The girls all blushing when they saw his well-toned and tanned body while the guys just gaped. H he's our age, exclaimed the spiky-haired Odo Genin. The Beast King slowly swept his gaze over the creatures before him until he finally locked eyes with the Elder. For a whole minute they stared into each other's eyes until finally the Elder snapped out of it and gave a huge warm happy smile while saying one thing that would cause numerous people to gasp again. Naruto, the King versus the Sand. Shock reverberated through the arena like a wave when Serutobi had said that name. Many of the Konoha genin were instantly brought back to the young days when a small yellow-haired boy would proudly explain his dreams of being the Hokage someday. While some of the older generation were instantly brought back to the days that they had harassed him. One such person was the man that had insulted him a few days prior in the forest of death and was threatened by Hayate. He glared at the boy and thought one thing. I thought we got rid of that freak. Some of the girls were lost in thought. One such was a young woman named Hayuga Hanada. And Naruto-kun. It's really Naruto-kun. I I can't believe it. Oh my. He's so scantily clad. Uh oh I'm gonna. And without another thought she fainted. Holy shit. That's Naruto. I remember that kid. He w. As annoying and loud and he sucked at school. But now. This came from the young pink haired woman named Haruno Sakura. Just look at all that hair. No way. He's gorgeous. Thought Yamanaka Ino. S. Imilar thoughts were going through the minds of the rest of the females as well. Kurinai for one was holding back a nosebleed. But the girls weren't the only ones full of thoughts. Gara was eyeing the blonde carefully. 
his aquamarine eyes scanning every part of the boy's body. He reeked of power and it made his lust for battle grow. Uchiha Sasuke raised an eyebrow at the blonde. This was the king of beasts. He guessed it made sense given the odd things that happened before his disappearance, but to make such a big deal out of it. This blonde boy was still just s Dobi in his eyes. An idiot that was not deserving of the stories told about him. A man named Kakashi thought the same thing. The boy was indeed gifted with a strange power but he remembered how lacking the boy had been before he vanished. There wasn't any way he could have gotten much stronger if all he did was hide in a forest for nine years. He shrugged and put his nose back into his perverted book. A disguised Orochimaru was practically excited. He had never seen this boy before and like Gara he too could sense the power hidden behind those confused blue eyes. I wonder how he would take a cursed seal. Kukuku. Fur a whole five minutes everyone just continued to stare and he likewise. But then something completely unexpected happened. A genin by the name of Inazuka Kiba and his large dog Akamaru along with the kek. A beetles of a young man named Abarame Shino rushed at the blonde. Many exclaimed words of shock and warning but they were ignored. When the three finally got to Naruto something else unexpected happened. Kiba and Akamaru bowed while the bugs swarmed around him affectionately. Naruto-sama, said Kiba with his head bowed while Akamaru said the same thing in his native tongue. Naruto chuckled a b, it is the beetles crawled all over him and he gave a pat to both Kiba and Akamaru's heads. If jaws could unhinge and fall through the ground they would have. No fucking way, yelled a young woman named Tenten. A couple of the Oto Nin were flat out laughing. I don't believe it, he's bowing, he's actually bowing, ha ha he really is a dog, exclaimed Abumi Zaku while Dosu and Kin just stared. Oi mut what the hell are you doing? Kiba looked up at the Uchiha and said with a glare. He's my king. Sasuke narrowed his eyes then voiced the question that was going through all tea the moment. What the fuck are you talking about? Kiba looked down and said, it's instinct Sasuke. All of the Inazuka have it. We are more in tune with our baser instincts than most. In a sense we are more dog-like than human. I can't really understand why but I can smell his superiority. It's strange. He emits a feeling that commands me to submit to him. At this there were a few whispers. Sasuke scoffed and grabbed Kiba's collar to yank him up. I bet your clan would laugh at you if they saw this. Kiba grinned. Nope. They did exactly what I was doing. Something you should do as well. Please. And Uchiha bows before no one. Kiba yanked Sasuke's hand from his jacket and said, You're too arrogant. Sasuke pushed Kiba out of the way and walked right up to Naruto and got in his face. So the dog thinks you're a king eh? Wait Uchiha don't do it. Yelled Anko but it was too late. Sasuke reared back and delivered a fierce punch to Naruto's face causing him to fly back and hit the wall. PFF. Typical. He's nothing Kiba just like I said. Quote. Sarutobi glared. Sasuke. Do not attack people that do not deserve it. Sasuke crossed his arms. I'm sorry Hokage-sama it's just that everyone makes such a buy. G deal about the oh so powerful king of beasts. I thought I should take him down a peg or two. Many were feeling disappointed. They thought Naruto was strong. Oh well looks can be deceiving. That is not the point. That boy is not. Sarutobi's words died in his throat because Naruto suddenly appeared in front of the Uchiha and gave a powerful punch to his stomach causing him to puke and to go flying backward. Holy shit. He's fast. Sasuke skidded to a stop crouched over and clutching stomach in great pain while trying to regain his breath. Naruto himself had an impassive face as he approached the Uchiha. I can. Understand. He said much to the shock of the room. I. Not idiot. Live in forest. Does not mean I can't talk. Sasuke glared while breathing heavily. Naruto looked at the young man and grinned. You weak. Still pup. Still hatchling. What? I'll show you. Sasuke leapt to his feet and charged at Naruto with a kunai. Naruto merely stepped to the side then leapt away. Salen, G over everyone into the spot where Sarutobi stood. He didn't use any chakra. Was the surprised yell of a young man named Rock Lee. At first it was hazy, barely noticeable. But over the next couple of minutes it became much clearer. When the elder had said that word. Naruto. It all had started coming back. Memories. Past events childhood adventures and a troubled beginning. He had become lost, in thought as the memories continued to flood his mind. 
Things that were so alien to him suddenly became familiar. Faces and names that he once did not understand were suddenly clear to him in the M. Eaning of the word Naruto was obvious to him as well. Then the boy, his dog and the swarm of beetles had approached him and addressed him as their lord. It had also brought back more memories. Times. During the past where he would easily befriend a stray animal wherever he went. Times where even huge tigers and packs of wolves would bow before him in front of crowds of people, freaking them out and causing them to react negatively. It all came back. Then there was the group of people in front of him now. They were people he knew. Well most of them were. He remembered he used to do something called Cindy training with some of them. No, not Cindy, Shinobai. Yeah, then when the one called the Sasuke had gotten in his face and spoke with that tone of superiority and insulted the Kiba, one last memory came back. He remembered how to speak more of their tongue than just the word chakra. Though his vocabulary wasn't very broad it was enough to get his point across after he sent the boy across the arena with a punch. Then when he leapt to the old man he couldn't help but smile. Gigi Hokage, he said. Sarutobi's eyes had widened and then without another word he was engulfed in a bear hug from the old man. It is absolutely fantastic to see you after all these years Naruto. Naruto grinned and untangled his legs from his hair. Yeah, good, see you too. Sasuke meanwhile was lost in thought. What the hell have you been doing Naruto no Baka? How strong have you become? Ugh my stomach, whatever, I'll find out sooner or later. For now I must pass this exam. Sarutobi had released Naruto but still kept smiling. So why have you come here anyway Naruto? I was getting worried that you might be dead. Naruto shook his head, not dead, got chased away, became pack leader for forest, became alpha. He then looked over at a still uneasy Yugao and Anko. Had fun chasing, he said with a smile. Anko instantly lost all sense of unease and was in his face. Fun. You terrified us for fun. Naruto shrugged. You started it. Quote. Anko growled but was subdued by a wave of the hand from the Hokage. Anyway I'm sure everyone has questions but we're still in the middle of an exam. Save your questions until afterwards please. There were a few groans but every agreed save their questions until later. A lot of thoughts ran through his head as he crouched on the railing and observed the arena below. What was the point of this? Pitting them against each other. Was it for the enjoyment of the crowd? Did it serve a higher purpose? He thought about asking the elder but changed his mind and decided to just watch. One by one the matches came and went. Naruto had been surprised a couple of times by some of the abilities. The red head with the iron sand was ruthless and bloodthirsty. He was powerful and resourceful as well. But that other one in green was no pushover either. His ability to do something called opening the inner gates had surprised him a lot. He had no idea people were capable of such a thing. The one called the Sasuke was still so angry about the punch that he absolutely destroyed his opponent blasting the poor man with a fire dragon. The two females called the Sakura and the Ino were pretty entertaining. They fought for a while, exclaiming their love for the Sasuke and eventually knocking each other out with powerful punches to the jaws. He was disappointed. D when the Kiba lost to the one called the Sai but he gave the dog boy the benefit of the doubt. Those painted animals were quite a force to have to deal with. But he was satisfied when the one called. The Shino won his match against the one called the Zaku. He figured one with a far weaker ability like his, had better be equipped to win. Though he felt the most emotion when he saw the match between the two dubbed. The Neji and the Hanada. He didn't like the way the Neji treated his fellow pack member but didn't say anything. It was not his place to do so lest he cause an unnecessary conflict t. Hat would end up with more of the creatures that were like him getting killed. One by one they fought each other and soon only half of the genin that entered the tower were standing in a line. The Eld. Ur had phased out and reappeared in front of the group of genin and congratulated them on passing the second stage of the exam then explained to them that they had a month of training to commence before. Re the final part of the Chunin exams were to take place. He found the whole thing interesting. Perhaps he should attend these matches in a month. He knew they would spread the word about him once the Y left his forest but it didn't bother him. Hey what about him? Naruto shifted his gaze and saw one of the masked nin staring at him. Sarutobi shrugged. What about him? He can come if he wants. 
But shouldn't we? I doubt you could force him to come with us if you wanted to. That boy easily defeated three Anbu and a special Junin. Naruto heard this and said, I feel, regret killing those two, not mean to. Serutobi smiled, it's alright though I will have to take some sort of action in the future. For now just enjoy yourself. Show off in front of the girls haha. <laughs> At this, Sakura, Hanada, Ino and the Odo Nin named Kin and several others blushed and tore their eyes off of him. Naruto himself just raised an eyebrow. In any case I need the victorious Genin to come here and draw from this box. This will determine your upcoming matches. Naruto was able to hear the coming face-offs. Sai vs Neji. Shino vs Konkuro Sasuke vs Gara, Shikamaru vs Tamari Konkuro vs Shino. And Dosu got a free pass. He could tell they were all excited and wanted to show off. They were so energetic it was humorous to him. Finally they calmed down and began to chat amongst themselves. Naruto after realizing, gee that nothing else was going on decided that he had seen enough. Thesis creatures he remembered were called. Shinobi were quite an interesting thing to observe. But alas he would need to return. His forest was already calling or him. The beasts that followed him growing worried for their master. Naruto gave a small smile to the elder who was chuckling as the Anko and the Yugao excitably described their encounter with him. He smiled a bit at that as well. At least they didn't hate him, like before. He leapt off of the railing and landed in front of the door. But just as his hand grabbed the knob, a voice stops him. It was a shy quiet voice that also held a bit of disappointment. Why you're leaving, already? Naruto turned around and focused his deep blue orbs into the suddenly surprised Brig. HT green eyes of the one called the Sakura. She was standing before him with her hands behind her her head facing away shyly while she looked from the corners f her eyes with a blush. Naruto looked down at her and said, time to return. Home in forest, been gone too long, uncomfortable. Sakura nodded in understanding, but do you have to leave so soon? I mean we barely got to say anything to you because of the exams. Naruto looked up in thought. Memories of this female bombarded his mind. She was a shy girl with low self-esteem due to her large forehead and pink hair. She was a girl that was much like him in some ways. He started to think. Sakura looked at Naruto with hopeful eyes. She really wanted to do a bit of catching up with the blonde. It had been so long since she had seen him. And he had grown so damn good looking. Only he could pull off the loincloth and extremely long hair, she thought with a smile. That smile quickly turned to a gasp when Naruto suddenly spouted a paw. IR of huge black feathery wings and his eyes turned gray. H he can transform, exclaimed the sand nin, Tamari. There were similar exclamations and a smile from Kiba. Naruto looked back at Sakura and said, I apologize, but I leave now. A mighty flap of his wings propelled him into the air and the entire room watched as he circled above them. Twice he circled, like a vulture that had spotted a carcass before jetting right to the door. However his path was once again interrupted when a wall of black sand rose up and caused him to collide with it. Fight me, said Gara as he appeared in a swirl of sand in the middle of the arena. Naruto leapt to his feet and turned around slowly to face the red-headed young man. His eyes having turned back to normal while his wings receded into his back. He, brushed one of his two-foot-long bangs from his eyes and growled out before turning to leave again. This did not sit well with Gara at all. He was not to be ignored by anyone. Not even this guy who is spoken of all over the village like a legend. He watched as the beast king walked around his sand and once again headed for the door. I said fight me, and with that, Gara struck. Naruto was a bit surprised by the actions of the Gara but wasn't really put off by them. He knew that several people in the room wanted to fight him. It was merely a matter of time before one of them couldn't handle it anymore and struck. This was part of the reason he wanted to leave. He had seen what he came to see and felt it was time to return to his forest. He could feel the desire to kill emanating Fro. M the Gara and one of the masked shinobi. He also felt a desire to fight coming from the Sasuke and the Dosu, and he was beginning to grow uncomfortable under the wanting gaze of the shinobi watching over the Odo Genin team. The man was strong and smelled of snakes, the same creature that had given the Sasuke that strange power. But his annoyance began to grow when the Gara yelled out, I said fight me. Just who did he think he was? 
he comes into his forest and demands a fight with him. Did he think he was special because of the sand? Because it had a mind of its own. His thoughts though, were cut off when several yells of, look out Naruto, rang through the room a second before something big, heavy and incredibly hard smashed into his back and pinned him against the wall. He could fee, L the cold metal slowly pressing him into the wall, as if trying to slowly crush his body into nothingness. I have no time for this, he growled out as his body began to glow orange. Gara stared on in disappointment. All that hype about this beast king for this. To watch as his sand slowly crushed the fool against. The walls. Embarrassing. He ignored the shouts from the other shinobi that were. Telling him to knock off his foolish behavior and he ignored the Hokage who was glaring but with a hint of pity. It was as if the old man was giving Gara a warning stare that said, Do not take Naruto lightly. You will pay for it dearly and I pity you for the ass beating you're about to receive. This pissed him off. Old man I'll destroy this fool right before your eyes. Baki, Tamari and Konkuro were growing a bit nervous. Gara's second personality was beginning to surface and the more that happened, the more of a chance that his sand would come to life. Gara's split personality and his. Iron sand Keke Genke melded one day when he was six. The boy had been plying by himself and using his special ability to create all sorts of cool statues when a woman appeared before him in mental. Why tortured him for hours while claiming that his ability was a pathetic recreation of her power? The resulting thirst for revenge and desire to kill created this personality. And since he vowed to use the iron sand to wipe the woman from existence that lust for death and bloodshed became imbued into his sand. In a sense, a new bloodline limit was born. But even having intelligent iron sand couldn't. T have prepared him for what happened next. It came out of nowhere. None of the shinobi occupying the room felt the buildup. The power. But when Naruto unleashed it. Boy that was something to gasp about. Fire so hot it glowed white exploded outward with such force it created a shock wave that rocked the forest. H holy shit. It was like a maelstrom of superheated globs of melted metal, rock and air. Gara's sand so instantly liquefied that one could have doubted it was sand in the first place. The melted debris flew out in all directions away from Naruto and nearly killed several people in. D his once blue eyes were now glowing orange with anger and power. His hair whipping around, wildly and his hands balled into fists. Gara had frozen, along with everyone else. This truly was the fabled Beast King. The fire spiraled around Naruto fiercely switching from orange to blue to white to back again. It was the most beautiful thing the group of shinobi had ever seen. You annoy me, stated Naruto as he took a step forward. Want fight so bad, fine, I show why I rule forest. He the lifted his head and let out the loudest, longest and strangest call they had ever heard. It was like a combination of a scream, a howl and rodents clicking and a gorilla's mating call. When he was done he smirked at Gara and said, gather metal sand. We fight. Kiba and Akamaru felt control of their bow. Dies vanish and before they knew it they were standing beside Naruto, ready to fight. Shinos. Keke beetles were the same. They left their home and converged on Naruto's person. What's going on? Yelled Tamari. This was definitely not what she expected to see. Garas recollected his sand and everything else that was made of metal and glared at the Beast King. I control metal. I'm not easy to defeat. Naruto merely grinned and said. You control but one thing. Suddenly the door burst open and in they came. Wolves, snakes, foxes, coyotes, scorpions, birds, bats, raptors, flies, chipmunks, squirrels, mice, rats. Lizards and numerous other species spilled into the room. Countless beasts of all different types poured into the arena from the door and quickly filled the floor. The shinobi could only gasp and leap to higher ground. But I control many, finished Naruto. Gara's shock was matched only by the other occupants of the room. Naruto stood before him with an army waiting to attack. He was completely surrounded and Naruto's fire seemed to give the creature more power. I incredible, exclaimed Kakashi, Kurenai and Baki at the same time. That sand nin is dead, said Ino with a look of pure horror on her face. Gara get out of there, screamed Konkuro. Never in his life had he seen anything like this. Naruto smirked as his fingers on his left hand transformed into 5L. Ong snakes and his hair turned into porcupine quills. But that wasn't all. 
His legs bent back and became those of an eagle while his face elongated and became that of a raptor. Gara was afraid. What the hell is he? He wasn't human. No human could have the type of power he had. He took a step back. Naruto chuckled and bent forward. Attack. He commanded. Then it happened. The creatures surged F. Forward at speeds that some species should not have. Kiba and Akamaru reached their target first and tried to Gatsuga the redhead but, it was blocked by the sand this time. Arg. He looked down and, saw a large scorpion removing its stinger from his leg but before he could do anything, a heavy fist smashed right through his sand and into his head he flew back and was caught in the talons of a huge condor. The sand lashed out and bashed the bird in the chest, causing it to release him but it was all for naught. The shinobi clung to the walls and the ceilings and could only watch in awe as Ga. Ra was systematically destroyed by Naruto and his beasts. His sand was practically useless. There were just too many enemies to defend against. And add to the fact that Naruto kept melting it and it only made things worse for Gara. However Gara was powerful and stubborn. His sand lashed out at everything and killed numerous beasts. Its defenses and durability seemingly increasing during the fight and his reflexes got better. He created an arm of sand and bashed several raptors away while simultaneously ducking under the slash of a tiger. His sand shield blocked the strike of a large snake but not the attack from Naruto himself. His burning fist melted right through the sand and buried itself in his stomach, filling his entire being with immeasurable pain. Gara screamed to Mari as the redhead was launched backward and into the waiting crowd of a pack of thirty wolves and Kiba. They proceeded to maul him for the next minute until Naruto commanded them to stop. Naruto was impassive, as he vanished and reappeared with Gara held up by the throat. The beast stopped attacking and looked on in anticipation. Gara glared and tried to strike with more sand, only for it to melt upon contact with his body. He was in horrible shape. He had never even experienced the slightest of pain during the course of his entire life but now as he hung almost limply from Naruto's snake fingers it was all he felt. It was a feeling he never wanted to feel again. Understand now, said Naruto as he dropped the young sand nin. I, not weak, stronger than most, you no match for me. The beasts howl, ed out their agreements while Kiba shouted, hell yeah. Gara looked up and wheezed out, w what, or why you? Naruto looked up in thought, not sure, born with strange power, born with bond to animals. But, what about the fire? Same thing, I, think it because fire wild, untamed and free, like animal. Fire is animal spirit, Gara nodded weakly, I, see, you, really aren't human. Or rather, Naruto raised an eyebrow and bent down. Chakra, he said as his hands began to glow green. Within ten minutes, Gara was healed mostly. All of the different poisons were removed from his system and his injuries were taken. Care of. He was still heavily bruised and his sand was slowly but surly reforming out of the twisted melted then hardened metal laying all over the place but he wasn't in any more danger. The other shinobi wearily came down from their positions on the walls and ceilings and slowly approached Naruto and his beasts. They heard a few of them growl but a command from Naruto in their tongue quelled them. Naruto transformed back to normal and smiled. I sorry, he said. I not mean to scare. Just put upstart in place. Gara growled and uttered a weak, shut up. Sarutobi approached and said, no apologies are needed, you merely were defending yourself. There were grunts of agreement from the beasts. Naruto smiled again and examined the rest of the group. Most were still, openly stunned while others such as the Anko, the Ino, the Kin and the Sakura were looking with admiration and starry eyes. He raised an eyebrow but said nothing about it. After all, females of the foe. Rest were always attracted to the strongest of their species. Perhaps it was the same for the shinobi as well. He turned back to the Hokage and said, I leave now, before turning and heading to the door for a third time. Wait Naruto. Naruto turned to face the Hokage. Will you come visit? Naruto was quiet for what seemed like an eternity before he smiled. I might. And with that, he was gone. The beasts collected their fallen comrades and they too were gone in a couple of minutes. Kiba, Akamaru and Shino's Keke beetles remained behind. Once Naruto was gone Kiba blinked a few times as if coming out of a trance. Before gaining an amazed expression on his face. He could control me too. He bellowed out in a voice that was full of excitement. Arf. 
Shino himself was deep in conversation with his own creatures. Slowly the shock of everything wore off and the shinobi headed out of the arena and back toward Konoha. Oh yeah there were some stories that needed to get told and fast. Or, Akimaru sat in a hidden room in the tower along with Kabuto. My 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 now this is a most stunning development. The Beast King E.H. Kukukuku. Extraordinary. I never thought the fabled King of Beasts W. Old be this powerful at such a young age. Kabuto adjusted his glasses. Orochimaru-sama do you know anything about this boy? The snake Sanin grinned. Not a thing. However I did stumble upon an old prophecy when I was younger. It stated that at long last after eons of waiting, a person would be born. He or she would be gifted with the power to control the common beast. He would unite them and bring them greatness. It stated that this fabled new lord would be looked down upon by the lords of the other realms and that he would have to prove himself to them. It is said that the lord of beast s would be gifted with the very spirit element of the animal and his power would grow to astounding, unfathomable levels. He would force the other lords to recognize the power of the beast if he had to. And this Naruto is that person. Orochimaru shrugged. I do not know. For all I know it could just be a powerful Keke Genke. I really do not put my beliefs in folklore and legends. However I will keep an eye out for that boy. He is very powerful. That is something I cannot deny or simply overlook. What do you plan to do? Orochimaru shrugged. We'll proceed with the invasion as planned. I, F the so-called king of beasts interferes I'll deal with him, personally. Sadistic laughter could be heard echoing through the now empty arena. The Inazuka's problem. Enter Gara, Sakura and Shikamaru. Chaos erupted all over Konoha as soon as the shinobi emerged from the forest of death. Stories erupted all over as the group rushed home to their loved ones in order to excitably talk about their encounter with the Beast King. Villagers and shinobi chatted adamantly with each other as more and more rumors were spread. I heard he killed two Anbu easily. I heard he looks like a blonde Adonis, he he. All over he was talked about. Genin Cell Team Number 7 had swiftly made it back to Konoha to get a bit of rest. The whole experience in the Forest of Death left them completely drained. Sakura was still in a state of shock at what she had witnessed. The power he displayed, the absolute control he had over the creatures of the forest. Then again she wasn't sure if all of them were wound. Er his control as opposed to just following him. Willingly, she turned to her teammates to try and get a feel for what they might have been feeling. Sasuke of course was pissed. She understood. Why though? He had been humiliated by the Beast King with a single punch and a few, well-placed words. She knew he was either cursing the blonde for having a power stronger than his or he was contemplating on how to get as strong as Naruto. Sai was a blank. His expression showed no feelings whatsoever. Perhaps it was because of his upbringing. His father Danzo runs. Root Anbu and therefore naturally train. D his son in the path of no emotion and unfeeling personality. Kakashi was of course buried nose deep in his perverted book but she could see that he too was deep in thought. Um Kakashi sensei. She began. Kakashi shifted his gaze to his pink haired student and raised an eyebrow. Just as she was about to ask her question she was cut off. If you want to get trained you'll have to find someone else. I have to train Sasuke for the upcoming final rounds. Sakura glared when she heard this. He really thought that's what she wanted. Damn arrogant ass perverted sensei. Instead of proceeding with her question she huffed and stormed off. Fuck it then. She yelled as she leapt away, her second personality temporarily surfacing. Kakashi just sighed and turned back to Sasuke. Sai was already gone, probably off to get training from his father and Root. Well, let's go. We have a lot to cover. Sasuke just grunted and followed while his thoughts once again drifted to Naruto. I will get stronger. If that Dobi can do it then I will too. I won't fall behind you. Sasuke winced in pain slightly as the seal on his shoulder began to react. Kiba and Akamaru walked home in a daze. The Beast King, Uzumaki Naruto, could control him. He could control Akamaru. He could control the entirety of the Inazuka clan. It was such an exciting feeling knowing he was so closely linked to one such as the Beast King. But at the same time it was frightening as well. He and his clan had also taken part in mistreating him in a desperate attempt to stave off their instinctual urge to submit to him. They denied, 
The fact that Naruto was their lord whether they liked it or not and they desperately did everything to make sure the boy stayed away from them. They were cruel to him. Oh man how am I gonna tell mom and sis this? They're big fans of the Beast King. And what if Naruto remembers what we did to him? Oh man what a drag. Shit. I sound like Shikamaru. Kiba. Kiba. Hey you're back. Oh. Hi Hannah Ni chan Hana paused and raised an eyebrow at his less than enthusiastic voice. Something wrong Kiba? She asked. But before he could answer another woman appeared. She had a feral beauty about her and wild brown hair. Her dog partner stood beside her looking powerful and respected. Inazuka soon grinned down at her son and was getting ready to enthusiastically ask if he was proceeding on to the final rounds when she saw his expression. E.H. What's your problem? Kiba just sighed and said in a low whisper. I. I met the Beast King. The two women gasped and were instantly upon him with questions. Really? He's real. What's he like? Tell us. How powerful was he? Kiba couldn't help but smile. The two were so excited right now. But it was time to ruin the moment. No matter how much he didn't want to. Mom. Hannah. The Beast King is so powerful I doubt a small army of ninja could take him on and win. His control over fire is at a level that is not human and his mastery over the creatures of the forest of death. Or any animal for that matter could cripple both the Aburame and the Inazuka clans and anyone who summons for that matter. I've never seen anything like what he can do. He can even transform. The two women looked up with dreamy looks in their eyes. Now that's one hell of an alpha male, said Soom. Hannah just nodded. Kiba grinned then sighed sadly. You're right. But mom, Hannah. The Beast King, is Naruto. Uzumaki Naruto. Sabaku no Gara sat in the trees overlooking a training ground and pondered. He had never experienced something like what the Beast King had done to him. His sand was utterly useless against him. Something he had never thought possible before. Just what was he? Suddenly his sand slid out of his gourd and began to condense in shape Floa. Ting in front of him until eventually a black colored version of Gara appeared. This other Gara had a sadistic gleam in his eyes and his smile radiated bloodlust and hate. Don't worry about that fool Gara. He was strong. Way too strong for us. Gara nodded. Yeah, but what was he? The sand looked up in thought then grinned sadistically. Perhaps during the invasion as we drain the lives from our victims, we will find out E.H. Quote. Gara nodded. Or maybe if he leaves that forest and aids Konoha. His power will attract that demon bitch so we can rip her head off once and for all. Gara nodded with his resolve hardening. Yes, that would be most satisfying. The sand chuckled evilly and began to seep back into the gourd but a sudden yell halted that. Gara looked down, surprised as the girl with bright pink hair entered the training ground. He would have scoffed at this pathetic Kunoichi had she not been talking to herself with two apparent voices. One that sounded angry and sad while the other sounded vulgar. Bold and overly confident, Gara and his second personality brought to life through Iron Sand were both surprised. Well now, this is interesting. They watched as Sakura punched a training log and yelled out. Why, I know I'm weak. This last few days has shown me that, and seeing someone like Naruto who was utterly nothing all those. Years ago, become something of a local legend only makes me feel worse. She pounded on the log again and caused it to split in half. Oh shut up you stupid bimbo. She screamed in a different voice. You are weak. You are pathetic. You spend so much time fawning over Sasuke that you completely neglect your job. You even neglect to use me now. So quit your bitching and do something about it. Sakura aside, her second self was so brutally unforgiving. Even when she was first created when she was five. Now that brought back memories. She was a shy quiet girl whose feeling could be easily hurt. She was the constant brunt of cruel jokes from others due to her large forehead and her clan's unique pink hair. This second personality was a result of this. She had thought herself ugly and deformed. Her confidence was non-exist. And in her voice never rose above a whisper. She bottled up her sadness when around others then released it all when she got home to her mother and other clan mates. She remembered telling her mother. That she regretted joining the ninja academy and that she was going to withdraw. But then something happened the very next day while in the flower arranging class. It was meeting Yamanaka Ino. The da. Why she met that girl was the day her life changed. 
Ino's confidence and loud voice completely overwhelmed Sakura at first but as she got to know the girl, she gradually calmed down. Ino was a wonderful influence on Sakura. She had convinced the pink-haired girl to keep going along the shinobi path. She had gotten her to open up more. She had done wonders for her. But Sakura held firm to her belief. That she was not as pretty as the other girls. It was her personality. But then she received yet another huge confidence boost and it eventually cost her the friendship with Ino. It came in the form of F.A. rivalry for the one known as Uchiha Sasuke's love. This newfound confidence completely and permanently forced a change upon her psyche and it resulted in another personality. Being formed in order to alter herself in Sasuke's supposed desired image, this new personality, born of great confidence and short temper, fought for dominance with her original meek personality. The result was a person. Ality split all the way down to her soul. Split personality disorder borderline schizophrenia. It's a mental illness that occurs within many but is most prominent with the Haruno clan. The members of this clan have very fragile psyches and any amount of mental stress could result in this type of split. But unlike normal personality splits the Harunos tend to divide all the way down to the soul. This is extremely dangerous and rare. Only affecting one out of every 500,000 people, however in the Haruno clan it is highly common. Sakura is the first ninja of her clan so her potential is virtually an unknown. But according to Serutobi himself, the Haruno clan has the potential to become one of the greatest ninja clans in Konoha. Due to having essentially two minds, their intelligence is high. Their adaptability is very high, they are nearly immune to genjutsu and they are extremely fast learners. They also tend to have photographic memories and perfect chakra control. Garabi, Ing one who suffers from the same illness as Sakura saw her vast potential. He saw a kindred spirit in her. And the fact that her second personality still resided within her showed that she has not truly awakened her potential. He couldn't help but grin as he leapt down and landed in front of her. Ah, Sakura stumbled back and fell on her ass when Gara dropped from above. W what do you want? She asked with a mix of fear and indignation. She hadn't forgotten what she had done to Lee but at the same time she didn't like the fact that someone had seen her sulking as she was. Gara app roached slowly and crouched down to meet her eyes. Those emerald orbs were full of fear and determination. Gara could see her muscles tense, her second personality surfacing and getting ready to fight. You are like me, he said. Sakura gasped, W what? Gara merely reached out and caressed her cheek an action she somehow found herself unable to prevent. She merely stared into his eyes. They were soft, not at all like what she had seen during the preliminaries. They were completely different. This caused her confusion to grow. Tell me, Sakura looked at him, confused as he wiped a nearly dry tear from her cheek. What caused your personality to split? She gasped again and scurried back a few feet with eyes full of a sudden realization. Gara smiled though there was a bit of sick anticipation laced in that look. She couldn't say anything, her heartbeat was going a mile a minute. It all made sense now. Why his eyes were so warm at one time yet murderous the very next second. Why his sand seemed to be alive. Gara smiled as he saw her finally put it together and stood back up. I can help you grow strong. She looked up at him with surprise and trepidation, her mouth opening and closing but not forming any words. Gara took a couple of steps to her and held out his hand. I have seen and heard of your plight. I myself went through a similar phase, if only for an extremely s. Hoarder amount of time before I found my drive. Tell me, what is your drive? What do you desire most in the entire world? Sakura was about to blurt out her immediate answer. She wanted Sasuke the most. That's what she was going to say. But something stopped her. It was Jir second person AT. Is it truly Sasuke you want? Or just the image of Sasuke? His confidence, his skill, his ability to cope with his the harshness of life. She then thought of Naruto. His power, his confidence, his ability. The other genin too all had something in common. Confidence. Everyone around her didn't have a single doubt about their skills. They knew what they wanted and they reached for it despite whatever life might throw at them. Sakura looked up in thought. What did she want? Was it confidence? No, her second personality had plenty of that. Was it Sasuke? Did she want him? She didn't know anymore. 
She looked back up at Gara who was still holding out his hand. Um, what is it you want most in the world? She decided to take a chance and throw the question back at him in order so see what his drive was. Gara seemed surprised by her question but got over it quickly. He looked up in thought then said, I want one thing and one thing only. Once I get that I will finally be able to go on with my life, he then reached up and bushed his hair from his forehead. Sakura gasped when she gazed upon the kanji for vengeance engraved onto his skull. I will have my revenge on the bitch that ruined my life and caused my personality split. I will use my sand to rip her limb from limb. Sakura held her ha nds to her mouth and stared at the tattoo with wide eyes and Gara once again held out his hand. Now tell me what it is you desire most. Sakura looked down at the ground. Many thoughts ran through her head until she had her answer. She didn't want Sasuke. Not if he didn't show what she desired from him. Love. She mumbled. Gara raised an invisible eyebrow. Love. She nodded. Yes, love. I want love. I want to be adored. To be acknowledged. I want everyone to desire me. I want everyone to love and admire my power. I want to be strong. I want to find a soulmate. To no longer be the brunt of jokes. To no longer be seen as a weak nobody. I want to be loved and the confidence that will guide me to that love. By the end of her rant she had broken down into tears again and was looking down with her hair shadowing her eyes. Pathetic huh, she said with a bitter sob. Gara sighed and knelt down. He reached out and brushed her tears away. No, it's not a pathetic desire. She gasped ye. T again and snapped her vision back up to the Sunanin. To want to find love is not something you should be ashamed of. Love is one of the great paths to power after all. Sakura's eyes got wide, causing Gara to smile and stand up. Holding his hand out once again. This time Sakura wasted no time in grabbing his hand. Let's go then, sensei. Yeah, I wanna see what your plan for me is. Gara Chu, CK led and vanished with Sakura in a swarm of sand. They were completely unaware of the two that had been watching, with huge eyes. Tamari and Konkuro would forever remember the day that Gara actually let his first personality surface in order to help a young woman. They didn't even seem to care that this posed a threat to the invasion. I can't believe that just happened, muttered Konkuro. Tamari merely nodded her head. Sum and Hana took a step back in shock. The name Naruto was not an easily forgotten one. Hana was in a similar position. And Naruto, why you mean? Kiba nodded and looked down. B but, no that can't be. But it is. Soon dropped to her knees. Kiba, does he remember? She asked. Kiba shook his head. I barely remember that day. I'm not sure if Naruto does. But if he does he certainly does not care. Why would he not care? The entire Inazuka clan once tried to kill him. Exclaimed a near frantic Hana. Kiba sighed. If he does remember and does not care, it's because. He knows we no longer have the power to harm him anymore. What do you mean? Kiba looked up with a smile. The Beast King can control us. He really is the Lord of Beasts and anyone linked to them. If he wanted he could make us his slaves and we wouldn't be able to do anything to stop it. With a single command and assertion of his amazing powers, he could force us all to kill ourselves. Hannah and Soom gasped. And no way. Kiba nodded. Yep, and now the only question remains is what are we going to do? Soom looked at her son with a critical eye. What do you mean? She asked. Kiba sighed. I have already decided to be loyal to him, to be a part of his pack. We practically have no choice anyway. Soom sighed and looked up with a defeated sigh. Yeah, perhaps. Soom spoke up her dog partner, Kuromura. Are you sure, absolutely sure you're ready to submit to the Beast King? To finally obey your baser instincts and become a servant of the one who was destined to lead our kind to greatness. Soon looked down at her dog and said, you know something don't you? Kuromura chuckled and said, if you accept your fate, then I and the rest of the dogs will tell you the true legend of the one dubbed the first lord of beasts. A legend that has been passed down through the generations of every different species of beast on the planet. Kiba, Hana and Soon looked down at their dogs with surprise. Kiba had already made his decision but Soom and Hana seemed hesitant. I need some time, muttered Soom after what seemed like an eternity. Yeah, me too, said Hana. Kuromura just shrugged and said, very well, 
Before he turned to leave, I suggest paying the Beast King a visit in his forest. It might help you make up your minds. Soom and Hana could only nod. Scene change. Nah. Rashikamaru was propped up against a large tree gazing up at the clouds lost in thought. Like everyone else, he too remembered Naruto and his strange power. Up until earlier that day, it had never O.C. occurred to him that Naruto could be the famous Beast King, even though all the clues were right there. Sigh, troublesome urban legends, getting all overdramatic and far-fetched. Then he thought about what he had seen in the Forest of Death. Maybe the rumors weren't as far-fetched as he thought but still, because of the way people described him in the past, he had dismissed the rumors as stories meant to keep children in bed. There was no logic or sense behind what the people talked about. It sounded like a bunch of fairy tales, something he had never been interested in anyway, but if people we re a bit more level-headed like him he wouldn't have dismissed the stories and he would have deduced years ago that Naruto was the beast king they all talked about. The clues had all been there. It was so obvious now that he had facts and not a bunch of drunken crap. Oh well, he had his answer now. He sighed again and was about to close his eyes when a scream suddenly rang through the air. Uh now what? He sighed as he got to his feet and peeked over the hill he was lying on. He saw the sound girl he had defeated in the preliminaries. She was in horrible shape. Her face was bruised and her clothes torn to shreds. She was running frantically toward the forest of death with a few other older sound ninhod on her trail. What the hell? He asked no one. Get away from me. I don't want to be sacrificed. No, you have no choice girl. It is your purpose now. You will become fodder for Orochimaru-sama's Edo Tensai. No, back off. The girl jammed a kanai into the thigh of the closest ninja then dashed into the forest. Get back here wench. Shikamaru watched as they all vanished into the trees and sighed again. The girl is in trouble, should I go in after them? Oh man this is such a drag. Troublesome girl going and refusing to be sacrificed. With more mumbling he got to his feet and popped his neck and back a few times before vanishing into the shadow of the tree. After all it was not in his nature to leave a woman in trouble. She ran into the forest of death without a second thought. She was angry, sad and she felt betrayed all at the same time. Orochimaru had murdered her teammates in cold blood, claiming that their usefulness was done. When she had saw what she had done to them she ran. But Orochimaru had known she was there and had sent some of his goons after her. She didn't know what to do. Was she really going to die? Was she really just a pawn in her master's eyes? Such a realization had nearly crumbled her resolve right there but her desire to live had overridden that. She leapt over a large bush just as a hail of six kanai sailed at her then dashed to the right. I won't die, not today, she yelled as she dodged another hail of the small ninja weapons. Think again bitch, Zankua, Kin didn't have any time to react. The shock of discovering that someone other than Zaku possessed the surgically implanted air cannons had stunned her and left her wide open for the attack. She was slammed in the back and lifted six meters into the air before she slammed into a tree with great force. All she could do was try desperately to regain her breath as she fell back to the ground and smashed into it hard. She looked up with clouded vision and saw her six pursuers land in a circle around her. Heh heh you gave us quite a chase girl but it's time to end this little game of yours. You're going to die bitch so quit crying about it. Everyone serves a purpose when allied with Orochimaru Sama. Yours just happens to be that of a lowly pawn. The six then began to laugh mockingly at her. Now come on. Orochimaru Sama is waiting for his last pawn. Kin closed her eyes in defeat. She really was going to die. Betrayed by the one she thought was her everything. H hey. What the? I can't move. Wah. I can't move either. Oh shit. Neither can I. What's going on? Kin's surprise caused her to open her eyes. Once she did she was greeted by the sight of T. He six sound nin struggle in vain against an invisible force. She was about to voice her own confusion when the answer came to her in the form of a lazy and annoyed sounding voice. Cage main no jutsu success, it said. Kin found her eyes widening and she sprang to her feet. No goddamn way. You. Indeed it was. The very same Konoha Genin that had defeated her in a very embarrassing way emerged F. Rom the shadow of a huge tree with his hands in his pockets. He looked over at her with a blank expression then to the fuming sound Nin. 
You all distracted me from my cloud watching. Troublesome bunch of ninja. The leader of the group sneered and said, Shut it you pathetic little Konoha Jenin. Shikamaru merely sighed and said, Pathetic huh? It seems you are all the more pathetic ones, chasing down a girl with six full-grown men. And what's this about using her as a sacrifice? Fuck you, you'll know when Orochimaru-sama destroys this village. Shikamaru sighed again, not very intelligent either. You don't reveal your sinister plans to the enemy. At this the group's eyes widened. Yeah that's right, you screwed up, and you know what else. The nin glared at the young man with hate. Shikamaru's face suddenly transformed into a scowl and hands of shadow crept up their bodies into their necks. I don't like it when men pick on women. The six sound nin suddenly began to gasp for air as the hands proceeded to choke them out. Ah, uh, Akan no. After several minutes all six of them dropped dead. Their windpipes crushed. Kin stared with wide eyes. He could do that with his shadow. Shikamaru looked at Kin and said, Stay out of trouble next time you troublesome female. I can't be there to save you all the time no matter how cute you are. Kin blushed then scowled. I don't need to be saved. Asshole. Whatever. Just stay out of. His sentence died down as a large pack of wolves suddenly emerged from the bushes and numerous birds landed on the branches above. W what now? Yelled out Kin. Shikamaru looked at the creatures before him and sighed. We're in the forest of death. Naruto must know we're here. Kin froze up. D do you think he's hostile? Unlikely. He prob. Ably wanted to know what all the commotion in his forest was about. It was then that the wolves came forward and converged on the bodies of the fallen sound nin. Or they could be looking for their next free meal. Said Shikamaru as the wolves began to drag the bodies into the forest. I think we should go, said Kin. Shikamaru was about to agree when a smaller wolf tugged on his pant leg. The wolf was black and had golden eyes. It was growling a bit trying to get its message across to him. Shikamaru being the genius he is quickly figured out what the wolf wanted. Come on, it wants us to follow it. What? Just come on. Kin sighed. She didn't like this but she had nowhere else to be and she figured it's smarter to stay with the guy that just saved her life. Without really thinking s, he grabbed a hold of Shikamaru's arm as the two followed the pack of wolves deeper into the forest of death. I think they're taking us to Naruto, said Shikamaru after he got over his slight shock at. Having the girl grab onto his arm like that. Kin merely nodded and pressed herself a bit closer to him. The two followed the wolves for well over a half an hour and they both noticed that the creatures seemed to get larger and more. Intelligent looking as they got deeper in the forest. Shikamaru quickly realized that the forest of death is very much larger than portrayed on the map they were given for the Chunin exams. That are the forest connected to a larger forest hidden somewhere behind. Konoha. His thoughts were cut short as he came to a massive clearing in what looked like a crater. In a valley about 100 feet down. But what really had his attention was what was in the crater. Kin gasped and said, Oh my sweet Kami. The wolves seemed amused by their reactions. It was then that, Naruto suddenly dropped from the sky and landed in front of them. He was grinning like a madman as his wings receded. Into his back, he gestured with his hand toward the utopia in front of them and said in the best human tongue he could. Welcome. To Beast King. Home. You here for train. The two looked at him confused. Naruto looked up in thought. Then listened as a hummingbird chirped quickly in his ear. When it flew away, Naruto grinned again and looked at the two in front of him. Birds observe village. Birds say shinobi train for month. Wolves found you in forest. You train. Kin had a sudden realization as did Shikamaru. But unlike Kin whose excitement was growing, Shikamaru was trying not to groan. Naruto-san we were not training. I saved the girl from some enemies. He pointed at, the dead Oto nin that were already half eaten then to Kin. We ended up in the forest by chance only. Naruto looked at them with that same grin then said, want train. Shikamaru was afraid of this. Damn how was he going to say no? His day started out so promising too. Just as he was about to give his answer, along with a witty reason on why not, Kin gasped and said, training with Konoha's fabled beast king. Hell yeah, come on lazy boy let's do this. Shikamaru had to refrain from cursing. Naruto grinned and said, great, I make you strong, make you like beast. Naruto then guided both Genin toward his home. 
ignoring the groans from Shikamaru. Enter Sasuke and the Hachimata. Sakura and Gara appeared, ironically in a field covered in dried out cherry blossom petals. The trees were bursting, with the delectable maroon fruits and the sun shined brightly down upon them. Sakura stumbled back a bit and looked around frantically. Calm down, I'm not going to injure you, said Gara with amusement shining in his eyes. Sakura took a couple of breaths before she steeled her resolve. S sorry, she muttered. Gara took a step closer and said, do not be afraid of me. I will do no harm to you. No matter what personality is in control at the moment. I will train you. Sakura could only nod. Gara's entire aura intimidated her to no end. He reeked of power but in a malevolent way. Not like Naruto whose aura was wild ad happy like the beasts he associates with. But her interest was already high. Gara suffered from a split personality disorder. Just like her, his sand was infused with the second personality and therefore brought the sand to life. He seeks revenge on a demon and he sought her out. He came to her and offered her power. She found herself smiling a bit as her second personality cheered inside. Gara suddenly gestured around him. See these old dried out cherry blossom petals? She nodded. I will teach you how to turn them into sand, she gasped. Why you can teach me that? Gara nodded, with perfect chakra control and a second soul residing within your body. It is possible, you will infuse your more violent personality into the cherry blossoms around you. You, will use chakra to cut them up into near invisible grains then harden those grains. And you will work on your own confidence, your own power. I was born with the iron sand ability but you and your say, Khan personality might be able to simulate it by bonding with a piece of the world that most suits you. Sakura didn't know what to say. All she could do was ask, why? Gara looked up then said, curiosity. Your spirit called out to mine. I will help you any way I can. I want to see if it is possible to recreate the Shukaku's ability again. Sakura stared at Gara for a whole minute. This must be the original personality. He was so gentle, so direct but in a good way. She straightened out and stepped up to Gara. Okay then sensei, teach me. Gara could only smile a near invisible smile. Kakashi Hataki is a man in his mid-twenties. He's hailed as one of the strongest ninja in Konoha and has 1000 jutsus under his belt. He possesses the feared Sharingan and is the creator of the widely known Chidori. He became a chunin at age 6 and a junin a couple of years after that. He gives off an aura of incompetence and laziness but he is really quite intelligent and cunning. Sasuke Uchiha was in a way, similar. He was born from the noble and powerful Uchiha clan. He is a very intelligent and cunning boy, with a lust for power and his one purpose in life is to get the revenge he so deserves upon his brother. Well that and to restore the Uchiha clan. However he has been having a bit of a problem lately and that problem was getting worse every moment. Kakashi couldn't help but be war. I.e.d. when Sasuke repeatedly clutched at the cursed seal on his neck. Ever since he brought the young man out here to train, Sasuke has been having increasing problems with it. The boy fought hard against it. Kakashi could see that the boy didn't want anything to do with the seal. It was trying to possess him and Sasuke's pride as an Uchiha forbid himself from allowing anything to control him, except his lust for revenge. Sasuke knew what powers the cursed seal could bring him. He knew that if he accepted Orochimaru's seal then he would undoubtedly become extremely powerful. However after Witna, SSING Naruto's power he began to question himself. Naruto was a boy that had no ninja training. He slacked off in the academy when they were kids and he acted like a complete idiot. Though he did have a special power when it came to animals. Now, years later, Naruto is quite possibly the strongest being in Konoha. If he could do that then surely he could too. He didn't need to borrow some snake fag's cursed power. This of course had a negative reaction to the seal. He constantly fought against it. He could feel it trying to overtake his body. He looked at Kakashi and grunted. All right what do you have planned for me? Kakashi smiled and said, you know of the Chidori right? I will teach you that. Sasuke nodded. And for the next few days, Kakashi worked with Sasuke on his speed to get H. I am up to the level needed to execute a respectable Chidori, both completely unaware of the third presence that seemed to be sleeping in the deep ravine below as they trained. Alright Sasuke you're almost there. 
Try using a bit of Lee's taijutsu to help him crew. Sasuke nodded, instantly remembering the moves he had managed to copy from Lee during his little challenge before the first stage of the Chunin exams. He didn't pay any extra thought to the fact that he had effectively stolen Lee's hard-earned taijutsu and Kakashi didn't seem to either. Sasuke just concentrated on gaining the speed nay. Cesare for the Chidori with his Sharingan blazing in his eyes. As he dashed around the training grounds with gravity seals blowing on his legs he once again fought off a pulse from the cursed seal. It was quickly becoming an annoying. Soom and Hannah made it to the forest of death and wasted no time. In leaping over the fence and into it, they had listened to Kuromaru's advice and decided to pay th. E Beast King a visit before they decided on whether or not they should submit to him. It was a big decision to them. To submit to their baser instincts and become members of. Naruto's pack meant to place their loyalty more to him than to Konoha and the Hokage. Their instincts would not settle for anything else. This was something that didn't sit very well with them. The two women leapt through the trees with the grace and skill of any elite. Kunoichi and they made sure to avoid some of the more vicious beasts known to prowl through the forest. They traveled for a couple of hours until they picked up a scent. It was the scent of blood. They wondered if it was a poor Genin's corpse from the Chunin exams but then dismissed that. This scent was newer than the others and it was completely covered by the scent of wolves as well. Curiosity got the better of them and they followed it. What they found caused them to gasp. It was a round cater about 100 feet deep. But it was what was in the crater that had the gasping. It was, a paradise, a picture of beauty that could only be described in paintings. Huge luscious green trees swayed in the cool breeze, hundreds of different multicolored. Birds squawked happily as they flew through the air without a care in the world. White tigers and black bears lazed about and numerous flowers painted the entire area a series of golds, reds, pinks, purples and oranges. A magnificent waterfall and a crystal clear river that flowed through the area dazzled the crater with bright rainbows and a crisp clean air and every single plant was practically radiating life. And right in the center of all of this was a large hut. Several large snakes and a pack of thirty wolves rested lazily around the hut in a protective manner. Soom and Hannah barely held in gasps. This place was unlike any piece of nature they had ever seen. Be beautiful, said Hannah with his hands on her mouth. Soom could only nod. I I'm sure Naruto lives down there. Soom nodded and steeled her resolve. Come on Hannah, we came this far, let's finish. Um, why yeah, as the two women got closer and closer to the floor of the crater they felt their nervousness growing. What was Naruto like, would he order the beasts currently lazing about his home to attack? What if he remembered, how would he feel about them? These questions continued to pour through their minds as they got to the bottom. They were borderline scared by the time their feet finally touched the ground. They exchanged nervous looks with each other before they started to trek towards Naruto's home. They beck, aim tense instantly when several beasts leapt to attention and looked at them with a look that said, Who are you? What do you want? Intruders. Um mom, I'm not sure coming here was a good idea, sigh. D Hannah as the bears and the tigers began to move closer. No you think, said Soom with a sarcastic voice. What do we do? If they attack we fight and run like hell. How the hell are we supposed to do that? Look at all of them. Just shut up and follow my lead. The two Inazuka women tensed up and prepared to strike but before they could do anything something landed behind them and made away. Road noise that caused the beasts to back off and return to their previous positions. The two froze. Who are you? Not expect more. Visitors. The voice was smooth and authoritative. The only thing wrong was the broken speech. Slowly the two women turned around to face the newcomer. They gasped when they saw him. He stood six feet tall and had stunning blue eyes that seemed to glow in the sun. His long, g-yellow hair glimmered and his muscled rippled beneath his tanned skin. He was perfection. He stood there looking confused and a bit annoyed as he looked at the two. There were two other people slung over his shoulders. A girl with really long hair and to their surprise, Shikamaru. Both were covered in dirt scrapes and bruises and were unconscious. Naruto looked at the two women and said, Why you here? Hana and Soom however had completely zoned out. As soon as they laid eyes on Naruto all sense of awareness vanished. There, instincts kicked in with an intensity that they could not avoid. Alpha, 
screamed both women's instincts but they fought it. Desperately. And lost. Before Naruto could ask again why they were here, Sum and Hana dropped to their knees and bowed before him. Naruto-sama, they both huffed out in ragged breaths. Naruto had been surprised by this sudden action but it soon turned into mirth. He walked around them and towards his hut. Come, he said. The two women followed without hesitation. The other beasts seemed to be entertained by the two Inazuka women and it showed in their eyes. As the two women followed Naruto into his hut they slowly regained a bit of control over their instincts. Damn, Naruto just reeked of power, authority and energy. Their instincts blared in the backs of their minds. Alpha male, mate material, is what kept screaming in the bee. Acts of their minds they had to suppress their urges. Naruto laid Kin and Shikamaru down on a large mat made of fur and chuckled softly before he turned back to the women in front of him. Both were C. T T I N G down on their knees with the hands on their laps and their heads were bowed. Naruto walked up to them and patted both women on the head affectionately, causing them to flinch then sigh. Names, he asked. Both women looked up at him with surprised looks. Hana Inazuka, Sum Inazuka. Naruto seemed surprised at first then he said, why you here? They didn't know what to say. Just flat oh you, t tell him they were here to see if he was worthy of them joining him. Yeah, for obvious reasons, that made no sense. If anything Naruto would be deciding if they were worthy of joining him. W we came, to meet you, said Hannah with a voice marred with nervousness. Meet me, why, soon slowly looked up and locked eyes with Naruto. We've heard a lot about you, we know you're the Beast King. Naruto crossed his arms and huffed. Hear lots about that, people call me King of Beasts. I not get it but know my power, you dog women right. Like the Kiba, they nodded slowly, it seemed Kiba was telling the truth when he said he met Naruto. Naruto sniffed a few times then knelt down. He lifted Hana's face by her chin to meet her eyes then he did the same to Sum. Naruto noticed that Soom was a bit more dog-like than Hana. After staring into their eyes for a full minute, causing them both to blush, he stood back up and smiled down at them. Walk with me, he said as he exited the hut again. Su, me and Hana exchanged looks before they followed him out. They could barely suppress their urges by this point. It was beginning to overpower them. Naruto-sama, they both thought with increasingly ragged breaths. It's become a problem. It was official, Kakashi could only look on in shock as Sasuke dropped to his knees howling in pain. Three weeks into the training and Sasuke has managed to get the basic concept of the Chidori. He still lacked the speed but he had the move down. However the cursed seal had been acting increasingly more violent each day. The more Sasuke refused to use it despite his dark thoughts. The more it reacted, Sasuke had come to the decision that he would grow strong without the aid of the cursed seal. However this vow went against his very nature and therefore, had a rather negative affect on the cursed seal. It became stronger in its attempt to posse Sasuke and it was winning in its battle against the Uchiha's will. Sasuke clutched at the seal and looked up at Kakashi. Kakashi get away, he yelled as a purple mist started seeping from the seal. Kakashi made to protest but a large surge of chakra saw to it that Kakashi was out of the area. S shit, no. Sasuke-kun why do you resist me? You know I could grant you power. Without me you are weak. You are pathetic. You will never kill your brother at this rate. Accept me. Use me. Submit to me. The voice of the cursed seal was powerful. It constantly spoke to him, playing upon his fears and weaknesses. It was wearing down his will. Breaking away his resolve. I. I won't. Another wave of pain too re through his body and the purple mist began to spill from the seal with more intensity. Black markings began to spread from the seal, covering the right side of his face, his neck and his right arm. No, damn it, but it was no use now. The seal had activated and the voice in his head was all but a blaring siren now. He collapsed to the ground and began to convulse and the seal completely overtook. His body, covering him fully in the black flame markings. Sasuke let out an earth-shattering scream. The seal, the voice and the purple chakra. They had him. Sasuke could do nothing anymore. The seal was powerful. He could feel it seeping into his mind. It was anchoring its roots into his very soul. Oog. He jumped to his feet clutching he head. No. Get out of my head. 
Kukukuku, it's too late, Sasuke kun. You're mine now. The voice was Orochimaru's, slick and mocking with a hint of sinister desire. Sasuke hated that voice. He hated the way it seemed to reverberate through the area. The purple chakra increased in intensity as Sasuke continued to fight against the voice and the seal, his body pulsating with the tainted power. The Uchiha was barely aware of the fact that his body was transforming. The markings expanded and turned his skin a purplish gray. His hair grew wild, long and shaggy and the whites of his eyes turned black while the irises turned yellow. It's no use fighting it Sasuke-kun. Sasuke clutched harder at his head. No, it's not. Get out. Get out. Kakashi arrived just in time to see a huge hand-shaped wing burst from Sasuke's back and clutch tightly around him. Causing the boy to stumble backwards. Sasuke. Yelled the copy nin. Sasuke looked over at Kakashi with those mutated eyes of his and shook his head espiratedly. Stay back, Sasuke. Sasuke struggled against the hand wing as it tightened its grip around him. He stumbled backwards as Hit continued to try and free himself from its clutches. Kakashi gasped when he saw the cliff and the ravine. But it was too late. Kakashi stared in shock as Sasuke stumbled over the edge and fell into the darkness of the ravine below. She had been asleep for over 30 years. There, he was utterly nothing to do back then so she decided to go into hibernation. She was still young, a very rambunctious young woman that didn't get along well with the other eight. Thirty years ago there, he was nothing interesting going on so she decided to sleep through it all. It was no big deal. She didn't want to go back to her boring life in Makai either. She woke up to a faint power radiating form above. It smelled like a snake. She took a bit of time to question what it might have been. Was it a demon? It certainly felt like one. C class at most. Pretty average. She listened for a few minutes. S as whatever it was up there screamed a few times as if in pain. Perhaps that demon was fighting up there. Oh well it was of no consequence to her. She had just closed her eyes again and prepared to go back to sleep when something landed hard on the ground before her. It was the demon she sensed earlier. The snake. A pair of glowing golden eyes shined in the darkness as they examined the form on the ground. Then a rather loud gasp echoed throughout the darkness as a massive white and golden dragon with eight long reptilian tails stepped out of the shadows and sniffed a few times. It's a human, exclaimed the dragon in a feminine young voice that told of her adolescence. She nudged the human with a tail. It was true. It was indeed a human. But there was something wrong. He was being taken over by a tainted aura. One she came to realize was not fully demonic or natural. Probably transplanted from another. Dot. However the scent of snake was there. This must have been done by a powerful H. Ebi Hanyu attempting to make slaves out of. Humans. She couldn't really understand it all. Hanyus and humans were so damn complicated. They made things more difficult than they had to be. The human. Groaned in pain as the appendage growing from his back squeezed his body. She raised an eyebrow, so the aura hadn't fully taken him over yet. This human must have a strong spirit to be able to hold it off this long. Even if his body had been complexly taken. She smirked and giggled lightly. Perhaps it won't be so boring after all. And with that, she jammed the tips of all eight of her tails into. The human and flooded his body with her yukai. The affect was instant. The snake Hanyu aura evaporated in an instant. Nowhere near powerful enough to stand up to hers and the black markings completely lifted from his body. She listened as the aura made a loud agonized scream as the transparent twisted form of a man with pale skin and golden eyed lifted from the mark on his neck and disintegrated into the air. Then the marking itself vanished. The appendage on his back turned to slime and fell to the ground and his eyes turned back to normal. But she wasn't done. She pumped more yukai into his body and smiled when he transformed again into something more respectable. His eyes turned golden and slitted. His hair's bangs turned white and grew by another foot. Scale-like markings appeared. On his neck and two horns grew from his forehead curving back like a dragon's. His fingernails grew thick and sharp, his skin turned a bit paler than normal. Where that hand wing used to be, grew a la. RGE white dragon wing that shimmered with a golden dust-like substance and a long reptilian bladed tail grew from his tailbone. And finally his canines grew long and protruded from his supper lip. She giggled as she examined her work. There now, he'd be fine. He he you're lucky you're so damn cute. 
she said as she began to shrink. The first thing he noticed was that he was fine. His body was no longer in pain and the voice from the cursed seal was gone. He found himself questioning what happened. He knew there was no way he managed to fight it off. He was sure he was doomed. He sat up and looked around, not even noticing that his vision was far sharper than it had been before. What happened? Hi there handsome. He couldn't stop himself from asking, who, what are you? She giggled a bit and sashayed over to him, her lips curving into a flirtatious smile. I am the second strongest demon lord of Makai and rival to the Kayubi. You can call me Naomi. I'm known in the Ryu no. Hachimata. Sasuke gasped. She stepped up to him and whipped out a mirror. And you handsome have just become a demon. Enter Neji and the goddess of fate. Two days from now it will have been a month and D the final rounds for the second part of the third stage of the Chunin exams will arrive. I wonder how much they all have improved. Seru Tobi could hide it well but he was excited. These were all very promising genin. He knew they would put on an amazing show and he knew because of their encounter with Naruto, they would all grow very strong in order to try and catch up to him. That thought led him to another. Naruto, the fabled beast king of beasts. The boy was powerful, he was everything described in the legends. Seru Tobi was no fool. The day Naruto was born he went and conducted some reseer. Ch in order to find out why the animals seemed so happy about Naruto's birth. He didn't learn much from textbooks and old scrolls however he did summon Enma to ask if he knew anything. Enma seemed exed, extremely surprised the proceeded to tell his summoner everything, including how any summon that could not speak human would join with Naruto if him and the humans ever found themselves in a conflict. Naruto had that type of power. Even normal summons were susceptible to Naruto's influence. Serutobi sighed a bit, Naruto didn't even know of the path he was on. Or, he didn't think Naruto knew just how great his title is. He watched from the tower as many different foreign diplomats continued to pour into Konoha, all of them eager to see the upcoming fights, most though no doubt wanted to see how the last Uchiha would fare. Serutobi wondered how far Kakashi had gotten with Sasuke. And come to think of it he hadn't seen any trace of several genin. There were reports of a nearby cherry tree field being used by the San Genengara. There were also numerous visits from Yoshino and Shikaku Nara looking for their son. Shikamaru had apparently vanished a day after the preliminary rounds. Anko seemed distracted by something. The Hyuga Council seemed hell-bent on making the branch house genin named Neji suffer because of his absolute defeat of the heiress and the body of Hayate Giko was discovered not too long ago most likely done by an accomplice of Orochimaru. The entire village was on edge. He sighed a bit as he continued his paperwork. It was sure going to get eventful in two days. That was a sure thing. He remembered the day he met these two. He was but a pup and they seemed familiar to him. They were like him almost. Linked to beasts. Boated with animals. He remembered being so. Happy when he saw them talking to dogs and he eagerly approached them, hoping to make some human friends. But what happened was not what he wanted to happen. They seemed scared of him and they seemed to struggle with their own bodies as they started to bow to him. At first he thought they might have been playing with him. But he remembered the dogs telling him to leave. That it wasn't safe for him. Because the members of the Inazuka were trying to fight their instincts. It was at that time that one actually regained control of her body and slammed her foot into his sternum. He remembered as one. By one the people recovered and joined in trying to beat the life out of him. They were at it for hours. Mocking him. Demanding why he had such power over them. He remembered telling them that it was. Just something he was born with and that since they were part dog it affected them too. They only got madder. Saying they were not part dog. They were human. They didn't bow to anyone especially some kid. He remembered waking up in the garbage and being profoundly apologized to by their dogs. And he also remembered storming away with a scowl, fire seeping from his mouth with every angry breath. Thinking back about it even now made him a bit angry. But looking at the Sum and the Hana now made him calm down. They were genuinely sorry for what they had done to him all those years ago and they completely embraced him and accepted him as their Alpha, their Lord. The Kin and the Shikamaru too. They both refused to bow but they did call him Naruto-sama and Lord Naruto. This was because of their changes. 
Naruto knew the extent of his abilities as the Beast Lord. He had discovered several abilities during his time in the forest. Fire manipulation was one, transformation was another, and on. E such discovered ability allowed him to remake Kin and Shikamaru, completely adding them to his ranks. He was not unaware of his title either. He knew of the prophecies told about him. How could he not? He can talk to animals and they were all more than willing to fill him in on the details. He still didn't quite get it but he rolled with it anyway. He briefly wondered if he'd ever meet any of those other lords. The lords of Tenshi sounded intriguing and the demon lords seemed to be familiar to him. Why though he couldn't figure out? He cast those thoughts away as he looked at the four in front of him. Trained good, he said to Kin and Shikamaru, the latter of which sighed in relief at finally having it over. I'm most proud to call you beasts. Please don't call me a beast, said Shikamaru, causing Kin to laugh and wrap her arm around his while Naruto grinned and patted him on the head. And action that earned him a glare. Naruto's grin never left his face as he faced Sum and Hana. Tell the Kiba to visit. He can become beast too if wants to. Sum nodded and said, I will Naruto-sama. Naruto nodded then grabbed her in a hug, followed by Hana who tried to give his ear a playful nibble. Take care Naruto-sama, she said with an affectionate smile. And remember that our offer is still there. We'd be, more than willing, said Sum as she licked her lips. The prospect of mating, with such a perfect specimen of alpha male got her hot and bothered constantly. It was like Naruto put her into heat whenever he was around. It was the same for Hana too and many of the female beasts that roamed about his home. Naruto felt his face heat up in a blush. He knew what they were talking about. Two days after they met him they became so driven by instincts and hormones that they tr. ied to fuck him in the middle of the night. They came in reeking of lust and they were both buck naked. He had to admit they had beautiful bodies but he wouldn't just mate with any female. The female, would have to prove her strength to him first. And he hasn't really had the time to fully test Hannah and Soom. He had managed to calm them down and get them to get a hold of themselves though it didn't. T stopped the flirting and the repeated offers. Kin and Shikamaru observed the two Inazuka women. Shikamaru not being a female couldn't quite grasp why they were so overwhelmingly wanting of Naruto but Kin could. She understood perfectly what the two felt. Like Shikamaru she trained with Naruto but he did more than just make them better fighters. He, literally transformed them both and further transformed the two Inazuka. Women, this in turn tuned her into her baser instincts and greatly tuned her into the world around her. She knew what her animal, instincts wanted and she nearly found herself, in Shika's bed several times because of them before she forced herself to get a grip. At first she was slightly afraid of these new sensations, these bestial desires and overwhelming feelings. It was, not something her human mind was used to. She was used to thinking logically and clearly. But, with this new mindset she rushed into things more often. She was jumpy and she constantly felt the need to establish her dominance. Over others, if something feared her, she capitalized on it. Especially when hunting. Naruto had finally noticed something and told her not to fear her. Instincts but to learn to control them a bit. Learn to get them to work with her human mind. He told her that these feelings were how beasts survived. It was natural, so as she stared at Hannah and Soom who were emitting pheromones that only animals could detect. She came to understand what they felt. After that she managed to stop going after Shikamaru. She liked Shika, a lot, and the fact that he had come to her rescue. E all that time ago further spurred that affection on, but she wasn't exactly comfortable with desiring to fuck Shikamaru every night and she was sure he felt the same. Though her bestial side completely disagreed, Naruto looked at all four of them and smiled. He was glad to finally have some humans added to his ranks. It gave him a chance to use one of his previously neglected powers. Now they stood before him, new and improved. He felt proud with himself. He waved his hand in a playful shooing manner. Now go, have humans too. Shock. Soon smirked. Oh I can't wait to see Kiba's face. It's gonna be priceless. Shikamaru just sighed and said, I just hope my mom doesn't freak out and kill me, said Shikamaru. Kin smiled, don't worry Shika-kun I'll protect you. I'm not sure that's a good idea Kin. Kin just chuckled as she sunk into a pool of darkness with Shikamaru and vanished. Sum and Hana both grinned. Show off Nara, 
they both said before turning and leaping up the crater walls and back into the forest of death. Naruto just stood there smiling as a tiger nuzzled his cheek. Naruto couldn't help but ponder about those four. They were sure to shock the humans once they showed themselves in his name. Would begin to spread outside of Konoha's walls. He knew that once this happened he'd be forced to leave his forest more often in order to keep different people from constantly invading it trying to either join his ranks, attack him or test his strength. Then those conflicts and encounters might alert the so-called lords of the other realms to his existence. He was still a bit skeptical about certain prospects of the beast's prophecy. For one he didn't really believe in angels and death gods and the thought of demons existing seemed far-fetched to him. Something in th. E back of his mind suddenly disagreed with that. It insisted that he had actually met a demon once before. Where though, he could not remember. He rubbed the tiger's ears and smiled as he sprouted a pair of bird's wings. He was hungry and though he was the king of beasts, he still had to hunt every once in a while to eat. It was how any beast survived. Lord Naruto the humans begin their contest. After the sun has fallen and risen twice. Naruto nodded as the humming bird passed its message. Are you going to watch? Naruto shrugged and took to the skies above the forest of death. Maybe, he said. Neji Hayuga fell to the ground hollering in pain and clutching his forehead. His mind scrambling as the caged bird seal on his forehead took complete control of his senses and flooded them all. With untold amounts of pain. This is what you get for trying to kill the heiress lowly servant. Do not let it happen again. Neji cursed and spit at their feet. A second later his body is once again twitching on the ground. He could barely make out the figures of three elders as they used the seal on him, their smirks never leaving their faces. It was always like this, ever since they discover. D his talent for Jukin they had ostracized him, targeted him simply because they refused to believe that a lowly servant could have purer blood than them. As Neji lay there writhing in pain and wishy, Ing desperately to break free of the fate he has been handed, a soft feminine voice whispered into his ear. Do you really wish to break free of me? I thought I could trust you Neji-kun. Neji ignored the voice at first. He had more important things to worry about, like his brain turning to jelly in his skull. The elders seemed intent on killing him with that seal for his insolence. But before they could, Hiyashi came in and adamantly threw the old fools out before laying an unconscious Neji in his room. When he woke up he found himself looking up out of the window, like a bird yearning for freedom. Damn it, is this my fate, to die a miserable death at the hands of a bunch of pathetic old fools? He questioned himself, it does not have to be Neji-kun, fate can be changed. Neji responded to the voice that time, no, you were born with a predetermined destiny, you cannot change it. The voice sighed and said, though I'm greatly flattered to have such a handsome young man so believing in me. I also much tisk at. You, do you not think me flexible? Then what is my fate then since you, no, so much? There was a giggle, then a, your fate is to die by those old men if you continue to disrespect them as you do. Those old relics do not deserve my respect. They should be respecting me instead. But you believe it will never happen because it is your fate. Exactly. If my father ha, d been born first then my fate wouldn't have been what it is now. But Neji-kun, your fate can be changed. Why should I believe that? Huh, I've seen how hard some try and always end up failing while believing they could change. Even the heiress, a weak pathetic little girl tried to prove me wrong by trying to defeat me. Yet her fate is to one day rule the Hyuga clan. The unfairness of life proves to me that fate cannot be changed. Quote, you're whining about the unfairness of life. That's rather immature. Neji huffed and crossed his arms, ignoring the woman. Neji kun I have seen millions of fates. Final destinations to many people's lives and there were so many other endings they could have reached. Neji kun. Fate is not set in stone. Neji's eyes had gotten huge. Whoever was hugging him radiated. With an aura of power he had never felt before. It was something that would have even the Hokage stepping back in fear. He finally found his voice after three minutes. Wh who? Are you? Th. E woman smiled and turned Neji around to face her. And what he saw caused him to gasp. She was glowing white and nearly transparent. She wore flowing white silk robes and had short light blue hair. B. U. 
Chi what had caused him to gasp was the glowing ring floating above her head and the two huge white feathery wings that were spread out and emitting a calm and warming energy from them. She was gorgeous. I am one of the six lords of the realm of heaven. I govern all things having to do with the paths walked through life and I decide what destiny your life will take depending on your actions. Call me the goddess of fate. Neji Kun your spirit and devotion to me has interested me so I have come down to get to know you. Not many like you exist anymore. Neji could only gape. This was the goddess of fate. Wait, a goddess of fate actually existed. He knew fate existed but he didn't know a goddess for it did. Fate smiled and pulled Neji close to her. Now then, I grant you some measure of my power and I free you from your cage. Make me proud Neji Kun. I'll come and watch you in the finals. She then planed her soft beautiful lips on his forehead. There was a bright flash of light as Neji was transformed forever. Whoa, Neji shot out of bed and fell unceremoniously to the floor bashing his skull on the ground. It was that dream again, the happiest moment in his life. Nearly a month ago when all of that took place, it was still fresh in his mind. The day the goddess of fate turned him into a Tenshi. None of the other Hyugas could believe it. Not even when they came crashing into the room during his transformation. They still stared whenever he walked through the compound. His glowing blue halo and snow white wings attracted the attention of everyone. Thus is the reason he didn't go outside. Into Konoha. He didn't really need that at the moment. The elders. Had been furious. Demanding to know where he had gotten such power. Neji had merely smirked and said. Fate. The only thin. G that kept them from attacking them was Hiyashi. He checked to make sure the bandages were wrapped securely on his forehead. He didn't want the elders to know that his caged bird seal was gone. Not yet. He wondered how everyone was going to react. Ha <laughs> ha. He looked forward to showing off his new form. No one was bound to have changed this much. Little did he know that there were two other contestants thinking the exact same thing. From above. Fate watched as Neji prepared for his fight in two days with an affectionate smile. In the forest of death, Naruto wondered how Shikamaru was going to do. Miles outside of Konoha Naomi smiled and offered Sasuke and a still-stunned Kakashi a ride back to the village. And in a flower petal-less cherry blossom field, Sakura smiled and gave Gara a hug. Before vanishing in a swirl of pink sand while wishing him good luck and telling him thanks for believing in her. Both were unaware of the pair of golden star pupil eyes narrowing and gleaming with insane bloodlust. Naruto himself thought more as he rested in the river. Some of the animals wanted to go and watch the humans fight while others urged him to stay in the forest. He understood both sides, but he was rather curious. The humans had some pretty amazing abilities. The Shikamaru the Kin the Hana and the Sum had proven that to him many times while they stayed with him. He was rather e. XCITED about the prospect of adding more humans to his ranks. After they became a part of his domain they could teach their abilities to the beasts. Teach them how to use their chakra. Naruto himself was not that interested in learning ninjutsu. He already had the fire on his side and the only thing he found useful for chakra was the healing he could do with it. But if beasts such as the raptors or the wolves learned how to use chakra, he grinned. Unknown to Naruto. There was an extremely powerful being who was thinking the same thing about him. Not a day goes by that she doesn't think about the day she met him. Uzumaki Naruto, the first born lord of the animal. She nearly scoffed at this. His potential was far too great to be being wasted on such unworthy lower life form creatures known as the animal. Animals were practically worthless. They had no special abilities and only served to irritate any demon they had the nerve to challenge. They were nothing but prey. But that boy was different. She sensed it. Within him all those years back. He had potential to become a. Legend. But under the wrong banner. She sat in her den and gave a sultry smile. Perhaps it was time to go and reintroduce herself to him. He's been hanging around animals for far too long. Now the only obstacle was when to go and see him. Surely if he still lives in that pathetic human village those humans would lash out. She knew she could simply burn the entire place to the ground but that might push the beast king away. She could not have that. She sat and pondered as she feasted on a group of lions. Even a. Nemals supposedly as majestic as lions were nothing but food to her. She had to get Naruto to join the demon side. 
he would do so much better there, by her side. Her tails flickered in excitement. She would go to him in a couple of weeks. She fell asleep with one last degrading thought about animals. Lowly creatures are not worthy of such a powerful being. I will make him a demon. My mate, and together we will feast on you all. She dreamt all night about her and Naruto as they slaughtered everything in their path. It was going to be so easy. Surely he was growing tired of hanging around such lowly creatures. She had no idea just how wrong she was. In two days the final matches for the Chunin exams begin. In two days Orochimaru was going to attack Konoha with the aid of the sand. In two days, Neji, Sasuke and Shikamaru would make themselves known. And in two days the story begins, for Naruto and numerous others. Sarutobi sat in his office and sighed. He just knew things were about to get eventful in two days. He just hoped that they would be because of something positive, despite his old student's menacing presence. Of course he's learned that eventful days usually never meant anything good happening. He closed his eyes. It's nice to dream though. Suddenly the doors burst open as the clearly shocked Yugo burst into the room. Hokage-sama you're not going to believe this. Began the woman but was cut off. Hey, I'm coming in so get modest old man. Sarutobi instantly recognized the voice. This was another that had vanished a month ago. Go ahead and enter soon, he said. He briefly noted that Yugo still looked shocked. A second later he found out why. The entire village already knows as they strolled through like nothing was wrong, said Yugo while trying not to stare. Sarutobi was not so lucky. His eyes were bugging out of his head and his mouth was moving in the manner of a fish's. Sum and Hana Inazuka stood before him, changed. Literally, both women's hair was wilder. Their canines longer than normal, their nails sharp and their bodies stronger looking. But that was nothing, no, the biggest part were the fact that both women had a fluffy dog tail. Wagging behind them, what the hell happened, he yelled, mere milliseconds away from calling Anbu to search for however did this to them. Hannah grinned and looked up with a dreamy look in her eyes while Sum smiled. Naruto-sama, Sarutobi's eyes widened, and Naruto, uh-huh, said Hannah, and just wait until you see the Nara boy. His changes were even greater, said Soom. Yugo, Serutobi and D the shinobi hidden behind a powerful genjutsu all gasped. People changed and Leaf attacked. Serutobi sat in the cage box looking down as the people poured into the stadium was still in a state of shish. Ak at what he had seen and been told two days prior. Just what the hell was going on? It appeared that Naruto knew far more about his title than he had originally given credit for. Soom. Hana and AP. Apparently Shikamaru had been transformed by Naruto and added to the ranks of beast. No longer, completely, human. Serutobi pondered and pondered for two whole days on this. This was something that would cause an outrage when the council found out. And there was no way in hell this was not going to cause uproar. If they thought Naruto was a freak before and were slightly scared of him for it what would they think when they learned that? Naruto could effectively steal the loyalty of anyone he wanted. Their fear and poor judgment would shoot for through the roof, creating and bringing forth conflict. S that Konoha could not afford to be trying to create. Serutobi was so caught up in his thoughts that he pretty much ignored the arrival of the case cage and he didn't say anything when the man told Hai. M that he should consider finding another Hokage before long. Hell he didn't even register the fact that a tall man with white hair had landed next to him. But the case cage did, and he looked worried. All over the stadium people poured in and found their seats. The excitement was high, it was very high. Bets were placed, polls were taken and shady deals were made. The feudal lords were especially excited as they looked forward to seeing one Uchiha Sasuke fight Gara of the desert. It was the most anticipated of matches. They watched eager as the genin started to arrive on the arena floor and so did a few others. Ino, Kiba, Hanada. Choji and Tenten sat in a group toward the front of the middle section of seats and commented about the genin down in front of them. My Sasuke kun is sure to win this thing! exclaimed an excited Ino as she pumped a fist into the air. Are you sure? I mean Neji is a formidable opponent. He might win. On top of that there's Gara. That guy swells with power. This comment came from Kiba. Ino huffed and crossed her arms. Sasuke kun will win, said Ino again. Kiba sighed, 
Jeez you didn't even say anything about Shikamaru. Isn't he your teammate? You're fickle Eno. Hey shut up dog boy. I may adore Sasuke-kun but I'm not the one who bowed to Naruto in front of everyone. Hey I couldn't help it. You try being an Inazuka and not feel compelled to bow to him. Choji just chuckled while Hanada gave a blush when she thought about Naruto's near-naked well-sculpted body. Well now that you two are done fighting how about we just watch and see? Suggested a slightly annoyed Tenten. The others nodded and looked down at the genin. Only to notice that Sasuke, Neji and Shikamaru were all missing. What the hell? Nearly half of them are gone. Yelled Ino. Jeez quiet down. Said Kiba as he clutched his ears. Yes pig shut it. Your voice hurts my ears. Ino turned to yell out a snappy retort, only to gasp at whom stood before her. S. Sakura. Whoa. Said Kiba while Choji stopped shoving chips into his mouth. Tenten was also surprised. Sakura smirked and took a seat next to Ino. Yes I know I look good but please quit staring. Ino shook her head to regain her senses. Sakura had changed. She had completely had a makeover. Her red dress and black spandex shorts had been replaced by a black mini skirt, fishnet shorts, a pair of black leather boots, a pair of pink fighter's gloves. A pink wrap that covered her chest and exposed her belly and a long black sleeveless duster that just barely didn't scrape on the ground. Her hair was short due to over experience in the forest of death and her headband for Konoha was still in its position on top of her head. But the most drastic change was the huge hourglass full of swirling pink sand that was strapped to her back and the blood red kanji for love that was carved into her forehead w what the hell sakura just smiled and said i met someone who understood me he then helped me get my priorities straight i owe him a huge deal quote ino noticed that the sand inside of sakura's hourglass swirled more after she said that it was also then that she had a realization as she looked down at th e still is a statue form of gara on the arena floor S. Sakura who did you train with? Sakura only smirked. If you haven't figured it out yet then I'm not telling you. Kiba was shaking in fear. What the hell is she thinking? Choji just nodded and turned back towards the stadium. He was more worried as to why Shikamaru wasn't around. In the stands a woman with short blue hair and a very bow. Tiffle figure sat at the tops of the seats. She had come to see one person today, despite the fact that the other five had laughed at her. Oh well, good luck Neji, she thought. Finally after everyone had settled in Sarutobi Rose, his inner thoughts having finally been quelled for the moment. All ladies and gentlemen, I as the Sandame Hokage am honored to have you all here today so that you may attend the final part of the Chunin examinations today. I hope you all have a good time and I hope the matches will give you all excitement and entertainment. Now without further ado let the tournament begin. There were cheers from the audience. Genma, the new proctor due to Hayate's untimely death, stepped forward and examined the genin in front of him. Hmm, three of them are missing. I hope th. E. Hayuga gets here before I begin his match. Genma was a bit annoyed by their lack of punctuality but decided to let it go. All right you all, stand proud and face the audience. Today you guys are the stars. The genin all gained slight smiles. Now then, let the first match of the tournament begin. Sai and Hayuga Neji report to the floor. The rest of you head to the waiting booth. Sai had also changed a bit. He now wore a black vest and had a black katana that had no sheath, strapped to his waist. He waited, with no visible emotion as the others headed to the waiting area. His opponent was a Hayuga. Danzo had grilled numerous lessons into him about fighting against the Jukan. He felt that he was prepared. But when a spear of light suddenly shot from the sky and blinded everyone and the voice of his opponent rang out saying. I apologize for my lack of punctuality. I had to get dressed for this occasion, Sai felt a bit unnerved. What type of power was that? Danzo hadn't told him any Hyuga could do that type of shunshin. And it only got worse for him as the light faded, causing everyone except for the Hyugas in the audience to gasp. Up in the stands, the blue-haired woman couldn't help but smirk. No damn way, yelled Anko. What hell is this? Sarutobi who had finally managed to cast away his thoughts about Naruto, Suman Hana suddenly found more coming back and he could only mumble in a voice full of shock. What is this? Did. Naruto. No. This isn't the work of the Beast King. The case cage looked thoughtful and very surprised as well. 
Neji stood there facing his opponent with an arrogant smirk. His huge white wings folded behind him and the halo glowing above his head. His wardrobe had completely done a 180. No longer did he wear the tradition Hyuga robes. Now he wore a pair of white pants and no shirt. His stomach, chest, neck and right arm was covered in bandages decorated in dark blue ancient looking symbols. A white chest plate and a metal guard th. At covered the left shoulder and upper arm along with samurai style outer thigh armor completed the look. Neji's smirk grew even more as the kanji for fate appeared on the back of his upper body armor. His forehead protector had been modified. The fabric part had been replaced with a very long silk strip of cloth that was also decorated in those symbols, and as it billowed in the breeze numerous females couldn't help but gape. H he's an angel, how the hell did that happen? He's freaking gorgeous. Sai even though he was trained as an emotionless shinobi he still couldn't help but wonder. Where did you get this power? He asked. Neji had only smirked more and said, fate. Genma who was still openly gaping at Neji took a minute to finally begin the match before leaping away. Up in that stands Tenten looked at a shocked Ino. Still think Sasuke can win? She asked with a smirk. Ino was about to respond when. Sakura replied with, Gara will win. This statement had surprised them all. So much that their attention was drawn away from the angel feed Neji into the suddenly sand-wielding Kunoichi. Ino had been the most stunned. Wasn't Sakura one of Sasuke-kun's biggest fangirls? We, re did this sudden interest in that psycho Suna nin come from? Sakura as if sensing Ino's question merely shrugged. I've seen how strong Gara is and trust me. Sasuke is not as strong as he is. Nor. Is anyone else in this tournament for that matter? Sakura was indeed greatly surprised with Neji's transformation. But she showed no outward emotion to show it. In her opinion, Gara was by far the most powerful person down there. Him and his second personality infused metal sand. Ino huffed and glared. She had no idea when Sakura had met Gara or decided that Sasuke was weak but she didn't like it. This sudden, interest in Gara was not natural. Tenten and Choji directed their attention back to the arena floor. Neji and Sai had begun their fight. Sai circled slowly around his winged opponent and slowly drew his katana. Quite interesting Hyuga Neji, can all members of your clan transform into a Tenshi? Neji who was eyeing his opponent said, no. This power was given to me by someone else. Sai nodded and said, I see. He then rushed at Neji with speeds greater than most genin should be able to execute and slammed his foot into Neji's chest. It seems all that angel stuff is just for show, said Sai. Neji huffed and took up a fighting stance. Says you, he said before he activated his Byakugan. Try it again. Sai did just that but this time Neji was prepared. As Sai's foot came, at his face Neji lashed out with his own attack his palm slamming right into Sai's foot and throwing him back a good distance while at the same time flooding the boy's leg with chakra. Sai hissed in pain, as he landed, that one blow had already nearly rendered his leg useless. This continued on for ten more minutes as the two continued to escalate their battle. Eventually jutsus were thrown out, by Sai in the forms of earth spikes fireballs and ink drawings. Neji's bloodline limit allowed for him to easily avoid the attacks and counter with his own. His fighting style being more centered Aru. ND Taijutsu caused him to spring forward whenever there was an opening and strike with a palm or a deceptively devastating poke of the finger. Sai, being, whose son he is, was able to avoid the strikes with the grace and speed of an elite. His emotionless eyes never left the angel Hyuga in front of him as he drew his katana. Very impressive Hyuga Neji, however I think it's time to stop holding back. Show me your angel's power. Sai then brought up his black katana while releasing a massive amount of chakra and smirked for the first time. Neji's eyes barely had time to widen before Sai's weapon was in his shoulder. The audience gasped in surprise. I didn't even see him move. Yelled several people. Neji hissed as the blood poured from his shoulder as he put more chakra into his eyes. He moved so fast. Sai raised his katana and prepared to strike again. Neji glared. Fine then. He thought as Sai vanished. Neji didn't need to see his opponent to know what he had planned and he reacted accordingly. As Sai's weapon came down upon him chakra both white and normal exploded from Neji's tenkutsu and he started to spin. And the Hyugas in the audience could only gape in astonishment as Neji yelled out his attack. Kaden, 
Sai slammed into the swirling chakra barrier and felt his katana shatter on impact, showering the entire area in ink as Neji's attack flung it all over. Sai's eyes widened for the first time that day. You're not supposed to know that move, he said as he slammed into the wall. Neji glared as the ink fell to the ground around him, not a drop on his body. His W. Ing spread out wide and raised high for the first time that day as his hunched over. Of course not. I'm merely a servant of the main house. I'm not permitted to such luxuries. So I taught myself. There were gasps among the Hyuga. It is said that fate is a bitch. I was born a slave yet I have the greatest potential. I have the makings to be the greatest Hyuga. For a while I thought that was never going to happen. That I was never fated to achieve that greatness. I thought fate was unbendable that I was doomed to be a slave forever despite my abilities. The audience got quiet as they listened. Neji was obviously going somewhere with this conversation. However I recently learned that is not the case. Fate is quite, flexible. She is a very understanding and merciful being. She gave me tea, he gifts and I can now determine my own fate. I owe that beautiful goddess my life. Up in the stands the blue-haired woman's face heated up in a blush. Neji reached up and tore his headgear off, revealing his bare forehead to the world. Hiyashi gasped along with every other Hyuga. But that's impossible. Neji's smirk turned borderline sadistic and the wind was beginning to swirl around him. You're right, it's time to stop holding back, he said. At Sai's blank face Neji got annoyed so with a slight glare he said, let me show you what I mean. Fate watched with admiration as she felt Neji's angelic chakra flare so he had been training his new power. She wondered what he had come up with. I will show you the power I have gained. The entire crowd watched in fascination as Neji began to glow white. He ran towards the stadium with a speed he didn't normally use, his partner right next to him. During their training with the Beast King they had completely forgotten to warn the Hokage of the impending danger from the sound. Shikamaru and Kin said nothing as they neared the stadium but were silently thankful that there was no one around to freak out over their appearance. It would have, he cut into the already minute amount of time they had. Shikamaru grabbed Kin's hand and leapt into the shadow of the closest building. Just as a massive spire of white light shot up from the center of the stadium. Sasuke and Naomi instantly snapped their heads to the right as the spire of light shot into the sky and both growled in their throats. The feeling of this energy. Sasuke didn't know why but it angered him. Brought out his desire to rid the world of the holder of such energy. Naomi on the other hand knew exactly what that was. That energy belonged to one creature, the mortal enemy of the demon. Their polar opposite and the yang to their yin. Kakashi gazed over at the light and asked the question that was on Sasuke's mind. What is that light? Naomi suppressed her instinctual da. Sires and answered as her glowing eyes remained locked on the light. Angel, she said, wait what, angel, Atenshi, are you for real, Naomi nodded, an action that looked quite intimidating consider, in her current form as she sailed towards Konoha, yes, but I don't understand why an angel would be, shit, there's a Tenshi lord in your village and it appears they transformed a human, what, um hum, yeah, looks like you have a rival Sasuke kun, Sasuke smirked and licked his lips in anticipation, he felt glad that he wasn't the only one being transformed by otherworldly beings. This should be fun. Naomi merely giggled while Kakashi hoped that whoever had been transformed wasn't someone Sasuke would see as a rival and vice versa. People would one day laugh at him as he realized just how wrong he was. Naruto's head snapped up and he stared in the direction of Konoha. He could feel that energy in the air. It felt calm. Tranquil and pure while at the same time felt powerful, dangerous and unstable. The beasts around him had also snapped at attention. What that? He asked himself as the white light began to fade. Not ever felt before. The beasts were just as confused and a bit unnerved. Naruto could understand them. This feeling. It was not coming from chakra or rather. Master Naruto. Began a worried tigress as she rubbed up against his leg. Naruto scratched the cat's ears and smiled. Not worry, not concern us. The tigress seemed to relax at his declaration. She knew that her king had been contemplating venturing to the human's home ever since they came to the forest and she was worried. Whatever was emitting that energy was not human. And that worried her because the beasts were already slightly afraid of humans. Especially some of the weaker species and 
If the humans were hanging out with something stronger, then it warranted a cause to stay as far away as possible. Not that she was worried for her king's safety. Naruto was stronger than whatever that was. However she and the other beasts were not. She flopped onto her side and let the beast king rest his back and head on her side and took note of the fact that he was periodically glancing in the direction of the human's home. Shock couldn't even begin to describe the feeling everyone was exulting at the moment as Neji unleashed his power. When he said that he was holding back they all imagined that his speed would increase a bit, or he might start to unleash numerous jutsus he had picked up during the month of rest and training. Hell they even imagined that he had somehow recreated O. F. invented numerous new jukan techniques. But what they saw was clearly something else. The white chakra swirled around the Hyuga prodigy like a tornado as his wings gave a powerful flap and propelled him 30 feet into the air. His pale pupil, less irises completely vanished and left behind empty blank brilliantly glowing voids in their place. His halo glowed just as brightly as his eyes did and his hair and bandages billowed wildly. Adding to the majestic look he had, Sai stared up in shock as Neji hovered above him, his wings taking periodic flaps to keep him suspended in the air. The Eam, RGY swirling around the area keeping him blinded and disoriented. You see, began Neji with that superior smirk of his. You were fated to lose to me the moment your name was drawn against my own. H. E raised his right hand and a double-edged long sword appeared in a flash of light. Then he raised his left arm and a knight's shield decorated with a white dove appeared on that. Prepare to lose. Oh. Rochimaru watched in awe and excitement as Neji vanished and proceeded to decimate his foe with the skillful use of his wings. It was like he'd been doing it his whole life. Sai didn't stand a chance despite his very impressive abilities. What is this power? I've never seen anything like it. Kukukuku if I could make something like that available to me, think of the possibilities. Unknown to Neji, Orochimaru had found himself another target. The other participating genin were stunned. None of them could say anything. Even Gara was silent. This display of power was unlike anything he had ever experienced. It felt very different from the power the beast kind had wielded so he knew the blonde had nothing to do with this. But despite all of that he felt his excitement growing. In another p. Art of the village a woman's golden star pupil eyes narrowed in anger as the energy washed over her. The fuck's a tenchi doing here? Finally the fight came to an end when Neji closed numerous tanket. Su on Sai's body and pointed the tip of his blade at his throat. You were a worthy opponent but you cannot face the power of fate, he said as his eyes returned to normal. Now surrender, Sai said N. Othing as he nodded his head and conceded defeat. Neji sighed and his sword and shield disappeared in flashes of light. The entire arena was dead quiet, all of them still not quite able to come to terms with what they have just seen. Finally Tenten started clapping, that was amazing. She yelled with a grin as she rose to her feet and continued to cheer. Eventually the rest of the people began to cheer as well. Serutobi was still staring at Neji, trying to figure out where he got that power. He remembered the boy saying something about fate. It was almost as if he had met. No that was not possible. A goddess of fate existing. It sounded ridiculous. Although this could all be related to Naruto and the beast prophecy. He was about to congratulate Neji on a spectacular battle when something started happening down on the arena floor. Neji, Sai and Genma's shadows started moving around on their own, then without warning they shot over and condensed together in the center of the floor. Beef. Or they could ask with shock what was going on. Hundreds more shadows started collecting on that spot, getting fearful yelps from the people who owned said shadows. The entire stadium watched in fear. As the shadows eventually formed a large pitch black void in the center of the arena and started to form a pillar. Neji's weapons had formed again and he was poised for battle with whatever this was. He wasn't about to get caught off guard. He activated his Byakugan in an attempt to see what was in that darkness then gasped a second later. It's you, he exclaimed. A second later the darkness exploded outwards, turned back into shadows and returned to their owners, leaving behind two people. Fei. And here I thought Kin and I would be the only people changed. How troublesome that the Hyuga. Off all people would gain some sort of special power. The entire audience gasped at what stood before them and so did the disguised Orochimaru. Ino's eyes were as big as plates. What the fuck happened to you lazy ass? 
She screeched. Kin put fingers in her pointed ears. Keep it down will you? Sheesh. Shikamaru shrugged. It was that troublesome beast king. Up in the stands, fate stared wide-eyed at Shikamaru and Kin. The beast king. Shikamaru sighed when he noticed everyone staring at him and said, Do you mind? Sheesh. Hey, what do you expect when you come here looking like that? Yelled Eno. It was true. Everyone in the stadium couldn't believe their eyes much less who had done that to the two. Unlike the entity that changed. Neji they knew what the beast king was, some people started to eye Shikamaru with fear. Shikamaru and Kin both looked like they had been crossbred with panthers, Shikamaru more than Kin. While Kin's ears were pointed, her canines sharper, her finger. Ails more cat-like and her eyes golden along with her midnight black tail swaying behind her and now wild short hair and dressed similar to when she was at the prelims, Shikamaru was vastly more developed. He had fangs now that poked out from behind his upper lip. His eyes were yellow, slanted and cat-like. His feet were no longer the feet of a human. Now they were large black paws and covered in black fur. His hands were the same. Though still considerably human they were also those of a panther with retractable claws and fur. He even had pads on his palms and fingers. His ears were long and pointed with a layer of fur on the outsides while his hair with oily black and glinting with shadows. He had a long panther's tail and a lot more muscle than before. His clothing had changed a lot. Hi, S pants were frayed at the bottom and his vest had vanished, leaving only the fish netting. Over his shoulders was a brown fur cape that draped more to the left than it did to the back. It hung down and decovered most of his left arm and two deer antlers were sticking out from behind like wings, decorations of his liking. White bandages covered his abdomen and his forehead protector glinted on his right arm. He shifted his eyes over to the Hokage and sighed again. While I know my appearance warrants many questions, we have more important issues to worry about. He then nudged Kin who glanced nay. Arvuli around and kept an eye on the case cage. Ahem right then. Hokage-sama, I am Kin Suchi from the village hidden in the sound and I have some very important news involving your village and mine. The case cage gasped and started to growl. You little wench. Orochimaru gave the signal to Kabuto begin the operation early. Serutobi took notice of the case cage's actions and became tense. Yes young lady what is it? Kin sighed and grabbed onto Shikamaru's cape nervously as she prepared to speak the words that would endanger her forever. Orochimaru along with his village Odo and Suna are going to attack Konoha. I'd say the summons are already being called forth. What? The case cage suddenly sneered and lunged at Serutobi. Now, he yelled. A second later all hell broke loose as a ba. TTLE that would rock the world had begun. Just as Sasuke, Kakashi and Naomi appeared in a burst of golden fire. Kill them all, yelled Orochimaru as he leapt up with Serutobi and had his four bodyguards create a barrier. Shikamaru and Kin noticed the arrival of Kakashi, Sasuke and Naomi and held back a gasp at the Uchiha's new look. Their keen awareness attributed to their new natures made sure T. Hey didn't miss such a thing but they had little time to worry about it as they saw. Suna and Odo Nin rushing into the stadium. Sasuke went on the immediate offensive and so did Kakashi. Naomi just grinned and took flight with a cry of, Show em what you can do handsome. Neji was already in the sky heading towards the gates where several different huge snakes had appeared and Sakura chased after G. A A R A as he and his siblings fled the stadium. Kin stay and assist Sai and the others, said Shikamaru as he noticed Sakura leap over the walls after the sand siblings. His need to hunt had surfaced. Do not let yourself get captured either. Kin glared and flexed her claws. I can take care of myself. Shikamaru smirked and melted into the shadows. Good. Sasuke's single wing spread out wide and he gave an ear-splitting roar. His match. He never got to have it. Heads were gonna roll. His eyes glowed golden and purple chakra swirled violently around him while his killing instantly froze several battles. When they looked at him they gasped and started to shake in fear. I it's a d-demon. Yelled one shinobi a second before a fist slammed into his face. That's right, and I'm about to show you why you don't take a demon's fight from him. The Junins and the rest of the Genin were acting as a team trying to protect the sleeping citizens and the injured Lee. Damn it where'd forehead go? Yelled Eno as she ducked under a kanai swipe. 
Shoji just grunted as Asuna Chunin tried to slam into his armored chest. I don't know, however we have more important things to worry about. Like staying alive, yelled Tenten, though she did briefly wonder where the fuck Neji flew off to. Shino couched against a nearby was. His nearly covered face marred in thought as he vanished. Sarutobi grunt, D against the sword of Orochimaru with a glare, the Anbu, all looking on unable to do anything because of the barrier. Orochimaru, you monster, yelled the Hokage as he delivered a powerful kick to the snake Sanin's chest. Kukukuku sensei that's not a very nice thing to say. I thought we were comrades. A team, shut up. Today I'm going to do what I should have done already. Orochimaru your ambitions end here. Orochimaru smirked and took up his battle stance. Not even with all of these special children you've kept hidden from me will you win Serutobi sensei Then I'm going to take all of them and use them for my own ambitions. Kukuku I can hardly wait to dissect them. Serutobi scowled and did a few hand signs. Cerulean eyes snapped open as the winds wafted through his home. Muscles tensed and his nose twitched. Blood, he said in a whisper. He jumped to his feet and sniffed a few more times. Shinobi blood, the beasts around him also tensed up. They too could smell it. The smell of conflict, a battle of large proportions, foreign smells invaded their noses and several different sources of a non-human power could be felt as well. He saw smoke billowing into the sky and he could hear the deaths of people as they were eliminated by their foes. At first he brushed it off as that test the shinobi were taking. But then after several more minutes the smells got worse and the smell of death increased dramatically. Beasts that resided within the village, flooded into the forest full of panic and worry. Some were injured, caught in the crossfire. Naruto's eyes narrowed and, he prepared for the enemy to flood his forest. But it never happened. The shinobi never came. Naruto relaxed and prepared to go back to sleep. He wanted to stay clear of the humans and their conflicts. It had nothing to do with him or the beasts but suddenly another smell invaded his nose. A particular scent that actually had his anger level rising. It was the smell of the blood of the elder, the Hokage. The Hokage was in danger. He was dying. Naruto's eyes turned orange and the air rapidly heated up. He didn't really care for most of the shinobi but the Hokage was a different story. He was the only one who showed any level of liking for him. When he was still small, thoughts of the four he had trained also invaded his minds his pack mates were also in danger he let loose a growl and crouched down fire exploding off of his body serutobi coughed blood as he held orochimaru's shoulders a long blue sword lanced through his chest while the imposing figure of the shinigami lord of the underworld hovered behind him orochimaru glared as he tried to get the kusanagi to finish its job of impaling the hokage but the summon enma held strong on the blade despite it cutting into his hand the Shinigami was preparing to do what it was summoned for when he felt it. Power and heat wafted over the entire village and a roar far louder and more terrifying than anything they had ever heard erupted from the forest of death. Enma froze. The snakes attacking the village froze, Gamabunta, Kakashi's dogs and every pet in the village froze. Fate gasped. Naomi's eyes got huge and excited. The Shinigami turned towards the source of the noise and the woman stalking Gara gasped. Neji spun around, still hovering in the air and ignoring the sputters coming from the shinobi below him. His face twisted into a smirk. Sasuke unwrapped his tail from the neck of a sand shinobi and smiled as the heat engulfed the village. Shikamaru froze and found himself muttering, Naruto-sama. And every o oh, nay else could only gape in astonishment and fear as a spire of fire shot straight up and instantly evaporated the clouds above. Serutobi smirked at a visibly concerned Orochimaru and said the one fra. Say that would alert yet another realm to Naruto's existence. The Shinigami's eyes widened as Serutobi said, looks like you pissed off the king of beasts. Fury of the beast, bonding of the sands, ever, Yong watched in fascination and awe as the fire spiraled up into the air and switched from orange, to blue to black then to white before vanishing as something shot out of it and sailed into the sky at incredible speeds. Orochimaru and Serutobi both stared on, each other completely forgotten for the moment. Enma was still frozen and the numerous lords lurking in Kona had decided to sit back and observe. So the beast lord does exist. This ought to be interesting, I wonder why Neji-kun never told me of this. 
said fate to herself as she heard the mortal old man proclaim his line to the pale one. Naomi was thinking along similar lines though hers were also along the lines of, ooh I'm so glad I decided to stay awake. I woulda missed this. Other people weren't so positive about this, mainly the invading shinobi. They watched as the beast king rocketed through the sky at speeds unheard of, right at the purple barrier surrounding the Otokage and the Hokage, and then they gasped as his flaming form became more and more visible. Because Naruto was flying right at the purple barrier head first and with large feathered wings folded tightly against him. He wasn't using them. His long hair W. Hipped about violently as a dome of fire spiraled around him and pushed backwards, propelling him like fuel would a missile. He looked like a comet. Serutobi used Orochimaru's distraction to leap away, and off of the Kusanagi with a spurt of blood. I'm not getting caught in the middle of this, he said with a cough and a wicked smirk as he retreated into the compacted forest created by the preview. Sly resurrected first Hokage then formed a powerful protective multi-layered earth dome around himself. Orochimaru barely had time to respond before Naruto smashed into the barrier with so much force. The resulting shockwave threw anyone that wasn't rooted down with chakra. Then the barrier cackled and exploded in a display of fire and chakra a second before the fire itself exploded outwards and two. RNED nearly everything in the vicinity into ash and glass. Orochimaru and the Sound Four were engulfed right then and there, only three of them surviving the inferno that came too suddenly for them to react while the dome around Serutobi turned to glass but kept him safe. My god! exclaimed the Anbu captain who was smart enough to have him and his squad retreat way before Naruto was even close. Such power! Unbelievable! said another. The people in the village that weren't already froze in shock at what they had just witnessed then they started to sweat as the heat wave washed over them. The Shinigami, the Hachimata and the goddess of fate could only stare in shock as well. Thoughts of what they were witnessing were, causing both excitement and anticipation to rise up in their beings. T. They were watching the birth of a new lord's legend. Orochimaru lowered the Rushaman gate he had managed to summon in the nick of time and smirked at what he saw despite that small inkling of fear that had risen up inside him. The area was an ashy ruin. Nothing was left and the roof he was standing on was but a glass bowl still glowing in some places. He looked around and saw the smoking skeletons of two of his sound bodyguards. One with six arms and another with two heads. The other two had survived by the skin of their teeth by hiding behind an earth barrier created by the large one with orange hair. An earth barrier that was now made of glass. Tiyuya and Jirobu were unconscious on the ground marred with severe burns but they were breathing. Orochimaru could see their cursed seals trying to keep them stable. Smoke and heat waves rose up into the sky and the sound of cackling embers could be heard as well. Naruto's senses were on overdrive at the moment. He ignored the shinobi in front of him and started to sniff the air. Looking for the elder. Finally he pinpointed the old man's scent hidden beneath the dome of glass and was instantly at it. Orochimaru watched as Naruto's arm trans. Formed into that of a gorilla and smashed right through the thick glass with a strength that a normal gorilla would never have been able to wield. The large fist gently wrapping around the old man and pulling him out of the barrier. Naruto felt something akin to shock as he lifted the elder up out of the glass and laid him gently on the ground in front of him. The stab wound from the Kusanagi was still gushing blood and the Beast King could see the life draining out of the Hokage's eyes. Naruto also made a mental note to find out what the floating spectral being that was hovering behind the Ho. Cage was in the future but for the moment he focused solely on the elder. Gigi Hokage, he said with a soft smile. Serutobi could only smile in pure joy when he locked eyes with Naruto. Hello again, Naruto. I'm glad. I could see you again one more time, before, I die. The Hokage clutched his wound and mentally cursed himself for not having the strength to continue on or even get the Shinigami. To suck out any part of Orochimaru's soul. His old body just wasn't up to the task. Naruto felt the sadness well up inside of him as he assessed the elder's wounds. He had been stabbed through the chest right through the lung. Blood was collecting in the lung at an astonishing rate and several bones had been broken, possibly in an earlier fight. And Naruto, have you see come, to help us? Have you come, e to lend a hand, in stopping this invasion? Naruto looked on slightly confused. The elder was asking him something. But he didn't know what. He racked his brain 
trying to find the meaning of the woe. Road invasion when the pale-skinned shinobi decided to speak. As Orochimaru watched the Beast King and his former sensei interact his courage finally returned and he was able to speak again, his shock. Vanishing with each passing second as the village and his own allies still recovered from seeing that brief display of power from the blonde. Kukuku so you are the infamous Beast King. Impressive. In. Stanley Naruto's eyes were locked onto him. The irises were flashing between orange and blue. Who you? He asked with a gruff voice. This put Orochimaru on edge once again but he continued anyway. I am Orochimaru, Snake Sanin and soon to be conqueror of this village and master of every jutsu in the world and then some. And what my old sensei means by invasion is what I am doing. I am taking tea, his village for myself and will kill all who stand in my way. He then pointed down. You see the ones down there wearing the sound and the sand symbols. They are the force that will end this village Kukukuku. Naruto followed Orochimaru's gaze and saw that every eye was locked on him in fear, excitement or astonishment. He saw the corpses of many shinobi both from the village and from the two that the Orochimaru had pointed out and he also saw that for the moment, no one was fighting. His mind was on overdrive, the meanings of the words finally coming to light and hitting him with realization. The village was being attacked, the land being invaded by enemies. The home of the shinobi and therefore his home in the forest were in grave danger. The elder thought he came to help, when in reality, he merely came to see why the old man was bleeding to death. He had known a large-scale fight was happening but he didn't know it was because of an invasion. The shinobi village wasn't his home. He cared little for it in reality. The village was the territory of someone else and therefore a piece of land not belonging to him. It was his neighbor, neither enemy nor ally. The place held little hap. Why memories for him but he did not blame them for it. Many other species treated differences the same way. But then as he stood there looking down at the village, almost all of it in ruin with several giant snakes at the walls and several different presences neither human or beast lurking around in the village he couldn't help but let out a sad sigh. He turned to the elder and kneeled down to look him in the eyes. This once, he said, causing Serutobi's eyes to widen will help village this once. For elder, he then placed his hands over the Hokage's wounds and said, chakra, causing said wounds to begin to heal. Orochimaru's eyes narrowed into a glare and he drew the kusanagi. No, the old man will die. He charged at great speeds preparing to take the Hokage's head off but was stopped. When a fist buried into his stomach and sent him over the edge and down to the ground below. Naruto glared and spread wings as he took to the sky. Orochimaru knew what was coming and shouted, Kill everyone you come across now. And it was with those words that it all resumed. Battle started back up immediately and the snakes once again began to demolish the wall of Konoha. Orochimaru looked up at his foe. I said I'd take care of you if you interfered with my plans. I will hold up on this promise. He then did numerous hand signs before slamming his palm into the ground. Kuchio's number jutsu. Naruto watched in fascination as a gigantic talking purple snake appeared, killing many in the process and bringing Orochimaru to eye level with him. Orochimaru what the hell do you want now? You had better have sacrifices damn it. He then locked eyes with Naruto and glared. Who are you, brat? He didn't get to say anything else because Naruto appeared in front of him and stared into his eyes. Obey me, he commanded with a voice that would have scared anyone. Manda gasped as he felt his control leave and his instincts force him to submit, much to the shock of Orochimaru. He was so, shish, oct in fact that he didn't even bother to block the foot that slammed into his temple. Naruto grinned a feral grin with fangs and everything as he assumed Orochimaru's spot on Manda's head. Orochimaru, I am Beast King, you fool to try and use Snake. Hokage asked me to help village, I will do that this once. Orochimaru sneered. Quit talking boy, all I have seen so far are a bunch of fancy fire techniques. Do something new, Naruto smirked, fine, and then they felt it. Naruto's presence washed all over the village, like a thick fog, his influence seeping into every insect every cat and dog every pig, chicken, bird. Horse summon animal and the entire Inazuka clan along with Kin, a distant Shikamaru and the hive of the Abarame clan. His energy felt nothing like chakra. It wasn't chakra, it was something else, something not even the other lords could identify. 
It wasn't fire but it felt just as wild and free. But it was also something that Naruto still hadn't completely mastered. Then he held up his arm. Orochimaru watched in fascination as fire exploded from it and collected around it, taking the form of a transparent fiery glowing gauntlet with claws more wicked looking than the claws of a raptor. A flaming tail extended from his lower back and a helmet appeared covering the top of his head. It was shaped like the upper half of a wolf's head. Orochimaru couldn't help but marvel at the technique. The heat alone was messing with his body temperature. But before he or anyone else could continue to stare, Naruto's wings gave a powerful flap and shot him into the air. Now face fury of beast. Naruto then let out a call. It was a call unlike any other. It wasn't what he used to call the animals when he fought Gara or when he talked to any of the beasts. No this call was. A beautiful melodic combination of a bird and a singer. Manda was the first one affected due to his close proximity to the beast king. His mind was assaulted by the words that were laced in the call of that blonde boy. Attack. Kill the shinobi that threatened the village. Eliminate all of them. And he couldn't resist those orders. Not from this one. He turned and locked eyes with Orochimaru. Time to die, he said with a smirk. Orochimaru barely dodged the lunge from his own summon. Fucking brat. The affect of Naruto's call reached the entire forest around Konoha, every animal and insect W. If in the area froze as their king's order hit their minds and as one every one of them turned toward Konoha. Images of what they were to attack flooded their minds as they began to move. Shikamaru FR. Oz as his instincts and mind were assaulted with. Naruto's order. He felt the need to turn towards Konoha but then his logic kicked in. He was already in pursuit of enemy shinobi. With a slight smirk he continued on. Following the scent of one particular. Individual. Kiba instantly started to attack the sound and the sand shinobi with even greater ferocity than before. It was the same for Akamaru A. S the two unleashed barrage after barrage of Gatsugas on their foes in greater speeds they normally were not capable of. The other, Konoha ninja around them looked at him in shock as the Inazuka went completely monstrous in his attacks on the shinobi. Good god what did that blonde boy do to him? Asked one shinobi as he knew that strange sound had to do with the Inazuka's sudden ferocity. All around, the beasts of Konoha started to react. Entire packs and herds of animals sprung into immediate action and everyone froze when the sounds of thousands of different animal cries assaulted their ears. Naruto smirked down at Orochimaru as the skies turned black with countless birds rising from the canopies of the forest then descending upon the village in a massive swarm. Serutobi watched on with a shocked expression on his face. From his vantage point he could see it. He could see what Naruto had brought upon the enemies of Konoha and he knew there were going to be no survivors. Orochimaru you poor dumb fuck. He muttered as his eyes closed. Fate and Naomi from their points in the sky, along with Neji who had flown back towards Konoha when the snakes suddenly changed sides, watched from above. They didn't notice each other. Their attention was focused solely on what was happening below them. Neji didn't even see the need to continue fighting anymore. The enemy shinobi never saw them coming. They were too focused on the birds from above. The swarm of beasts on the ground nearly had them in their mouths by the time they realized it. Konoha was flooded with ferocious animals of a LL kinds in a matter of minutes and the enemy began to fall at astonishing rates. A tiger slashed Asuna Junin and the birds gauged eyes out. In seconds the sounds of battle devolved into those of rage-filled animal cries. Horror and pain filled screams of agony. There was no escape, there was no place to hide. Every ninja that was not a resident of Konoha was doomed. And during all of the sudden chaos, Naruto stared at Orochimaru. His eyes gleamed with satisfaction and dominance, the eyes of an alpha, a top predator. Orochimaru who prided himself on using the predator-prey mind game on others couldn't help. For the first time in his entire life, feeling like the prey. The birds and anything else that could fly swarmed all over Konoha and around the two only. Stationary figures, therefore. Miz increasingly being obstructed but Orochimaru could see the Beast King's hovering form through the haze of winged beasts just 20 feet above him. He planted the Kusanagi into the head of a tiger then dodged an attack from Manda. He spoke but he could barely hear his own voice over the deafening noise created by snarling beasts, squawking birds and screams of pain and agony. I do not know what you are boy but I can assure you. Your little army will mean nothing once I kill you. 
Naruto merely smirked once then vanished in a burst of speed not even the Sanin could trace. Then he felt the searing heat and the intense pain a second later as the flaming claws tore into his back. Orochimaru stumbled forward, shocked as Naruto appeared in front of him and raised his flame gauntlet arm. I tell same thing to you I told Sand using pup. A large snake slithered up and relaxed around Naruto's shoulder as millions of bugs began to swarm around him. I not weak, I stronger than most. That counts you. Orochimaru glared and said, Boy you have yet to witness my power. Naruto snarled and jerked his normal hand. Instantly the swarm of insects was upon Orochimaru, biting, stinging, pinching. These little annoyances alone were enough to allow an opening. Naruto jammed his flaming claws into Orochimaru's chest then watched in fascination as he exploded into mud. Close boy but not good enough. On instinct alone Naruto ducked just in time to avoid a beheading slash from the Kusanagi, the lashed out with his tail. Orochimaru screamed in pain as his arm was nearly burned off by the Florida. Ming appendage then gasped when a normal human hand clutched his throat and began to squeeze. Snake man. Ba I know frogs stronger than you. Orochimaru snapped at this. No one. No one ever compared him to those beasts. Ever. Brat. I'll kill you. Orochimaru's attack came with speed and ferocity previously unused, throwing the beast king away from him. The kusanagi was a blur of blue and golden. D. Orochimaru's remaining arm moved like something possessed. Naruto dodged and evaded every attack and continued to laugh at the man in front of him. You worse than sand user snake man. Show me power already or I kill you. Shut up boy. You do not know who you're dealing with. You sure. Cause I think I dealing with pup right now. How dare you. I am the snake sanin Orochimaru. Strongest ninja. A ever to come out of this pathetic village. You will respect me. Strongest ninja. I not care. You're weaker than me. I beast king. I have more abilities than you snake man. I the alpha. Fire explo. Dead from Naruto and washed over the surrounding beasts. But they didn't get burned up. No. Orochimaru and the Konoha shinobi watched in wonder once again as Naruto displayed yet another strange ability. The animals tripled in size as parts of them turned into fire. Legs, tails, claws or wings. I done playing snake man. Come back when you stronger. If you survive, then he and the flaming beasts. Vanished and proceeded to decimate Orochimaru's defense from all sides. There were too many to block and they were all moving too fast even for him. The attacks came and came like an endless chain. Say, erring slash marks appeared all over his body and blood started to flow from bite marks. Orochimaru fired jutsus, he tried to flare chakra he tried to fight back but he could not. Just like Gara, he was overwhelmed. Several beasts did meet their end at Orochimaru's hand but for every one killed two more replaced it. Orochimaru got manhandled, the Sanin's thoughts were on overdrive. This shouldn't be possible, this boy should not have the power to face him in battle. He was the strongest, he had all of the jutsus, all of the resources and all of the kenjutsu skills. Yet everything he tried against the boy was rendered useless. He tried to blow him away with a wind breakthrough. He countered by becoming an elephant and melting the ground he was standing on with his intense fire. He tried water jutsu, thinking they could douse his fire. The water was evaporated in seconds. He tired to use the kusanagi, the beast king used his flaming claws and countered all of those attacks as well. Then, the boy supercharged the animals and made it even worse. His men were running in terror trying to escape the wrath of the countless beasts storming all over Konoha with leaf ninjas at their sides. His invasion, his plans were crumbling right before his eyes, all because of this boy. Then it came to him. This was the beast king, the lord of the animal. A person with more potential than any human he'd ever come across. Even more so than the Uchiha. I will have your body beast king. He shouted out of the blue and with a sudden new desire in his head. He did the hand signs, he smiled the smile, and he produced the special poison. Ha 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 you're mine. Orochimaru's neck shot, out and extended with alarming speed. Naruto's eyes began to glow again as his hands clenched into tight fists. Become my servant, shouted the deranged Sanin as his fangs neared the neck of the Beast King. Gara, Tamari and Konkuro ran from Konoha as fast as they could on Gara's command. The order came so soon. 
Di Denli and the other two had no idea why their brother had ordered such a thing but then they saw his eyes. In his eyes was the reason and they couldn't help but go with him. They had been running for a while now, even when all of the animals suddenly started to run at Konoha. They knew that somehow the Beast King had gotten involved and they had felt a bit glad they were leaving. They didn't want to face the Beast King, but just as they hit an open plain three people landed in front of them. Temeri's eyes widened when she saw who they were and she drew her fan, ready to fight. Konkuro did the same, unsealing three puppets from scrolls on his back. Gara's aquamarine eyes locked with emerald ones for a brief seconds before Sakura spoke. Where do you think you're going? Gara, I've desit, ed that I do not feel like attacking Konoha so I took my siblings and left that place. I see, so you were going to attack Konoha then. You were a part of it the whole time. Gara nodded, his arms crossed. Soccer aside, so then why did you change your mind? Black Sand suddenly came out of Gara's gourd and took the form of his second personality. The answer should be obvious, shouldn't it? Sakura, it asked. Sakura sighed as her hourglass opened up and out came her sand. It too took on a form. So what the hell do we do now, huh? Tell us, Gara, why the fuck we shouldn't take you out right now? Gara shrugged. There is no reason I can give you. However, Sakura, if you wish to fight me then do not underestimate me and overestimate yourself. Sakura glared, let's settle this, Gara. Fine then, black and pink sand exploded outwards slamming into each other in the middle and throwing everyone else back. Tamari jumped back to her feet and dusted herself off. So troublesome women are, wouldn't you agree dessert flower? Quote, Tamari gasped and spun around. Shikamaru was there rising up out of her shadow like some sort of specter. His yellow panther eyes and his claws were gleaming in the sunlight. I mean when I caught up to her she barely noticed me. She was so focused on getting to your brother that I became an irrelevant variable. Tamari took a step back and opened her fan. It's you, the cat boy. What are you doing here? Shikamaru sighed and gave his tail an annoyed flick. First of all I'm a panther. Not just some damned cat. Second of all, like your brother's San said. It should be obvious as to why I am here shouldn't it? Tamari tensed up and swung her fan causing a huge gust of wind to explode forth and right at the panther Nara who merely jumped to the side and sunk into another shadow. I'm here for you, Tamari gasped when the whisper entered her ear and sent shivers up and down her spine. She leapt high into the air while turning to glare at Shikamaru. Don't fuck with me asshole. Ninpu, wind scythe jutsu. Shikamaru jumped to the side then up then back, avoiding the deadly blades of winds as they smashed into the ground. Sigh, you know before, I met the beast king the first never would have. Indulged in something like this, training, fighting women, creating my own jutsus. It's just not in my character. You know, hell my personality isn't even the same anymore. Not since I became this. Tamari had no idea why he was telling her this. Was he trying to ease her into a conversation while they fought? Was he building up for something big? But you know what? Began Shikamaru as he started doing hand signs. I'm glad I met him. He finished and slammed his palms into his own shadow. Because I wouldn't have been able to stand out if I hadn't met him. And I would be too lazy to pursue possible partners. Temeri's brain shut down at his words and she didn't respond at all when Shikamaru's shadow expanded in all directions and engulfed Averit. Hing within a 5 meter radius around him. Taking her with it, Shino Abarame has always been a stoic and analytical person. He's always been aware of his surroundings and he has always been one to question odd events. Like when Sakura appeared among the group of watching Genin. He noticed her from afar and had risen an eyebrow. Then Neji appeared wielding angelic powers. Then he saw Shikamaru rise up out of the shadows with that sound kunoichi and wondered how something like the beast king was able to do such things he also noticed sasuke and that beautiful girl with the wings and eight tails he wasn't sure if any other of the genin noticed the transformed uchiha and his winged companion but he sure did he also had many questions neji talked about fate like it was a living being was it true was there a goddess of fate if so did she grant neji those powers who was that girl with Sasuke? Why do his destruction beetles talk so much about the prophesized king of beasts and call him their lord? What was Naruto? Really, ever since the arrival of Naruto odd events had been happening all throughout Konoha. 
transformations, strange women, he couldn't quite grasp it all. He wanted answers. He knew that Naruto was the link to all of this so he followed the closest thing to that link in hopes that he would get some answers, Shikamaru. But now as he stood in front of his opponent, ignoring the swaths of pink and black sand washing over the area and the fear-filled struggles of the female sand nin against Shikamaru's shadow all he could think of was how to win this battle. H. Is Keke Beetles left to aid the Beast King? Konkuro saw Shino's handicap and voiced his thoughts on such things. Why don't you just back away now? I know your bugs have ditched you for the moment and I really have no reason to fight you. I have no problems with Konoha. Shino sighed. What should he do? Should he listen and back off? Should he engage the puppet user? He didn't see any of the arranged by Ogun's or cockiness the Suna Nin had displayed during the preliminaries. In fact he seemed distracted. By Sakura San and Gara. A flicker of annoyance sparked to like inside him and he took up a taijutsu stance. I don't like being disregarded, he said. Konkuro just sighed and prepared his puppets. Suit yourself. A second later they both exploded into action and leapt up at each other and above the two sand users below. H how? How is this possible? Brat, what did you do? Orochimaru was a man of few emotions. Some were actually completely withered away. A man such as Orochimaru had only need for two emotions. Excitement and pleasure. Those are the only things he felt he needed. Anger was also an emotion he could not rid himself of. But now one of those emotions was returning and grow. Ing stronger with each passing second within the snake Sanin. In fact he was so overcome with this emotion that he didn't even notice the fangs sinking into his own neck until it was too late. He was still shocked at what had occurred mere microseconds before his teeth pierced the flesh of the Beast King. When Orochimaru did the jutsu needed to give the Beast King a curse seal something suddenly went wrong. He thought he had him. He had finally found the perfect body. One with abilities no other being could copy. But as his fangs, dripping with the purple-black poison used to form the curse S. Eel neared Naruto's neck a silver and orange tendril of energy rose up and slammed into his face and forced its way down his throat. Disintegrating his teeth and throwing him back a few feet. But that was not all. Naruto roared a powerful roar and rushed after him clutching his clawed hand around the neck. Of Orochimaru and gazed into his eyes with blank orange voids. There was no pupil, no white, no iris. When Orochimaru gazed into those eyes, true fear welled up inside of him. He felt like a trapped fish clutched within the talons of an osprey. Naruto smirked as he removed his fangs from Orochimaru's neck and said, You serve me now, before dropping him and turning away, his gauntlet, tail, helmet and wings vanishing as he walked. Orochimaru could feel something moving throughout his being and could do nothing to stop it. It flooded his entire body and overwhelmed his chakra. It banished all of the different chemicals flowing through his veins and purged him of the other souls locked away from his previous body snatching. Everything about him was literally and figuratively torn apart and rebuilt into something else, something that the snake Sanin did not want. And as he fell to the ground screaming as his entire makeup was rearranged, Naruto turned and gave him a blank look. You leave village now snake man. This only chance you get. Orochimaru could only muster a loud cur. Say at the boy before him but he cold do nothing more. His body, it was. I, I'll kill you brat. Mark my words Naruto the beast king. I will have your head. Naruto just smirked and vanished behind a pack of bears. A a a a r r r r r r g g g g h h h h h h. Orochimaru used the last of his strength to get to his feet and stumble out of Konoha. Watch your back brat because you're going to have it riddled with shuriken and my sword if you don't. The ninja of Konoha watched him go. None of them moved to stop him. Orochimaru had been defeated. Odo and Suna for that matter were mere figments of power now. The beasts calmed down and became silent as Naruto walked past them. All of them bowed to him as he went and several young ones gathered around him happily. The shinobi could only stare. None of them said anything. None of them could say anything. Naruto wordlessly made his way back to where the Hokage was, laying and knelt down to check his wounds. He was healed but there was something wrong. Gigi Hokage, he asked. He did not notice the Shinigami's piercing stare, or the transparent tattooed hand that pulled the Hokage's soul from his body. Sorry young lord, 
But the pact must be fulfilled, Niu. Chitered one of the lords of the underworld as he began to fade away. Naruto just continued to try and get the Hokage to speak but failed. All he managed to get the Hokage to do was smile a mutter a week, thank you, Naruto. Before his eyes became lifeless. Meanwhile fate was also fading away, Neji-kun take care. I promise to come and see you again, she said. But something has come up. Neji nodded, his eyes filling with understanding. It's about Naruto right, the goddess nodded. My brothers and sisters must know of his existence. Naomi heard the angel's proclamation and scoffed. Pompous Tenshi, make sure to leave the Beast King alone long enough for him to get used to having different lords bothering him all of the time. What's that supposed to mean demon? The Hachimata merely pointed down to the fading form of the Shinigami and said, I guarantee he's gonna go tell his brothers and all three of them are gonna approach the Beast King within the next four days. I doubt he won. T.S. to be pestered with a bunch of lords constantly appearing and looking down upon him. And what of you and the other demon lords? Naomi looked up in thought. Well like you I just came here because. E.A. certain mortal has caught my attention, a cute handsome boy with powerful red eyes. Let the other demon lords worry about the beast king. Fate nodded and turned back to Neji who was looking more and more confused. Something big is coming Neji kun and the beast king is going to be the center of it all. Just be on your guard okay. Why? Fate merely smiled and gave Neji a kiss on the cheek. Quote, there are not going to be a lot of lords that will want to acknowledge the Beast King as an official new lord. It will lead to conflict. Fate then faded away, leaving Neji and Naomi to stare at each other. Finally the demon just turned and flew towards the arena. Listen to the Tenshi and don't underestimate the Beast King like your lord's will. I'm going to find Sasuke-kun. Neji was left to his own thoughts. Numerous questions had been answered but now more have arisen. Meanwhile Gara stood over the slumped over form of Sakura with a smirk and his arms crossed. Are you done? He asked the pink haired girl. Her answer was a weak punch. Gara sighed and crouched down, looking into her. Green eyes. Listen, I didn't attack Konoha. Shouldn't that be enough for you? Sakura glared. Shut up. You toyed with my feelings. You played me. Gara sighed again and sat down. I would have killed you and numerous others if I was playing you. I approached you because you are like me. You really t think I would squander the feelings of perhaps the only person who could understand me completely. Sakura looked up, tears visible on the corners of her eyes. Why you mean it? Gara brushed a tear to t had escaped from her eye and down her cheek and gave a warm smile. You're reverting to that crybaby of a girl from a month ago. S shut up. Anyway, it looks like the battle is over. The animals are returning to the forest. Sakura looked around and indeed the familiar noise of the Konoha forest wildlife was returning to its original tempo. Gara gave a small smile as his sand retracted into his gourd. Get up Sakura, I will walk you back to your village. Sakura smiled and jumped to her feet, her pleasantly smelling pink sand filling the hourglass on her back once more and her doubt melt. Ing away as she linked her arms with the one boy who had acknowledged her as valuable, and as a friend. Gara showed no outward reaction to Sakura's affection but inside he was caught off guard. Thanks, Gara-kun, she said as she rested her head on his shoulder. Gara merely nodded and although he was very unused to such close contact, he found himself growing to like this pink-haired Kunoichi leaning on his shoulder. You're welcome, Sakura-chan. Sakura smiled and snuggled closer to him while mentally noting that Gara had noticeable trouble uttering that sentence. It was cute. Sakura's smile grew some more. Come on Gara-kun, let's hurry. H.N. No one was aware of the fact that in three different realms, activity and meetings were taking place. After the invasion, they say that animal, S do not know how to feel remorse or sorrow at the loss of a loved one. They say they do not have the mental capability that their minds are too smothered in their own primal instincts to feel such emotions. If that were true then how do we explain the actions of geese, ducks and swans? Three species that mate for life. If their partner dies they will die as well for the simple fact that they wi. LL refuse to leave their fallen mate's side. They will kill themselves to forever be with their mate. Dogs that lose someone very close to them with mope for weeks, their big eyes tear-stained and their ears and tails lifeless. It's the same for wolves. 
When a member of the pack is lost one can hear their sorrowful howls to the moon in the dead of night as if begging Kami to reunite them with their fallen comrade. Humans think they know the mindset of animals but the truth is they barely know anything. This could explain the reason many were looking at the beast king in confusion as he stared sadly at the body of the Hokage. The funeral was a sad event for everyone. They had lost their leader. They had lost their beacon of hope. Serutobi was the light in a village filled in darkness. They w. Ochta's Naruto said nothing for ten whole minutes, just staring at the body with his long bangs shadowing his eyes. No one dared approach him, opting to let him have his moment with the Hokage. Fina, LLY at long last Naruto looked up and at the people. All of them were assembled neatly, like an army dressed in black, each waiting to place a white flower on the casket. I, sorry, he said. Many gave confused looks. I, failed, to protect Elder. You without Alpha now. No one said anything and the Beast King took that as them trying to cope with the loss of their leader. I cared, for Elder, he continued. I pained to see him go. I hope he happy now. A few people broke down into tears then but Naruto didn't seem to notice. Be strong, he said. Continue on. He then sprouted large wings and shot into the dark gray sky. The funeral went on for a few more hours with everyone honoring the Hokage and the others that were lost to Orochimaru. Hana and Sum with tears in their eyes placed a flower each on the Hokage's chest and ignored the people staring at their tails. Sasuke was not exactly accepted by the public as being a demon but they didn't really have a choice but to tolerate him for the moment. Many shied away though as he walked up and placed a flower on the Hokage's casket. Sakura was next. She wordlessly placed her flower down and promptly retreated back into the crowd. Shikamaru and Kin who were holding hands also placed their flowers down. Neji was next and ignored the stares from the people as well. Things were definitely tense since the invasion had ended two days ago. Gara and Sakura had returned shortly after the Beast King had soundly whooped Orochimaru's ass and promptly ran into some trouble. Well, Gara did. The Konoha shinobi attacked him, forcing him to retaliate. Lucili Sakura was able to calm both sides down enough to get Gara to retreat. He instructed her to continue her training and that he was going to stop by again once they got this whole situation fixed up. Shikamaru returned shortly afterwards with an unconscious Tamari slung over his shoulder and was also promptly confronted by Shinobi who not only took Tamari from him to be placed in prison but also instructed him to go to the council chamber right away. When he got there he saw Kin, Sasuke and Neji along with Sum and Hana. Needless to say the following arguments were not PR. Eddie as the council tried to demand when Sazulk thought it was smart to get turned into a demon and the Hyuga clan tried to subjugate Neji to another caged bird seal, resulting in a huge fight there as well. Shikamaru and Kin were called traitors when they said they serve Naruto now and Shikamaru himself had to spend several hours consulting his distraught mother who clearly didn't approve of his changes. His father on the other hand seemed quite intrigued. Konoha had captured five shinobi, two from sound and three from sand. To Yuya and Jirobo who were still unconscious had been found by no. Nay other than Jiraiya who had be thrown out of the. Cage box right before Orochimaru had grabbed the Hokage. Tamari who had been brought in by Shikamaru was there as well along with Konkuro who was foe. Und next to Shino by Shino's father Shibi. And finally there was the Junin Baki. The council had issued out a notice to have Naruto report to the council boo at no shinobi felt like getting. Into a fight with the beast king and knowing that trying to force him would result in that, and possibly their deaths kept them even further at bay. However the notice was still out there. Sum and Hana were, in the midst of a large conflict right now. The Inazuka clan outright rejected them when they returned with their new features and their new allegiance to Naruto. Only Kiba and two others had taken their side. The rest refused to have anything else to do with them and the dogs were hinting that they were going to abandon the clan. It saddened the two women but they knew something like this might happen. The funeral ended with rain starting to pour down from the sky as if the heavens themselves were weeping for the loss of life and everyone slowly made their way back to their homes. The village needed to get back on its feet. Naruto returned to his forest to find the beasts there waiting for him. They all gave out different animal cries of happiness when he stepped out of the bushes and they visibly relaxed as well. Master Naruto where were you? We grew worried. 
Naruto gently placed his hand of the tigress's head and smiled. You not think I was in danger did you? He asked with a grin. The tigress bumped him, causing him to stumble. Yes, the humans are unpredictable and violent. Naruto nodded. I know. Other animals approached and surrounded him, each wanting their own bit of attention from their king and he was happy to give it. He loved his subjects. He would do anything to him. He didn't really feel like revealing to them that while fighting Orochimaru he had noticed T. Hat there were several different princesses lurking about. He didn't want to worry them. Still though he couldn't help but wonder what those princesses belonged to. The tigress the thoughtful look on his face and grew worried. What did you see Master Naruto? Was it another lord? She hoped to all that was animal kind that it wasn't. Deep down and enshrouded in death and darkness, hidden within. A dimension lying at the very core of the world lies an impossibly gigantic city in a cavern of even bigger proportions. The atmosphere is that of stagnation and rot, of death and decay and of corrupted souls and passing J.U. Dement. Stalactites hung from above dripping. Lifeless water down to the floor and the river sticks snaked and swerved its way across the bottom, glowing green and consisting of nothing but dead souls and ectoplasm. Walking skeletons and departed souls awaiting their judgment occupied the otherwise deserted streets of the city in the massive three-headed form of the Gate Guardian. Cerberus could be seen in the shadows looming over the buildings like an entity of judgment waiting to pounce on the unworthy. The river and the city echoed with the constant moans of the souls. Of the departed and the wind whispered the dying thoughts of millennials of people. Screams of agony rippled through the air from behind the walls of numerous intimidating looking structures. Souls who have been judged unworthy of salvation and condemned for their taint. This city is not a city one who lives belongs in. One would be driven to madness in mere hours from grief if they were unfortunate enough to find themselves here. The city was built much like Konoha complete with a huge tower right in the middle of the city. The tower was shaped like a massive skeletal face that was connected to. The ceiling of the cavern and the eyes glowed with blue light, illuminating the large mansion hidden. Inside. This is the underworld, hell, the place where souls are judged, worthy of joing heaven, bay, ing reincarnated are spending eternity here, suffering for their transgressions in life. In the mansion hidden in the tower two figures could be seen examining two souls one had flaming blue fire for ha. I are in glowing red eyes and the other looked like a bipedal jackal wielding a huge scythe. The souls were of a man and the other of a child. Hum, Hasano Kusahajiri. Age 35. Died due to a kanai in the back of the skull. Killed by one he thought he controlled, spoke the jackal. The man shivered but nodded, not daring to say anything. The man gasped. And no, please, give me another chance. I, no, please. The jackal jammed his scythe into the ground and glared. Be gone tainted soul. The six skeletons jumped out of the ground and dragged the bandit's soul to the river sticks. He screamed the entire way there. The blue fire-haired figure stared down at the shivering child's soul for two whole minutes before he spoke. Suki Subankatsu, age 10, killed by a bandit after you threw a kanai, to the back of Hasano's head in order to save Yuka-san. You were worthy of salvation you can choose reincarnation or heaven. What'll it be? The little girl said nothing for a minute before she finally got her wits about her. I I choose. H heaven. The figure smiled at her. Very well. Enjoy your afterlife, you definitely deserve it. He then drew a talisman and stamped her forehead with it. S. He disintegrated into a thousand little specks of light and disappeared. Three minutes passed then the jackal turned to she brother. I'm done for today, you continue if you want. The fire head smiled, showing pointed teeth. No thank you, that was like six thousand souls in a month. I'm talking my well-deserved break. The jackal laughed a bit. Me too. I wonder what happened to the human who summoned Shinny. The jackal was about to respond when a Rashomon gate suddenly burst out of the floor and swung open revealing a swirling red vortex of death. Now now brothers don't tell me you were were. Read about the almighty Shinigami were you. Because a human has managed to summon me. The jackal sighed. Get over yourself brat. Yeah, it's not like you have anything good to show for it. The human world is so dull these says. The Shinigami smirked and removed his dagger from his mouth. Actually there are a couple. He started to heave for two minutes causing his two brothers to raise eyebrows. So you brought a soul to be judged. Big deal, 
said the fire-headed man but didn't say anything else out of surprise when the Shinigami puked up three souls. Two of whom were very familiar-looking souls. They fell to the ground unconscious and covered in stomach juices. The first and second Hokage. How the hell did you get them? And is that the third as well? Shinigami laughed at his brought. Hers outburst and the jackal began to examine the three souls. How? The Shinigami smirked and said, Orochimaru. The other two growled, Orochimaru. The fool seeking immortality. He summoned the F. I R S T and second back from the grave and had them assist him in killing the third. The third summoned myself in order to put a stop to them but only succeeded in getting these two. He then proceeded to battle Orochimaru. More until something else happened. One that interests me and will surely interest you as well. Which is? Asked the jackal. The Shinigami paused. Well as the third was F.U. filling high. S. Payment for summoning me by affirming up his soul Orochimaru was attacked and soundly defeated by the one called Uzumaki Naruto. Who is Uzumaki Naruto? And where is he? Asked the jackal. He was tempted to go and reward the human for putting the snake fool in his place. The Shinigami smiled and said, Uzumaki Naruto is the proicized one, the legendary mortal destined to bring honor and prez. Tied to the underdog of the social ladder. He is the lord of the beasts. There were gasps. Are you positive? Are you absolutely sure? Be honest Shinny. Urged the fire-headed man. Yes you idiot I am sure. I witnessed his power with my own two eyes. The beast king lives and he's already beginning to influence the humans. The two brothers looked up in thought. So it finally begins. Said the jackal. Indeed, said the shinigami. And that is why I brought these three here. The three then looked back down at the cages and saw that they were waking up. Why put such powerful spirits back in the hands of the Tenchi Lord? When we could make them so much more? Asked Tei, Shinigami with a devious smirk. His fire-headed brother smirked as well. Shinny you're a genius. The three cages groaned and woke up. The jackal looked down at them and grinned causing the first and the second to gasp. Hello again, mortals. The first spoke up first. Holy shit. I thought I'd never have to see you three again. The three brothers laughed. Well here you are again. What irony. The third got to his feet and looked back and forth between the lords of the underworld and the first and second cages of Konoha. The Shinigmi decided to get right to the point. I suggest you three get comfortable here because this is where you will be living from now on. Wait, what? Calm down Hokage you are not deemed unworthy of salvation. We merely have a new path for you to take. You have six hours to make your decision. Wait, on what? Yelled the second. The Shinigami placed his hands on his confused brother's shoulders and began to fade with them. We will let you know when we return. Until then get reacquainted with yourselves and your wits as you were in for something much greater than spending an eternity in heaven doing nothing. The Shinigami then vanished with his brothers, leaving three shocked and confused Hokages. Sasuke had a rough day. The Hokage was dead people were looking at him with fear and hatred and he never got to fight Neji. The young new demon wanted to test his abilities against Neji as soon as he saw him for two reasons. He was a powerful Hyuga and he was an angel now. The prospect of actually fighting something like an angel excited him so much. That was the perfect way to test his levels of power. He could use Neji as a rival. He was sure the Hyuga would in T mind as he also had a drive to be powerful. A demon and an angel. It was a perfect matchup. Hum but then there's that lazy ass, Shikamaru. Sasuke had seen Shikamaru during the council meeting th. At had called all of the transformed ninja together and was shocked. The Nara also seemed more active, stronger and he had even caught himself a decent looking girlfriend. Perhaps he would also enjoy a spar in the future though he wondered what an ordinary beast creature could be cap babble of. His thoughts were interrupted as he pulled into the Uchiha grounds and headed to his home. It felt good to be alone. He didn't have to worry about fangirls and dumb bigots trying to exercise the demon spirit out of him. It was ridiculous, and the stupid shrill cries of his fangirls. How could you Sasuke-kun? You turned yourself into a demon. We loved you as a human not a monster. Ugh. Ridiculous, he muttered as he opened his door, and was promptly snatched up into a bone-crushing hug by Naomi. Fi, Nally after two minutes she released him though she kept her hands on his shoulders. 
Sasuke almost found himself lost in her golden eyes but managed to keep control over himself. What are you doing here? He asked out of curiosity. She shrugged, an action that caused her perky breeths to bounce a bit. Sok fought to keep staring into her eyes though she seemed to notice and gave a sultry grin. Hum dunno. I figured since I have nowhere to go and since there's a good looking dragon demon who lives alone. In an empty clan district why not see if I can crash with him. Sasuke shrugged, he really didn't mind her staying with him. And if anybody had a problem with it they were getting a windmill shuriken up the ass. He stared into Naomi's eyes for 30 seconds and noted with a bit of a musum. NT that she had a slight blush on her pale cheeks. Letting a small smile grace his lips, he leaned forward and planted a quick kiss on her lips causing her blush to get darker. I think I just found a new hobby. He thought with a smirk as he leaned back. Sure, that was all that needed to be said. Naomi lunged forward and grabbed him in another hug. Thank you, she yelled as loud as she could. Sasuke merely patted her on the back a couple of times, still not completely used to such contact. Though he could quickly get used to this. Especially if he gets to see that cute blush again. Oh right, Sasuke-kun what do you know about the prophecy of the Beast King? Asked the Hachimot out of Nowhere. Sasuke shrugged, not much, only that he's very strong and used to be a student in the Ninja Academy years ago. I also know he's had the ability to control animals since day one. Naomi nodded and gave a slightly seductive smile. Sit down Sasuke-kun, because I thinks it's time I brought you up to speed. I will explain to you numerous things such as why that. Hayuga has angel powers and why the Nara and his girl are part panther now. Sasuke sat down and Naomi sat on his lap. She giggled at his sudden stiffness. You can relax Sasuke-kun I want bite. Unless you want me to. Sasuke blushed and looked away. Just tell me more about Naruto. Naomi smiled. Sakura entered her clan compound. Dian gave smiles to all of her family members as she headed towards her home. The clan had no problem with her sand. In fact they relished in the fact that their first ninja had brought such a gift to the clan. Though no one really, wanted to pursue fusing their second personalities with an element of nature. For now, she understood though, they were civilian doctors and scientists. In their minds, there were too many medical risks to trying such a thing. She knew they would eventually crack though and try it out. She thought of Gara. would he appreciate his technique getting passed along like that? Probably not but he wouldn't raise a huge stink over it either. The Haruno clan is like Sakura and therefore like him. He'd probably feel less alone if there were more like him. She smiled a bit, thinking about the Suna Shinobi always made her smile. She still couldn't believe he had taken the time out of his busy schedule to help her in her time of need. She felt like she owed him everything. Plus it helped that he was good looking. She waved hello to her mother as she headed to her room. The day was tiring, she needed sleep, but as she opened her door and stepped into her room she was slammed into the wall by a wave of sand not belonging her her agara. H hey, wah the hell, the sand completely encased her up to her neck and pinned her to the wall while a dome formed around he. Our hourglass and a pair of glowing star pupil eyes appeared in the shadow of the far corner. Hello there little mortal bitch, I'm glad you finally deceived to bring your sorry ass home. I've been fall, owing you and your little boyfriend for a while now and I gotta say. I'm pissed, ya wanna know why bitch. Sakura glared, I don't even know you. The woman shot forward and punched her hard in the face. Don't fuck with me bitch, I know for a fact that you know who I am. Sakura spit out a bit of blood and she could feel her second personality raging inside of her head. God fucking damn it let me out bitch, I'm gone rip you limb from limb. Coward. I have no idea who you are, she shouted, only to receive another punch. Wrong answer bitch, Sakura, Sakura what's going on, Sakura, the s, out of her mother pounding frantically on the door she was currently pressed up against made her eyes widen. Her clan was getting alerted to all of the commotion. The woman sneered and leaned in so see, lose to Sakura that their lips were actually brushing against each other. Think about it. Who is the only other person besides your boyfriend that can control sand? Think long and hard bitch cause I won't accept another incorrect answer. Sakura only needed about two seconds after that to figure it out and when she did she gasped. Holy shit, you're the Aikibi. 
Shukaku. The woman smiled a satisfy. C smile and gave Sakura a mind blowing kiss. Her tongue jammed past her lips and swiveled all over her mouth like an eel, completely dominating and controlling. The kiss lasted a whole minute before. The Aikibi backed up and gave Sakura a slap across the face. You tell your boyfriend that you and him are both on my shit list. Watch your back, bitch, cause I'm coming for ya both. Shukaku then teleported away in a violent swirl of sand, taking all of her sand with it and leaving a stunned and frightened Sakura collapsed on her knees with her pink sand swirling around her angrily. Sakura's moth, R burst in and screamed when she saw her daughter. Sakura what happened to you? All Sakura could do was think, what the hell? I'm dead, I'm so dead, the Shukaku wants to kill me. I gotta get to Garakun. She never saw the demon lord standing outside of the window with a slightly soft expression on her face. Hurry the fuck up bitch and go to him. I need you both with each other when you face me. Naruto yawned as he leaned back to fall asleep against the tigress. The last couple of days were just too much. He was so tired. All he wanted to do was go to sleep. He wondered why it was him that had to go through so much drama. Oh well, I was probably because of his status as beast king. Speaking of which, he hasn't seen Soom, Hana, Shikamaru or Kin since before the invasion. He hoped they were alright. He knows the dangers battle could bring, what with watching how ants and wolves battle it out. He yawned again and stretched his muscles one last time before closing his eyes. Only to snap them open an instant later as an earthquake suddenly shook the land. Insidiently he and the animals leapt to their feet. Master Naruto what's going on? I not know. The earthquake continued on, for another 30 seconds as a huge gate rose up out of the ground, destroying his hut and marring his beautiful valley with scarred earth. What this? He screamed out of anger as the gate stopped rising and the earthquake stopped. The gate shuddered and started to open causing Naruto to tense up. Hide, he instructed the animals. He wasn't about to risk them having to fight something huge and powerful. The tigress refused to move. She stood rigid by his side. He sighed but didn't say anything. Finally the gate was fully open and Naruto's fire began to come forth as a huge black furred covered clawed hand grasped the doorway. Naruto held back a gasp as three monstrous forms stepped out. The first looked like a walking jackal 13 feet tall and vicious looking as hell. He wore a th. Ik Egyptian golden hanging chest plate that was decorated with an emerald scarab beetle. His upper arms had golden bands and so did his forearms. He wore a beautiful loincloth made of turquillos, gold, and silk and he wore a pharaoh-style headgear and a glowing scythe with a pure gold blade. The scythe was rather plain looking, only having the cane-like curve of a pharaoh's staff at the end and being s. Triped gold and blue all the way up the pole. He looked down at Naruto with gold eyes and his tall pointy ears faced forward. Naruto knew right away that this creature was out of his control. He was not a beast. The second looked more human. Though he had blue skin and was big as well, about eight feet tall and enshrouded in a robe that looked like living shadows and black flames. He had a rather feminine face but the lower half of it was covered in a metal mask and his he had a scar going from his upper right forehead down to somewhere on his lower left side of his jaw. He was a very well-built man. Naruto could tell that much and he had blue fire for hair and a massive battle axe stabbed to his back and red eyes. The last one had pearl skin and horns. He was a spectral being hovering above. E the ground like a powerful ghost and staring down at Naruto with black and yellow eyes that projected death. His mouth seemed to be frozen in a twisted grin with a dagger clenched in pointed teeth. And his clawed hands looked like they were itching to grab something. He wore a white robe and thick brown prayer beads on his right arm and his hair was long and wild. Naruto could only stare. What were these guys? Who were they? The jackal as if reading his mind spoke up. Hello young lord of the common beast. What an honor it is to finally meet you. Who you? He asked. The jackal laughed. Ha. Ha even your speech is primitive and beast-like. I like it. As for who we are. Allow me to introduce us to you. I am Anubis the one with the fire hair as Hades and I believe you've already met Shinigami. No. Said the beast king. Oh well. No matter. We are the rulers of hell. The Watchers of the Dead. Beast King, we are the lords of the underworld. Naruto's eyes widened. Under the evening sun things will happen. 
Beasts are not creatures that are prone to an emotion like shock. Well, maybe some of the weaker species such as rodents are small birds but even they only suffer from shock when a predator suddenly attacks. The larger and much stronger beasts virtually know no shock. There is almost nothing that can catch them off guard due to their keen senses and even when something does mana. GE to sneak up on them all that triggers is either an attack or a confused growl or call. It would take something very powerful or very unique and intimidating to shock a top predator. So naturally when Anubis, Hades and Shinigami announced their status to Naruto, every beast within the varying hearing ranges became shocked. This included Naruto. The blonde boy stared like a deer caught in headlig. HTS for three minutes before he finally found his voice again. Lords of Underworld, he had asked. His eyes were trained fully on the three massive beings before him as if he didn't really want to let any of them out of his sight. Anubis noticed this and said nothing. The Beast King was paranoid. And he very well should be. He wouldn't be a beast if he wasn't without a lot of caution. The Jackal nodded to himself after that. Thought passed through his mind and Hades gave a chuckle as he began to answer Naruto's question. That's right kid, we're the kings of the dead. I, Hades, am responsive, left for maintaining the flow of souls coming in from the living world. My brother Shinigami is the one who comes to the living world to collect them and finally, Anubis governs the souls waiting to be judged. Our combined job is to determine where the souls will end up in the end depending on their actions while alive. Naruto didn't say anything at first but a slight nudge from the tigress at his legs snapped him out of it. Naruto could feel the power flowing from the three of them. It was massive and so very different from the type of energy he was used to. The aura Anubis, Hades and Shinigam, irradiated didn't feel at all like the wild free and warm aura he and the beasts exhibited. No. Their aura felt cold, lifeless and depressing. All of the positive energy in the area was sapped away in. D the surrounding area seemed to drop a few degrees in temperature. They really were death incarnate. Naruto knew it and so did the rest of the animals in the forest that stood hidden just out of sight. T and in the underbrush of the forest around the clearing, he took his time to familiarize himself with the three of them. He never knew when they might appear again and he wasn't sure what they wanted yet either. Come to think of it, what do you want? He asked, suddenly very tense, all sense of fear and shock gone in an instant as the beast prophecy suddenly blared to life in his mind. It seemed, Ed this was the question the three had been waiting for as all three chuckled and focused their full attention on the young king of beasts. Ah, now we're getting somewhere, said Hades as he gave his ink black robes a casual flip. Indeed we are, said Shinigami as his grin grew more sadistic. Anubis bent down to get a better look at Naruto, his huge hand reaching out towards Naruto's head. The blonde immediately jumped back and the tigress gave a slight growl. Anubis smiled. It was a look that would instill terror in any other being. Ha <laughs> ha, cautious, jumpy, typical of any beast. It's a, an admirable if yet, primitive characteristic. Naruto's eyes narrowed slightly. However we didn't come here to talk about your mannerisms young beast king. We are merely here on a visit from our own realm. It turns out my brother here has witnessed your blossoming power and he was quite impressed. We came to see for ourselves what type of person you were. And, Naruto wasn't sure he believed Anubis. There was something about the way he worded that that had him on edge. Shinigami spoke up instead of Anubis. And we came to gouge your power beast king. Naruto wasn't an idiot. As soon as T. Ho's words left his mouth he knew what was going on. He gave a sigh and shook his head. Why? He asked. At this Anubis chuckled and raised his left hand. A sickly black purple flame exploded from high's body and spread all over the forest like a sludge, freezing Naruto in place with shock as a new feeling of dread rose up within him. He could only watch in shock. When the ground began to split apart, all over and the rotting corpses of hundreds of dead beasts and some humans emerged from the ground, flooding the air with the stench of death and decay, their hollowed eye sockets glowing red or yellow. Low in the spectral form of their souls flashing briefly around them before seeping into their partially resurrected bodies. Instantly the living beasts were by Naruto's side ready to fight and defend their home and master. Anubis chuckled again, it was a sound that was quickly getting on Naruto's nerves because we want to see if you're worthy of the title, Lord. Then the zombies and the three death lords attacked. 
She groaned and rubbed her temples and her eyes opened pee slowly. What the fuck happened? She asked herself slowly, he mind still foggy and her vision clouded. So you're finally awake huh? I have to say it's surprising at the least. Those burns you suffered from woulda killed a normal person. She glared and turned her head to the source of the voice. Her eyes cleared re, ght up with the desire to see the person she was about to verbally insult. Only to widen when she saw the four pigtailed Suna bitch chained to the wall next to her. It was then that she noticed that s. He too was chained up and her burns were healed. What the fuck happened? She asked. The Suna girl chuckled. You mean you don't remember? The invasion failed when the Beast King came out and unleashed animals on everyone. She closed her eyes in thought as she tried to remember. Then she gasped as it all came back to her. One minute she was helping sustain the barrier containing Orochimaru-sama, and the old fucker Hokage then the next, Jorubo and she were trying in a desperate attempt to stay alive as a blonde nearly naked boy blasted everything with fire. She had never felt anything so powerful in her. Life and thinking about it now made her breath hitch in her throat. H holy shit, the Suna girl chuckled, yeah, that was my reaction too but it wasn't nearly as surprising as Garadesi. Dingta abandoned the mission to attack Konoha because of some pink-haired Kunoichi with a split personality. The girl snapped out of her thoughts and turned to the Suna. Kunoichi, what's your story then? How do you get captured if you weren't even fighting? The Suna girl blushed a bit and looked down in shame. My brothers and I were cut off by three Konoha shinobi. The pink-haired girl went to confront Gara. Konkuro fought the bug user. I was forced to fight one of the Beast King's subordinates. His name was Shikamaru, the panther boy, she raised an eyebrow at her fellow prisoner. That's not all you're telling me. There's more huh? The Suna girl's blush got deeper. He, he said something to me that stunned me and allowed him to ensnare me in his shadows. That was it then. That was Al. L it took for Tuyuya to burst into hysterical laughter. Oh my fucking god. Ha 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 ha. Are you telling me he said something like, I wanna fuck your brains out, or something. And. You became too shocked to do anything. Ha 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 I think I like this Shikamaru person. That's classic. Tamari gasped and began to glow red. He didn't say that. But. Oh god I'm blushing. Tiyuya continued to laugh even harder. Shut up bitch it's not funny. Outside of their cell the two Anbu standing guard sweat dropped. Girls are having way too much fun in there. Said Dove. Tiger nodded but he was smiling under his mask. Back inside Tiyuya had calmed down and was looking at the ceiling. So what now? She asked. Tamari shrugged. They'll probably let. Konkuro and I go. You and your friend though I wouldn't be so sure about. Tiyuya scoffed. Whatever. I ain't scared. But Tamari saw Tiyuya's eyes. They were full of uncertainty and fear. There was no telling what Konoha would do to her. She was a prisoner of war after all. They could do anything to her. Tamari sighed but said nothing. She knew what happened to prisoners and she felt lucky that she had decided to abandon her mission with Gara. I do have to wonder what kind of fucking crazy strong person you have to be to be able to make Orochimaru-sama look like a jackass, muttered to Yuya after a minute. Tamari couldn't help but grin. I don't know, I thought the same thing when he made Gara look like a jackass as well. To Yuya merely huffed. Shikamaru gave his tail an impatient flip as he and Kin were thoroughly examined by his mother, father and several other clan members from head to toe. He was poked, prodded, patted on the head, rubbed on the ears and harassed by children and still they didn't seem satisfied. Sigh are we done yet? This troublesome exam has no point. I already told you I'm fine, he said for the tenth time that day. Kin giggled as she gave a six-year-old girl a pat on the head. Shikaku had his fingers on his chin in thought. This is remarkable, he began as he examined his son's ears. Shikamaru sighed again. The entire Nara clan became fascinated in Shikamaru and Kin as soon as they had walked into the compound. Yoshino was still upset that Shikamaru had subjected himself to such a change but she grew to accept it very easily. Shikamaru was still her son no matter what changes he went through. T. Huff she did wish he hadn't opted for such a drastic change. From the moment, Shikamaru returned home he was subjected to numerous physical examinations to determine the depth of his changes. They w -er. E shocked to find that Shikamaru was now literally part panther. Right down to the DNA. 
In fact Shikamaru now had more panther in him than he did human. Kin was the opposite. She had more human in her. All of the Nara was interested in Naruto now. If he could literally turn humans into beasts, what else could he do? Though not all of it was positive. Shikamaru and Kin were banned from going anywhere near the deer now. Not by the clan, but by the deer themselves. Although they knew of the beast king they were still deer. And predators like panthers, even partial panthers that lived with the claw, and that cared for them could not be trusted when the beast king was not around. Hell they couldn't even be trusted when he was around unless the beast king needed the animals to fight for him as one race. Until then it was the circle of life and Shikamaru did express his liking for raw meat once as one of the tests given by the Nara clan. Shikamaru of course was a bit saddened by this but he unders. Tuned perfectly and didn't press the issue. So then, began Shikaku with narrowed eyes at Kin who flinched and grabbed Shikamaru's arm. The clan head was obviously done examining Shikamaru as were the others. When are you going to give the clan a litter of panther cubs? He finished with a mischievous smile. Kin turned so red a tomato would look pale in comparison to her face. And Shikamaru's answer only made it worse. Whenever she wants to or goes into heat, he had said with that same mischievous smile as his father. Yoshino and two clan elders gasped. Shikamaru sounded completely serious. Kin screamed and tried to bury her face in his own shirt. Of course son, said Shikaku as he turned to head out. Just make sure to keep it down if and when you decide to, mate. That was all Kin could take before she fainted. Shikamaru smiled and picked her up bridal style. Troublesome woman, he muttered as he carried her to his room. He wasn't, completely serious with his father. He still h. Add a couple of things to do before he started trying to make children. Yoshino and the elders were the only ones left in the main living room. You know, began an old woman. That panther DNA could be considered a new bloodline limit. An old man grinned. I wonder if he'd be willing to take more than one mate. Yoshino glared. He will do no such thing. The two elder huffed and said, it's his choice. Besides, with him being part animal it will most likely awaken instincts to take more than one mate anyway. To start a pack if you will. Yoshio's glare intensified. Panthers do not travel in packs. Ah. But humans do. Combine the two and. Yoshino gasped. He wouldn't, but she wasn't so sure. Little did she know as that is exactly what Shikamaru planned to do. He had placed Kin in bed. And tucked her in before stepping into the shadows and disappearing. He had a wind mistress's heart to win. He couldn't help but grin as he slid through the darkness towards the Anbu prison cells. I'm coming desert flower. He sometimes wondered why he was so accepting of this bold new attitude of his but shrugged it off. Without it Tamari would most likely get stuck with some fool who wouldn't. Appreciate her or help her get any stronger because he didn't want his ego to take any blows. And Shikamaru would be too lazy to approach her. No matter how attractive she was. So he shrugged off his questions and accepted his new personality as easily as he accepted Naruto as his lord. There was no going back anyway. Sakura gave her mother a hug and a kiss with tears in her eyes as she finished. Explaining to her and the Haruno clan where she was going. I promise I'll come back real soon. Just. Please don't tell anyone I ran away. I just need to take care of something in sooner real quick then I'll come right back. Her mother nodded and tightened her hold on her daughter. She didn't like anything about this situation but accepted it. Sakura was her own woman now and if this Gara was so important to her then. Who was she to get in the way of that? Beside the Haruno clan owed Gara a great deal for making their first ninja and their heirs so strong in such a short amount of time. Sakura was going to bring a long-awaited amount of glory to the Haruno clan. That much they were sure of. They were sure of it the day she was brave enough to enter the ninja academy despite the fact that she had next to no chakra. Just like the rest of the clan. They could build it up like any other with training of course but they never tried. They were looked down upon by ninjas and called weak all of the time. And for a clan with pink haired males and split personality disorders in it that was never a good thing. So they stayed away from the shinobi life for years, until Sakura turned 5 years old. So the clan said nothing to try and stop Sakura from going to Suna for a while. It didn't matter to them what the rest of the village would think. Sakura was the only one brave or strong enough to join the ranks of the ninja. 
They would do anything for her. Their gratitude was far too great. Go on then, said her mother with a tear smile. Make us proud. Sakura nodded and strapped her hourglass to her back. The pink sand in it was strangely still. The second personality was probably somber at the moment as well. As Sakura turned and headed out of the door, her mother whispered, You've already made this entire clan proud. Sakura. Then she headed back to her room. Sakura moved swiftly and silently through the growing shadows cast from buildings by the evening sun. It was getting late in the day. She was a bit surprised actually. A mere two hours ago the Aikibi was slapping and making out with her while threatening her and Gara at the same time. How strange that this much time has passed already. She must have been more caught up with her clan than she thought. She sighed as the Hokage Tower came into view. Should head to the council and ask for a visit to Suna. No, not, with the way everything is at the moment. The council would not only flat out refuse but they would also become suspicious of her, probably even going so far as to accuse her of being a Suna spy. And, with her sand abilities that wouldn't help her case either. She gave the tower one last look before she continued on. I hope they find a new Hokage soon, she thought as she floated over the wall using her sand and into the forest. No one saw her. The Sanin named Jiraiya stood before the council with a blank face. You want me to take the mantle of Hokage E.H.? He asked after a few seconds of complete silence. At the nod from Hamura Jiraiya shook his head. Sorry, but I cannot take you up on that offer. The council didn't take his answer well at all, what? Way the hell not. Jiraiya you have to, I don't have to do anything. Besides, I'm not the right guy for. Hokage. I can think of two others that are more suited than me. Kaharu raised her eyebrow. Explain, she said. Jiraiya sighed. These old fools were way too sure of themselves. To speak to a Sanin with such disrespect is not a way to garner his favor. However he did speak. Well for one there's my teammate Tsunade. She has much better leadership qualities than I. But she's been missing for years Toad Boy. Yelled one of the council members. Jiraiya glared and froze the old man with killing intent. Please don't ye, LL at me when I'm only answering your questions. Hamura looked ready to say something but was stopped by Kaharu. My apologies Jiraiya, but some of us are still tense from what happened two days ago. And some of us have gotten used to power far too much. It's probably what led to the third's demise. We were too busy fighting with him instead of working together like we should have been doing. J. Araya saw the pain in Kaharu's eyes and could tell instantly that she was the most affected by Serutobi's death out of all of them. It was enlightening. Jiraiya gave the woman a smile and said, It's fine. I should probably show a bit more respect as well. Then he switched subjects. Anyway as I was saying, it's either Tsunade or that Beast King kid. I've never seen strengths or leadership skill like the ones he has. There were a couple of gasps and Hamura spoke up, surprising the council. That is true, without that young man this village wouldn't even be here. We owe him a great deal. How? Veer we cannot have him as a Hokage for two reasons. What reasons are those? Hamura sighed and said, having the Beast King as our Hokage. Would not be advantageous to anyone but him. I don't know if why. Oh you know this Jiraiya but that boy is not human. He has the ability to transform people into beasts and steal their loyalty from us. Should he ever gain the title of Hokage he would have way too easy of an access to the people. We cannot let that happen. Or at least not as fast as it. Would should he become Hokage. The Beast King is exactly what his title says, a beast. An animal. He cares little for humans. The species that hunts his kind for sport and constantly destroys his kind's homes so we can build our own. On top of that he is used to running the show completely and I know that some of you. S would be in greater conflict with him than we were with the third. Jiraiya hadn't thought of it like that. I see. So Tsunade it is then. Give me a month and I'll have her back here, okay. Kaharu nodded and Jiraiya shunshined out. Now then, began Kaharu as she turned to the other members of the council. We have much to discuss. Some of them didn't really want to talk. Tamari and Tuyuya sat in silence waiting for the Anbu of Konoha to come in and administer their punishment. Neither girl knew what exactly was in store for them nor although it had been a couple of days since the invasion. Tamari wasn't sure she was getting out anytime soon. 
She knew Konoha was in the midst of repairs and recovery and she knew they would be rather bitter towards Suna for breaking their alliance and teaming up with the traitorous Sanin Orochimaru. Even if the circumstances had been revealed by the panther boy and his sound girl turned traitor to the snake man. She was fairly confident that Konoha would release her and Konkuro. And she was positive Gara was already gone. There was nothing in the village that could hold her sand using brother for long. She did feel a little bad for Tuyuya though. She knew for a fact that Konoha was about to show no kind of mercy towards her and the other Odo shinobi that had been recovered. After all who would spare a servant of Orochimaru after they sapped of every ounce of information she possessed, she sighed and spared the other girl a glance. Tuyuya's eyes were shadowed by her pink, red hair. Her head was bowed to the floor and her body was motionless. She had long since stopped trying to release herself from the chains that held her arms up above her head. Not even that weird seal on her neck had helped her. She would have continued to exam into Yuya if said girl hadn't suddenly looked up at her with glaring eyes. You mind bitch, your staring is making me very fucking uncomfortable. Tamari blushed slightly in embarrassment and said, sorry. Tuyuya huffed again and went back to looking back at the floor. Only to yelp slightly when something suddenly rose up in front of her. Whoa what the fuck, she yelled as the mass of darkness began to take shape. Tamari herself could only stare with wide eyes as the blackness popped like a balloon, leaving behind the crouching form of Shikamaru. Hello there dessert flower, he said to Tamari. He was facing away from Tuyuya. It's good to see you again even if it was a troublesome situation in which we saw each other the first time. Her stood up and strode confidently to Tamari, his F. Her cape swishing in the stagnant silence. The Suna Kunoichi said nothing as. Shikamaru easily slashed through the chains holding her and picked her up bridal style. But I must admit this time it's a bit troublesome as well. He gave a feral smile, exposing his fangs. The look sent shivers down her spine and when she found her voice it was a stuttering mess. W what a or why you dd doing? P put m me down. Shikamaru did no such thing. Instead he merely looked her up and down. This caused Tamari to turn crimson. Haven't they been feeding you in here? Troublesome Anbu. You'd think they'd at least. Saint have the decency to keep a pretty woman fed when she doesn't even belong in here. Tamari couldn't take it anymore. She gave a yell and struggled out of Shikamaru's arms, steam literally coming out of her ears and her blush glowing like an ember. W what's wrong with you? A second later a tendril of shadow was over her mouth. Shish, do you want this place flooded with Anbu? Keep it down will you? Tamari jerked free of his shadow and glared. No, you stay away from me. Shikamaru sighed. He placed his fingers on his chin and looked up in thought. Hem perhaps I've gone about this the wrong way. How do you win the heart of a beautiful woman you barely know? Shish shut up. Shikamaru was about to respond when there was a loud snort from behind. He whirled around and was surprised to see another girl in the cell. She had long red, pink hair and harsh but pretty brown eyes. She was looking at Shikamaru with slight interest and mirth. But that looked quickly transformed into one of anger. Friend of yours? He asked. Tamari glared. The Nara shrugged that turned back to Tuyuya. He could smell that there was something off about her. But he could also see that she was very beautiful. Even beneath that hard vulgar exterior. He wondered who she was and why she was in here with the desert flower. Was she Asuna Kunoichi? Tuyuya's face lit up with the very slightest of blushes as she glared again at Shikamaru. Yo cat boy keep your perverted fucking eyes off me. Shikamaru snapped out of it and gave a smile. I apologize. I didn't expect to find another pretty woman in here with the desert flower. I couldn't help but look at you too. Behind him, Tamari was suddenly angry. H hey, I thought I was the one you were interested in. Then she gasped and covered her mouth. Shikamaru chuckled and turned to Tamari again. Shadows already dancing all over the cell. Oh, but I am. Why do you think I'm doing all of this? Or why I chased you down in the first place? Tamari looked down trying to hide her blush. Damn it, she screamed in her mind. Get yourself under control. Shikamaru raised his hand and instantly the shadows rushed at Tuyuya. Before she could give a startled and slightly fearful yell, her chains had been reduced to metal scraps and the seal on her neck contained. He had discovered where the weird feeling was coming from and decided he might be able to get her some help. 
Chiyuya stumbled right into Shikamaru who held her gently until she recovered from her daze. When she did she blushed again and swung at him. Hands off pervert. The Nara chuckled as he easily dodged her attack. Now is that any way to treat the man who's saving you? He asked. Chiyuya stopped. Saving. Why the fuck would you save me? I'm a fucking sound nin. At this, Shikamaru's eyes widened for a fraction of a second before he shrugged. So, I'm a panther serving Naruto-sama and my interest is in staring a pack. Unbelievably enough, I no longer completely follow Konoha. I-W-I, L-L do what I must in order to strengthen beast kind. He neglected to mention his reasons why, but he was sure they'd know soon enough. Now both of you grab a hold of me. There are two people I want you to meet. Who? Asked a now intrigued Tamari as she linked an arm with Shikamaru's. Chiyuya had grabbed his other hand. Shikamaru smiled as the shadows engulfed them and began to swallow them into the ground. You'll know soon enough. I just hope this doesn't become too troublesome. Then all three of them were gone, leaving behind no trace at all that there had been anyone in the cell. Soon, Hana, Kiba, a middle-aged Inazuka man named Kuro and his five-year-old daughter named Nami along with the seven dogs that made up their partners were all heading in a relaxed pace to the forest of death to join Naruto permanently. Sum and Hana couldn't help but feel both angry and sad at the fact that only three human members of the Inazuka clan were willing to come with them to Naruto. They knew that the Inazuka clan was getting ready to tear itself apart. The dogs would abandon their partners if they didn't wise up and the ones that absolutely refused to obey their instincts would end up fighting with the ones that didn't. Hell it was nearly a huge fight when Hana and Soom returned to their clan compound to try and get more to join them. Kuro and Kiba were the only sensible ones em. Ong them all and Nami daughter followed her father wherever and she thought it would be very cool to become part doggy for real. The little girl was a cute one. So, began Kuro. He wasn't really you, said to speaking with the clan leader or any of the heirs. Not that they thought him lower or anything. He was just too busy doing his own thing. The Inazuka clan is a pretty big one after all. What's Naruto like? He asked. He couldn't really remember if he had asked that question already. But he was anxious and nervous as well. But when Hana and Soom both gave wistful sighs he immediately regretted his question. He's perfect. They both breathed out with half-lidded smiles. Kiba wrinkled his nose and moved away from them. The pheromones were getting a bit too thick around them. Kuro shook his head. Forget I asked he said. Kuro didn't miss the looks they were getting as they headed down to the forest of death. Many had looks of accusation in their eyes as they viewed the tales of Hana and Soom with distaste. It annoyed him but he held his tongue. They reached the forest of death in ten minutes and just stared at it for a second. It's Creepy. I remember my Chunin exams in this place. Said Kuro while Nami was bouncing up and down excitably. Kiba nodded in agreement. This place was creepy especially for him and his generation since they had to do it while looking out for the Beast King at the time. Soom and Hana said nothing. They just gave a shrug and turned towards the rest of the group. As one they nodded and prepared to leap over the fence. But they were halted. Bye. A sudden rush of power so great and terrifying it froze them in place. It exploded out of the forest of death and washed over the entire village in an instant. Never had anyone felt such a terrifying power. It felt like death itself. All activity in Konoha came to a stop and numerous people fainted right then and there. Ninjas, civilians, animals. None were spared from this aura. Not even the plants. W what is that? yelled Kiba after he finally got his bearings back together. There was another wave of the death aura and it sent shivers down their spines. Ninjas were already swarming to the forest of death. In the council room everyone became silent in shock and fear. What? Is this terrible aura? At the Uchiha compound Sasuke snapped awake in an instant and gasped. Naomi was already ill, ooking towards the forest of death with a blank expression. It started, she said. The lords are beginning to show themselves, to Naruto. A team guy's training ground, Neji's own aura flared in. An attempt to stave off his own fear but it was failing. What is this terrible feeling? He asked himself. Is this, a demon? Similar questions were asked all over the village of Konoha. And only a, select few knew what exactly was going on. Naruto was in a fight with something not from this realm. Death God's Test.
Demon Lord's Desire. Bud W-H-O-O-O-O-S-S-S-S-S-H-H-H-H-H-H. Like a wave, it pulsed through the village, freezing everything in fear all over again just as they were beginning to recover from the last one. Bud W-H-O-O-O-O-S-S-S-S-H-H-H-H-H-H. Like a heartbeat they come, steadily, one after another in an abnormal but systematic pattern. Bud W-H-O-O-O-O-S-S-S-S-H-H-H-H-H-H. The group could only look on in uncertainty as another wave pulsed through the village, wind and light debris being kicked up with them and eyes being force. D to be shielded and bodies struggling with all their might to overcome the fear of this aura. The ninja of Kanahagakur no Sato had rushed to the forest of death at the first pulse, they arrived at T. He fence surrounding the forest at the second one, and they became paralyzed in terror as they tried to leap over in. Into the forest as a third one gushed forth from the forest, three times as powerful as the first two. It actually killed six people and all of the smaller plants in the area. Now, 31 pulses into it, the entire ninja populace of Kanahagakur stood rigid, surrounding the bow, RDER of the forest of death but unable to move any closer. Many didn't. No couldn't even begin to comprehend what they were feeling. What, as this, muttered a shaking Kiba as yet another shockwave reverberated from the forest. He couldn't keep the fear from his voice. Hannah, Sum and Kuro could only shake their heads. They didn't know either. Suddenly everything got quiet. The shockwave stopped and everything became still. The ninja of the village gazed on, intent on the forest. Their attention couldn't be taken away. What was going on? They couldn't get it. Then, it happened. A terrifying, undead howl tore from the forest a second before a swarm of walking corpses burst from the forest and slammed into the fence in a terrifying display of fury and bloodlust. Everyone leapt back in horror. They were dead. They were freaking dead bodies. The zombies eyed the villagers with glowing blank voids for eyes as they seemed to stare. Then living beasts burst from the forests and descended upon the zombies. They watched on in morbid fascination as a battle took place before them. Then the shock waves began again, each one coming with more intensity and at a greater pace. Howls erupted from the forest, and the cries of zombies followed soon after. The entire forest became a huge battle unseen by the humans but very well heard. And during all of this they came to the conclusion that Naruto was fighting something in there. But what? Suddenly there was a howl not unlike the one Naruto used in the Invasion and an orange streak shot out of the forest and into the sky. Hana and Soom Su, Eldent help but sigh in relief when they saw. Naruto, wings spread and flame gauntlet at the ready. At least he was safe. Then something considerably bigger shot out after and slammed right into him. Th. Air was a loud howl and a clang even louder. But whhhhhhhhhhhhhhhhhhhhhhhhhhhhhhhhhhhhhhhhhhhhhhhhhhhhhhhhhhhhhhhhhhhhhhhhhhhhhhhhhhhhhhhhhhhhhhhhhhhh
What entity do you think governs the realm of death? Quote, Kuro gasped and so did the other ninja. We have to help him, shouted a random ninja. He was all too familiar with what the Beast King had done for Konoha not even three days ago. Other ninja were beginning to shake themselves out of their fear in preparations in going in to aid him but Kuromaru's voice halted them all. Unless you want to either join the ranks of the beast or become one of the dead you will stay here. This is between those two realms. The ninja hesitated but eventually backed off. And all they could do was listen as the sounds of bat. TLE between the beasts and the dead continued to assault their ears. The Shinigami dodged an overhead slash from Naruto's claws and laughed loudly as Anubis planted his foot in the Beast King's abdomen. Ha 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 ha. Good. You've gone beyond what I expected of you beast. Naruto snarled and charged again, moving at speeds only a few could follow. He raised his gauntleted arm and brug. HT his claws down upon the Shinigami's head. His strike was interrupted by Hades's axe. A shockwave tore outwards throwing the groups of beasts and zombies away like toys but Naruto paid no mind. He, quickly leapt straight up just as Anubis's scythe arched through the air right where his middle had been. Naruto tried again, growing a huge scorpion's tail and attempting to impale the Egyptian jackal through the stomach with it. It worked, only for the Lord of Death to burst into scarab beetles that quickly spread out and attacked Naruto's beasts in a sea of meat-eating. Ferocity, the agonized C.R. I.E.s of his subordinates pounded away at his ears and his heart and he dared not look to see just how the beetles were killing the beasts. His rage grew though and fire surged around him, stronger than before in bright yellow. With a roar he lunged at Hades. The fire-haired lord smirked and slapped him away with the flat of his axe. You're too predictable boy, just like a wild animal. Ha, huh, you're all instinct and no brains. You beasts are pathetic. Naruto roared again and lunged again this time at the Shinigami. The Death Lord grinned and prepared his dagger. But then Naruto suddenly sprout, ed the wings of a house fly and shot to the left in an instant. Anubis was too surprised to block the vicious flaming claws as they danced across his chest. However he did recover enough to parry the kick in the scorpion tail and throw Naruto away. The Beast King glared as he hovered, his face stone but his eyes dancing with a Smug satisfaction his wings a blur as they kept him suspended above the ground. He was breathing heavily and Anubis was looking a bit surprised that Naruto had managed to score a hit on him. This is how Hana and Soom found them and they couldn't help but gasp. They had heard stories of the Shinigami, about his insane amount of power and how he took the souls of those that made pacts with him. However to rush into the clearing and to see their lord glaring at Nato. Nay but three different Shinigami made their hearts skip a beat. Naruto-sama, yelled Hana as she rushed over to him. She was halted when a huge axe planted itself in the ground in front of her. Ah 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 little beast. Your master is ours now. You have no place here, said Hades with a smirk. Hana could only stare up in shock at the lord. What else could she do? This was a lord, a Shinigami, god of death and decay. She was but an ant in his presence. Soom didn't think that at all. She rushed forward and jumped over the axe. All rational thought had left her mind as soon as the words, your master is ours now, came out of Hades's mouth. She shot right at Hades, her eyes shining with primal fury as she began to spin. You're not taking him anywhere. Gatsuga, she became a spinning tornado of deadly claws and painful wind. Hades actually widened his eyes in surprise as she slammed into his chest with all her might making him skid across the ground for two feet. Then he smirked a, ND backhanded her with a purple or a covered hand, sending her crashing into a large tree. She slumped to the ground in a daze. Hum animals should learn their place in this existence, he said as he, turned away from Soom's nearly unconscious form. He then ducked under three more spinning tornadoes and slapped them all with a wave of death aura, sending Hannah's dogs into the trees and rendering them dazed or unconscious. Ha! is that you got. Hannah snapped out of it and launched several kanai at the Lord of Death while he wasn't looking. The weapons would have impacted his skull if not for Anubis blocking the weapons with his scythe. Hannah barely had time to gasp before a large paw-like foot slammed into her abdomen, forcing the air from her lung in an instant and causing her to slump to the ground in muted agony. You would be wise to stay out of this girl, he said, emotionless. It was from here that everything began to change. 
Naruto snarled and charged shot forward and the fight began anew. You not hurt pack mates anymore. He shouted. He was tired. Tired of these three lords. Tired of fighting. Tired of having to listen to his fellow beasts being killed by things that had already died. It was a mockery of his kind, and seeing Soom hit like that made him especially mad. She and Hannah were the first two humans he had. Included into the ranks of beasts. They were the first two females he had taken as his own. And even though he hadn't mated with them yet he still viewed them as his. And no one hurt his females. So he attacked all three death lords with greater ferocity, greater power and greater passion. Oh, and what are you going to do to stop us beast? You have no power. You're weak and driven purely by instinct and primal urges. Hades grabbed the handle of his axe and yanked the weapon out of the ground. Purple aura was already beginning to swirl around him. The Shinigami and Anubis each prepared their own weapons but didn't say anything. But Naruto could see the looks in their eyes. Dismissing, smug, arrogant, the eyes of someone that looked down upon others. They were the eyes of lords that did not acknowledge him as one of them, as a fellow lord. And he quickly found, that he couldn't stand that look. Don't, he began, his voice barely a whisper, all three death lords raised eyebrows as an orange aura began to outline his body. Don't what, huh, speak louder beast, mocked Hades, Naruto's throat released a growl as he hunched over, don't, under, est, mate me. His incompletion of the word nearly made Hades laugh again but Anubis's serious face stopped him. Naruto didn't notice though, primal rage surfaced once again through his brain, mixed with his intelligence as well. He could feel his body transforming into something he had never transformed into before. Oh. Finally getting serious are we? About time. Naruto snarled and let out yet another roar. But this one shook the very forests. Outside the village froze in awe and fey. AR is Naruto's roar and the animals began to go nuts. Excited calls of all kinds erupted all over Konoha. Then they felt it. Naruto's aura was back, stronger, wilder, and more intense. And it was growing. What? Is this? muttered a positively odd Sasuke as the aura washed over him. Even Naomi seemed astounded by it. Fire swirled around the Beast King and his hair turned wild and orange. Fangs L. Onger than any creature known to man except maybe a saber-toothed tiger or a walrus sprouted from his gums and gleamed with saliva. His previously scorpion tail melted away and became something else. It was thick like a reptile's but had no scales. It wasn't round either but it didn't belong on a fish. The end, was covered in fur that oddly enough grew to look like a spade at the end. The fur was also orange, the color of fire. His muscles began to bulge and his fingernails began to grow. Hannah and Soom gasped as they felt Naruto's power wash over them and they too began to change. They felt an A, W level of power flow into them granting them strength they had never wielded before. Their entire bodies were supercharged. The three lords of death grinned in satisfaction at finally seeing. Naruto's partially transformed body, and before the Beast King could launch himself at them their aura suddenly faded, the zombies suddenly collapsed into piles of dust and bone and the beasts that had been slain suddenly rose back up. Unharmed and very much alive, Shikamaru relaxed as did Tamari and Tuyuya when the aura faded. They were standing at the door of the Nara household. The fuck was that shit? Screamed Tuyuya after she got her heart to stop pounding in her chest. Tamari seemed to be thinking the same thing and Shikamaru seemed lost in his own thoughts. I don't know, he said at last. The tone of his voice put both females on edge. Tuyuya tugged on his arm. Well let's get out of sight before whatever the fuck it was shows up here and eats us alive or something. Shikamaru nodded and opened the door. His compound was strangely empty. Probably headed towards the source of that aura, he thought. Either way this made things easier for him. Come on, I have someone I want you to. Oh meet then we can all go see Naruto-sama. The two girls nodded and each grabbed an arm. Shikamaru inwardly smiled at this. Maybe this will be easier than I thought. But when he opened the door to H. His room and was met with the startled gaze of Kin who took all but two seconds to see the two other girls clutching an arm each of her mates she shouted. What the hell is this? Then the other two started yelling. Or maybe not, he thought. This was definitely going to take a while to simmer down. Naruto fell on his face as he forced himself to stop, the changes to his body fading in an instant as he eyed them confusedly. 
There now, said Anubis as he strapped his scythe to his back. Impressive, said Shinigami. Not bad I guess, said Hades. Naruto just continued to stare at them. What? You mean, what happened? Anubis looked at him and gave a feral grin. The latent power you possess is astounding. To witness even a fraction of it and still feel the power behind it is very, very impressive. Naruto's eyebrows rose. Explain. Hades chuckled. He means kid that this was a test to get a feel for your power. I'm sure we told you this in the beginning. We came here to see if why. Oh you were worthy in our eyes of the title of lord and we also came to see your true form's power. Naruto's confusion only grew when that sentence was uttered. True. Form. That's right young beast lord. You have a true form. A shape unique to you and you alone. Every lord does. Naruto's eyes widened. Sum and Hana each took a position at either of Naruto's sides. Their eyes were wide as well. Hades gave a chuckle as he began to glow. Be happy we're pretty much neutral towards you in this whole affair young beast lord. Otherwise this knowledge would never have been given to you. The other two lords began to glow as well. It's been fun young lord but our time with you is coming to an end. Remember what we said and stay on your guard. Naruto, Hana and Sum looked on as the three low. RDS of the underworld began to fade away. But just before they were completely gone Hades chuckled. We'll be seeing you again, Beast King. Then they vanished completely. Naruto just stared at the spot where they were. His mind was still reeling from all that has just happened. Then he collapsed, exhaustion finally setting in. Hana and Sum knelt on either side of him looking at him with concern in their eyes. The blonde just gave a slight grin before passing out. Sleep was the only thing he said. The two women smiled lovingly as they waited. At the Hyuga mansion, Neji relaxed as the O. Oh, raw coming from the forest of death finally faded away. Whatever it was that had caused it was something he wasn't sure he wanted to see. His wings neatly tucked back against his back and his halo stopped glowing as. Intensely, he was secretly glad he hadn't materialized his sword, otherwise he'd be dealing with an already paranoid Hyuga council and clan head hounding him. As it was, he had already been in a small dispute with quite a few of the Hyugas. The main branch members looked at him with open hostility. Well most of them did. There were some exceptions but for the most part they couldn't. Except that Neji had gained a power such as his. The Hyuga council had tried to demand that he be rebranded with the caged bird seal but Neji had adamantly refused that idea and so did Hiyashi. The C. Lan Head was a reasonable man as well as an opportunist. Neji's new gifts could be marked as a new bloodline. Limit. If they could get on Neji's good side then maybe he'd be tempted to spread the wealth so to say. The council on the other hand had stated that it wasn't Neji's choice in the matter. That a lowly servant should not be entitled to such power and went to try and use force. Until Neji BL asked them all back with a pulse of his angelic chakra and said in the coldest voice he could muster, I'm not that weak child you branded before. Try it again and I will retaliate. The council heard, none of his warning but before they could get themselves killed, Hiyashi stepped in and his killing intent talked. Neji's as he said, enough of this pointless infighting. Neji is to be left alone from now on or I will deal with you myself. Quote, the council had wisely backed off but no one knew for how long. Currently, Neji was sitting before Hiyashi with a blank look on his face. Hiyashi was looking solemn and curious. Neji, we have much to discuss. Neji despite his history felt no bitterness well up inside of him. With the caged bird seal gone he no longer felt the need to be angry. And now th, at he knows the goddess of fate he has a moray of an open mind. So he gave a polite bow and spoke, I agree Hiyashi sama In the underworld as the three lords of the underworld appeared in a swirl of pee. Purple flames they were met with the stern gazes of the three Hokages. Hades chuckled. Hello humans, he said as he dropped his axe haphazardly on the floor. I assume you have some questions am I right? Of course we do, said the first Hokage with a frown. I mean one second we were in heaven, enjoying our afterlives, then the next. We're fighting Sarutobi, then we wake up once again in hell with you three saying we're stuck here. What's going on? At this, Anubis chuckled as he took a seat on a throne made of the bones of the dead. We did indeed say that this was your new home. But only I, f and when you agree to what we offer you. 
And what makes you think we'd agree to anything you have to offer us? Asked the second with a slight glare. Hades waved his head dismissively and in a flash of blue fire. Three pulsating pitch black scythes appeared before the Hokages. The weapons radiated with an aura of death and decay. The feeling made all three take a step back as they eyed the weapons wearily. What are these? Asked the third Hokage with a contemplative gaze. Shinigami spoke for the first time since returning to their home. Those are your weapons should you choose to stay here and serve us. They are very powerful and will aid you whenever you need them. Why the sudden interest in us anyway? Asked the first as he wanted to get back to heaven and continued to exist with his loved ones. But the curiosity was also beginning to rise within him. Something big is approaching, said Anubis. A prophecy is being fulfilled, one that will drag all of the realms and their lords into a conflict. Everyone is building up their allies and increasing their forces. At this Sarutobi nodded his head in understanding. The Beast King, he said. Correct, said Hades with a grin. The first and second, looked on confused, mind filling us in, they asked at the same time. Sarutobi nodded and began as he sat down. Fifteen years ago a boy named Naruto Uzumaki was born. When he w, as born the animals started acting strange, like they were happy and celebrating. The boy is the Yondaimi's son and not even the Yondaimi could ponder the reasons for this strange activity. However that's not the main issue. The point is that Naruto Uzumaki is a destined child, the lord of the common beast, destined to bring his kind to greatness. And numerous other lords will have a problem with this, said Hades. Particularly the Tenshi lords of heaven will probably be the biggest obstacle for the beast king. The demon lords are scattered and isolated. One or two might come for him particularly the strongest one. She is after all attracted to power. Sarutobi nodded. I have reason to believe that a demon lord and a Tenshi lord have already been in the village, however they made no move towards Naruto. I can't really say for sure but they may have been in the village for other reasons seeing as how the demon transformed the last loyal Uchiha and the angel transformed the Hyuga branch house prodigy. Anubis nodded. Then it has already begun. So what does all of this have to do with us? Asked the second Hokage. Anubis pierced him with his look. Become reapers. Join the Ran. K.S. of death and hold up our banner when the time comes for the conflict. Ride with the beings of dark fire and retribution, said Hades. Embrace the cold feeling of the underworld and gain powers you would never gain as a Tenshi. Said Shinigami. The three Hokages were stunned. Their offer, it went beyond anything they had thought possible. It was tempting, but something was holding them back. What about our loved ones? Asked the first. Would we ever be able to see them again? The three death gods exchanged looks before Hades grinned. In time, he said. The three Hokages looked at each other then as one. Came to a decision. We accept, they said. Then they grabbed the scythes. And in that moment they were changed forever. Deep within the reaches of the demon realm, a gigantic fox stirred and rose to her feet. She let out a yawn that rocked the land and made the other demons in the area look on in awe. So, she began as she felt the last bit of the death god's auras fade away. The other lords are already beginning to contact him. She grinned and gave her nine tails a lazy wave, her blood-red fur seemingly glittering in the permanent sunset of the sky dyed a maroon color. She licked her lips in excitement as she began to glow with her yukai. I wonder how he's been, she asked herself. She couldn't keep the excitement from shining in her eyes either. The mere thought of Naruto made her body shudder with want. This new lord, this powerful being born of mortals, she had to have him. And she would have him. She would help him realize his power then help him s. Head that disgraceful title of beast and help him ascend to his rightful place by her side as a demon lord. Yukai exploded off of her as she seemed to vanish and was replaced with an extremely beautiful. A woman with a well-endowed chest and a very curvaceous body. She had long red hair and narrow crimson eyes. The lower part of her face was covered in a mask not unlike that of a shinobi and her chemo. No did nothing to hide her beautiful form. I'll go see him, she said with a smile and an unconscious licking of lips. I'll go see the king of beasts. Then fire surrounded her and she was gone. The end. I hope you enjoyed this episode. Remember to subscribe and like this video. See you in the next video.